Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to London. Welcome along to the Gfinity Arena. And most importantly, welcome along to the grand finals of this year's Digital Schoolhouse competition. Now, we've had thousands of players from across the country competing in Overwatch for a spot here to find it out on our beautiful main stage here in London to become our champion. Now, of course, we've got lots of exciting action to come today, lots of Overwatch to bring you, and we should let you all know at home exactly what we've got to come. So let's take a look at that schedule right now. You can see we're kicking things off with our first quarterfinal, then we have a little break, and then we've got our other quarterfinals to come. We also have a fantastic careers panel, so questions and answers from some of the best in the industry to give you guys a lot of information. Of course, we then have our two semi-finals, and then we have the big one, our grand final, where we, of course, crown ourselves a champion. It's going to be a fantastic day and it's not only us that are involved as well we want to hear from you guys at home and how can you do that it's a very good question if you uh, had to have a little look down below you'll see all the information you need to send your questions in and send your support to all of the teams that are going to be here today fighting it out to become a champion now it's not only me i'm sure a lot of you at home will be glad to know we've got some of the best in the business here sat at the desk who are looking forward for the action uh, introducing to my left we have ram singh in the middle we have nathaniel allen and at the end we have uh, james shuk gentlemen very exciting day of action ahead of us yeah definitely Super excited for this. Yeah, yeah. They are definitely Rams, excited. <laughs> they, they are definitely excited. I'm definitely excited. I want to let them have a first word because they're the ones that are going to be casting uh, with us. And of course, uh, you know, we're going to be having a load of student casters uh, for each match along with myself. And of course, Adam will be uh, uh, earlier as well. But fantastic lot of games, eight teams here looking to be the champion of this year. Now, of course, speaking of this year, you were also involved last year. Uh, you're very experienced when it comes to Digital Schoolhouse and everything that's involved. Uh, talk to us a little bit about last year and some of your experiences. Oh, it, it was fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, to see some of the schools and see how they, they played last year, you can see on your screen right now what it was like just a bit. Yeah, we've had a, we had a few teams from last year. We've actually got two uh, teams that come back from last year in this year's and then also six new teams. So. We had our last year's champions, Crip School, who are not here. So a brand new champion is going to be here uh, for 2019. And uh, Nathaniel, how are you feeling about today? Do you think the players are going to be a little bit nervous under the lights here? Or do you think it's just a case I of mean, just getting in front of it and just getting on with it and playing the game? It seems like it's very different compared to what the regional qualifiers were because they're, they're actually on stage. So I do feel like they might be a bit nervous, but I think the people here have got this. And James, how excited are you to just get into casting this action? <laughs> I'm super excited. I mean, I'm sure we've got some amazing players and I can't wait to see what they're going to do in these games. OK, well, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Obviously, it's going to be great fun to have you uh, joining us today. Uh, let's take a look at the format for today, though. Let's see how, exactly how everything uh, is going to be working and how we're going to get through all of the action today. And here it is, you can see, in elimination, each team has three players. The goal is to eliminate all three enemy players. After two minutes, should neither team win. An area will be marked after a countdown. The marked area becomes a capture point that a team must capture to win. Now, the winning team will receive one point. First, the three points will win the map. The first team to win two maps wins the game. And for our grand finals, gentlemen, it's the first team to win three maps. So we're going a little bit longer in that grand final, which is obviously going to be uh, incredibly exciting. Now, obviously, you know, touching on some of the teams from today, is there anyone in particular that you kind of got your eye on as being one of those standout teams? Well, uh, for me personally, I mean, we. No, uh, James's team, of course, King Edwards, who, who was here last year, had a um, they had a nice qualifier in the Staffordshire in the Staffordshire regionals, and then you know um, last year had a hard time. But this year, you know, returning team, they're looking to try and win this year. And do you think there's going to be any uh, little talents that we we unearth today that are going to kind of surprise all of us or just dominate the opposition? Oh, well, I think all the teams, you know, they've clearly are good to be here. I mean, think, you know, there were four, or five teams, six teams in each regional, so I think all the teams should really impress us with their play. And Nathaniel, what are you looking forward to today? Is it just seeing if we find a rising star, or are you looking forward to anything in particular, any particular matchups? I'm looking forward just to like seeing how this all goes, like seeing who could win this, see if like, I don't know, like if King Edwards, King Edwards can pull through with the win this time, or if another college will come. So, yeah. um, of course, these guys, you know, this isn't the first time that they've, they've been playing. You know, this has been going on. We've had our regional qualifiers and you've been involved with that. So it's not just a case of these guys sort of rocking up here and, uh, and just playing here. They've, they've had to go through a little bit of a struggle to get here and they deserve their places. But looking at the bracket here, you can see some of the teams that we've got involved today. In our first quarterfinal, it'll be only W taking on SHSB Esports. Our second quarterfinal will be Resurrection taking on Crosshairs. Our third one will be Bowhunt School taking on Unconfirmed. And that is actually their team name, by the way. It's not just like... They have, they're not quite sure what's going on. Uh, and then in our final quarterfinal, we have Matador Gaming taking on Scorpions. Now, obviously, we've kind of touched on uh, uh, how everything's going here. Who's your team that you're kind of looking forward to seeing out that lineup? I mean, 
I just want to see how Coventry do, to be honest. OK. <laughs> might sound a bit biased, but... OK, all right, I'll let you have that. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> so you're a Coventry fan, you're keeping your eye on them. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, I'm going to be biased as well. I'm really excited <laughs> to see how my team done. They came second last year, and I think they'd quite like to win. OK, well, uh, I think there's only one more thing to do, isn't it, gentlemen? We've said enough here. I think we should get our teams out onto the stage. So to start off, please welcome Team W. And our second team today will be SHSB Esports. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, how are we feeling about today? A little bit nervous or are you just excited to get into the action? I'm, I'm excited. It's a bit nerve wracking looking at all the people in the crowd and the people watching, but it's just exciting. I just want to get up there and play. Oh, it's got more confidence than I have, to be honest with you. I'm nervous every seeing all these people every single time. And on the other side of things, how are you feeling about your, uh, your chances today? Pretty confident, but we haven't actually played Overwatch in like a year since last year because we, we have um, PTSD from losing last year. OK. So. Oh. <laughs> these guys have prepared their answers. I mean, <laughs> these guys are smart. Uh, how are you feeling about today? Are you excited to get into the action? Uh, yeah, sure. Simple. That's what I like. That's my kind of answer. That's what I do. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, are you thinking that you can pick up that trophy at the end of today? No. No? <laughs> Let's try that again, ready? You looking forward to picking up the trophy today? <laughs> no. Ah, we'll get there, we'll get there. And finally, uh, are you going to be the player that everyone's going to be talking about at the end of this tournament? Um, maybe, we'll just have to see, I guess. Right, yeah, perhaps. I think he is, I think he is, secretly. And uh, what about yourself? Well, you never know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. All right, gentlemen, well, fantastic stuff. Uh, please take your way back up the stairs to your stations uh, where we can get the gameplay underway uh, very, very soon. Uh, some confident gentlemen there, uh, feeling a little bit good. Yes, I like some, all those answers there, they? Yeah, some good. confidence in Woken and then some not so confident in, uh, in SHSB. But again, it's gonna, they're going to let their actions do the talking, more or less. They, I think, as, you, as they said, they want to get up there and play, and we're going to find out uh, who will come up with a win on this one. Now, serious question. When you ask someone if they're going to pick up the trophy, they say, no, we all know what it like, actually really means, don't yeah. we? That means, like, yeah, just keep <laughs> your army today. I'm going to be the one who's going to be absolutely dominating. But speaking of dominating, let's have a look at the, uh, the maps that we're going to be playing today in the map order in our first quarter final. And I'm going to come to you, Nathaniel, actually, in the middle. What do you think of this lineup? Um, I feel like it's a good mix. Because we've got maps that involve a lot of like open space for like probably aerial characters or long range characters. And then we've got places like Black Forest, which can be more close up, especially in the main area. With Castilla, I still feel like it's just like Eco Point and very open map. So that might be another one where it will be like, will be like a long range attack. A very quick prediction from yourself who's taking this one? Honestly, I, I love putting people say. on the spot, by the way. <laughs> uh, so kind of you. Um, I don't know, to be honest. But we'll find out, won't we? We will find out. Uh, what, what are you thinking about this, uh, this first game here? Do you think it's going to be a little bit of a nervy one, for, especially this first map here, you know, for these players to sort of feel their way into the tournament a little bit, uh, get that experience under their belt? First game's always going to be nervous for so anyone, no matter what tournament you're playing, and they're going to feel it as well. But once they get the rounds, a few rounds going, they'll, they'll feel a bit more confident, and we'll see how it goes from there. And Nathaniel, of course, it is very different, isn't it? I think we should say to everyone at home, from playing in your bedroom or playing in yeah. a small arena to being here on this kind of, on this kind of stage. Do you, how do players adapt to that pressure? How would you adapt to it? I mean, like, at first I would be very nervous if I was up there, but I feel like as I got immersed into the game, I would probably just forget about the surroundings, what was happening out. I'd just think I'm playing with my mates, having a bit of fun, but more competitively. And what I do, I mean, I don't want to you know, put words in your mouth here, but I try and make it almost as much like home as I can. So I'll bring along like, a little mug, a little cup of tea, you know, make me yeah. feel comfortable. Maybe bring a cushion. Maybe I'm giving away too many secrets here. Uh, what would you do? <laughs> would, you, would you just try and take in everything or would you bring uh, as many weird things to the table like I would? Um, yeah, I, I would bring my stuff, obviously, because I'd be used to it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, once you're in the game, you're so focused on the game, you don't worry about anything else. You know, it might be a different keyboard, different monitor, but the game is the same. And that's what they're here for, obviously. I think that's a great point because it, that's a great point to sort of uh, wrap up on here because it is the same game, isn't it? It is a different environment, but after, as you say, after a few moments in that game, I think everyone's going to be feeling comfortable. That's Stage. Yeah, exactly. They'll have a few few moments, few rounds to just get used to their controls, they're used to the you know, mindset and keyboard, but once they're playing, they'll forget about it completely and just get stuck into the game. Okay, I'm going to ask you for particular stuff. I did you, and you, you said you were going to have to wait and see, which is the good political answer. That's what I always go for and why I never give predictions. Uh, what are you thinking on this first game? Who's well, going to be taking this one home? Again, I mean, SHSB, uh, you know, being the wildcard team, you know, they did... Um, did lose out last year quite harshly, and they'll, look, they'll hopefully look to redeem themselves. But from the, the status of uh, Only Woken as well, they 
you know, they looked really good in their regional. So I'd go with Woking for this one. OK, well, uh, gentlemen, good news. It's time to get into our first game of the day. It's our first quarterfinals. So, gentlemen, it's over to you. It is indeed. Are we ready, audience, for this first game? Yeah. So, we'll take it underway and uh, we can have a look at the compositions right now on your screen. Only Woken in the blue side and SHSB on the red. And we see our compositions right now, James, on Only Woken. We've yeah, got we've got the traditional pharmacy from SHSB uh, pushing up for the high ground, uh, while Wokington are running a, a slightly less conventional comp, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I totally agree with that, but I feel that May might be able to do some damage on that pharmacy because she's able to do her long-range icicle. And of course, the icicle is very valuable for protecting your team from farm. Exactly, yeah. Um, the SHSB are kind of trying to hold the centre of the map with the height advantage pharmacy gives. Uh, Oakington has been pushed back, I think. Oh, Woken have taken a lot of damage there. Yeah. May is on half health, she's healing herself up, and Zenyat are managing to kill, but Roadhog's taking a bit of damage. I think Wokington are repositioning into the building, perhaps recognising that being out in the open when there's a pharmacy around isn't the best play. No. Thinking. They can get inside and try and get the pharmacy to get closer, they'll have the advantage yeah. that Roadhog can get a hook in and... There it goes part of your game. pharmacy. I mean, if you can get the Mercy, which uh, Southland is so reliant on your pharmacy... Oh, there Ooh, goes Zenyat. Zenyat and and gone. And May looking low. Of course, both of Oakington's characters still have a lot of healing, so this... Uh, isn't a mm. dumb thing. South End uh, shouldn't be too short. Nice look from the road, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, it yeah, missed it. Yeah. Farrell oh, going. Uh, May's dead. It's down to the road hog yeah. against the three man. Farrell right, instantly using her ult there, recognizing the value of getting a, a kill with that burst damage. Road hog's trying to keep himself alive. He took a lot of damage but managed to heal it up. I can't see him winning this. I mean, his opposition have another road hog uh, as well as the yeah. deadly combination of a pharmacy. Maybe he'll take one of them with him. Looks like they're trying to do a pincer, so trying to push him on them from both sides. Yeah. Right. The capture point is about to open up, you know. If Pushed it, if onto it already. Oh, yeah. Roadhog's on Can point. He he's taking pick. damage. Ooh. He's doing damage to the Roadhog, but he's also taking a lot of damage from yeah, Farah. Gonna... So, yeah. Yeah, and the first round actually going to SHSB. Mm. So, quite a surprise there. I know, as I said earlier, you know, they'll look to redeem themselves in this one. Uh, but, yeah, taking the first round will, uh, you know, be will take their nerves a bit down, Nathaniel. Yeah. Roadhog definitely on Woking definitely tried his best. He tried to hold <laughs> it at the he end. He tried. He did try, but... Oh, actually, hang on. We got oh, a swap, swap, actually. So it's the other side. We just got a confirmation. Actually, it was only... The scoreboard was slightly wrong, so actually only Woking did get the first one. Oh, yeah, Woking did that. Oh, that was confusing. OK. So my first prediction Woking was right. missing. Yeah. Uh, completely changing their composition, though. Perhaps mm. we're using a McCree. They're expect... running more of a defensive. Yeah, or perhaps they were expecting a, a pharmacy and pick McCree to counter that. But both teams, mm. you know, it's a big competition, perhaps playing it safe. It looks like South End's going with the same comp they had last time. Now, it didn't really work against the pharmacy, but it could go differently against, against, against Woking's Woking. new comp. Exactly. So will, both, will, will the teams now be looking to, towards, like, just... They look like they're just going to be poking each other until the point opens, when pretty much the action is. Pharmacy, we saw in the first round, where just doing a lot of poke damage, and it really worked out. Both but this time, teams. showing a, a different uh, composition. The layout of yeah. the map, you've got buildings on both sides of the point, that, you know, in the middle, and that makes it so easy, relatively speaking, to just play it safe, to go for that control point, because at the end of the day, it's a, the control point matters more than kills once it's up. I think after seeing, like, after Woking saw how aggressive um, uh, South, South End were playing. That's why they're playing more defensively here with their Reinhardt in front with the shield. Yeah, they've been probing their defences, but they, they're, you know, backing off, clearly recognising it's not worth trying to go in. Yeah. yeah we can see... not against the May. Yeah, we can see it as well on uh, Only Woken. We see McCree's uh, ultimate nearly coming up as well on 85%. Points up in 30 seconds, so I think both teams are obviously going to make a play for that. McCree's ult could be really powerful. Yeah. Reinhardt's shield has taken a lot of damage, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, lot of patient play for this round. You know, they're just feeling each other out right now. We are going to have the area unlocked in under 15 seconds. Well, it looks like Roadhog's trying to help them. Roadhog's trying to push forward on them. Yeah. Yeah. High Noon, will it find it? May using her ice block. Oh, no. oh it, it was a waste of High Noon. Yeah, they tried, it did damage. Pick. They're taking damage. Ooh. South End just lost their, their healer. So they're down to a Roadhog. For South End. Oh, but... 
Yeah. Always picks up kills. Woking lost two players. It's, it's a 1v1. Oh, Woking came in with the win on that one. Brilliant play from the McCree there, taking out the Roadhog before he could uh, take a breather. So it came yeah. down all on that round. It came down all on the control point. And you saw that actually with the Dead Eye, Roadhog is actually healing through the Dead Eye. So yeah. it, it made it, it stop the, the damage dead eye. resistance yeah. on the uh, take a breather as well, really strong there. I'm curious if Southend are going to change up their comp because they haven't had much success with it before. No, they're running the same thing. Twice didn't yeah, work out. Madness. I think they might have to change it this turn. So we aren't actually. They have points. changed it. Yeah. We're on map points here for only Woking right now. We got a right. We got to stick with uh, Reinhardt, uh, Lucio, and McCree for only Woking this time. Though for SHSB, we've Quite got aggressive Winston, composition Lucio, with the Winston. and Torborn. Yeah. yeah. They're running more of a dive. Yeah. They, yeah. they might try to push on it. Oh, yeah, they yeah. are. They are pushing in. Torborn's. This uh, could be a good. Using Sugar. McCree's almost dead. Yeah, can they get the pick? Damage? The Winston oh, is taken Winston out. Is gone. He Things pushed too are, far without his team. Yeah, not looking good for Southend here. Yeah. I mean, they still have the, the healing, obviously, but I don't think that's going to be quite enough to Again, uh, save them. We're going to go play a patient game now. Wait, wait until SHSB come at them. They don't need to do anything else okay. unless they want to dive in now. It looks like they're going to move in. And they pick quickly. a Torbjorn. Yeah, like, there goes Torbjorn. Ooh. Just Lucio. Like, I don't know what happened with that, with that Winston. Like, he pushed on his own. Yeah. That Winston, if he had stayed with his team, they probably would have had a better chance because he was already doing yeah. a lot of damage. A bit too aggressive, really. Exactly, Even if yeah. changing up the composition was clearly the right call. Yeah. They didn't quite manage to pull it off, I think. Yeah, because they almost killed the McCree. Again, still, still a bit nervous there from SHSB Esports right there. Yes, of course, the Winston did go in, but again, the team broke up at the same time. Yeah, they did stick together. To back him up. Mm. Yeah, it was a bit unfortunate there. So, like Woking are now going to be much more confident. But I believe we have now have Black Forest, which encourages a very different play style. Close range more than like up in the air with like a pharmacy or something. Although, of course, you can hold the buildings to either side of the point uh, yeah. with, say, your Soldier 76 hiding behind a Reinhardt shield. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see. You can look at your screens right now. You can see the players' faces right now having a think. Uh, SHSB having a quick chat as well, trying to see what they can figure out. Yeah, strategies. So again, with, with this sort of tournament, you've got a lot of communication, a lot of uh, you know men mental fitness that you need, yeah. as well along with physical with the mouse and keyboard. I mean, you know, when you play this, how do you mental feel? game? SHSB. Yeah. They've you know they've taken a loss. They've not done amazingly. Can they bounce back from this? Can they keep their confidence? And while Woking, of course, can be much more confident. Are they going to get a bit arrogant and make some mistakes? Yeah, what do you think, Nathaniel? How, how can SHSB come back from this one? I feel like, as we saw, their Winston did go way too aggressive on his own. If they, they need to stick as a team more. Fight. Because, like, even with their pharmacy, like, not pharmacy, um, on theirs, they were all split up a lot of the time. Woking are running a pharmacy now, though. Yes. Oh, they ran pharmacy first round last time, so... Not entirely surprising. It's still an incredibly it strong pick. They're aim. running a soldier now. Um, could S, the um, south end. That could be the counter, yeah. If he's got good enough aim, of course. Or he can try and charge his ult. Yeah. If he charges his ult, then it should be... It's going to shut Farrah down really well. Yeah. We're going to find out now, but we can see we can see SHSB just hanging back right now. Yeah. In one of the buildings. They've they... pinned uh, Woking down, uh, yeah, the south end building, down really yeah. well. Of course, there are other exits they could choose to use, but I think they're going to stay Ooh. and try and get a pick. Do you think it's Roadhog? Get over here and heal. Woking's Roadhog is taking damage there. That, uh, was a, that was a bit of a bit of a risk there. I mean, yeah. you know, they could stay South back and wait. Soldier, though, did nearly get taken out, though. Uh, he used, of course, his uh, healing field to save him. Because it looks as though the pharmacy is actually protecting the point. They're staying yeah. above that point in case they come out to try and push it. Oh, Roadhog's pushing in. He's going to go out. Going in right now. Damage. He's down, though. Their road dog's also taking damage. Soldiers taking damage on their team, and so has their main. But their main has South been healing. Yet. Has got quite limited healing because, of course, all their characters only have yeah. one healing ability, and only soldier can share his with everyone else. Oh, oh here we go! Oh, he's he's gonna get that good hook. Oh, he's on. Oh, man, let's get up. Um, Woking road dog almost has his ultimate as well. If he can get his whole hog down, stuck in that room, in that's that gonna be against the wall. 20 Ooh. seconds here for the, the yeah. points about to be opened up. They're going to wait until most of the ultimates are up. I think South End's Roadhog is possibly going to stand in he the door with his ult. Yeah. They both have their ult. It's going to be whoever can get their ult first and push the other yeah. Roadhog away. Farah does have a boot, but I don't think that's a uh, significant it won't. enough. No, it won't. It's a difference. We're about to find out. He's going to use the ult first. Oh, go. Just... Yeah, well, we can just use there his ult first. Pushing them off the point, but may oh, we see ice blocking. They seem to be capturing there it. There goes Woking's Roadhog. Southend captured the point. Beautiful play from Southend there. Yeah, Southend coming in with that May. Yeah, biding their point. Biding their time, pushing in, using that wall to keep uh, May keep to keep herself safe. Really well played from Southend. And South as we End. saw, that Southend Roadhog used his ult as possibly a distraction to keep that pharmacy yeah. focusing them. 
instead of focusing the most the mate that was on point. Yeah. Now that was a good tactic there. We'll, we'll Gotta play the objective. Yeah, play the objective. If yes. you don't want to do the kills, you play the objective and it's a, a sound it's plan. We'll see now though with uh, from Woking. Yeah, we'll see now with Reinhardt, Lucio and Zenyatta. So two going supports. in with the Reinhardt and Lucio using the Orb of Discord to uh, take out the tank. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. And then, of course, SHSB are keeping to their composition right now with May, Soldier, and a Roadhog right now. It's going to be another more patient play here in the Vanguard. Yeah, both yeah. teams. Have, sorry. I feel like the, the Woken's going to have a lot more healing because they're running two healers on that. Um, so I feel like because they're not running, uh, because um, Southland, Southland aren't running that any proper healers, they've got characters with healing abilities. I feel like Woking may have the the, the upper hand here with their healers. And now, without any sort of poke here for uh, only Woking, how is this going to settle for uh, for them? I think SHSB could, uh, while they're going to get damage off and build up old charge, Woking can heal it. So I, I have a suspicion it will come down to the points and the ults because neither team, um, SHSB, could try pushing in, and that might work. But I think they'll play it safe and try and go for the point again because, as we saw, that worked really well for them. Looks like South End's keeping their keeping Woking up in that room. Yeah, reversal here, really. Yeah, last time Woking was the one keeping them there, but this time it seems the other way around. And again, the map must be in favour of SHSB right now. You know, again, we're still waiting for the point. Ooh, Ooh nice damage. Taking a lot of damage. Beautiful yeah. use of the orb of Discord there from the Zenyata, showing how that can really increase your DPS on a target. Well, that orb, because they've got no shields. On, on SHSB, they've got no shields at all. So yeah. that Discord will be... The only thing they've got is the Maywall that is temporary, very temporary. Yeah. Of course, Roadhog's take of Reaver does give him oh, damage. Here we go. There they go. Ten seconds on the so point. Woking going in, but can they like shut down the main? That may warm up, highly helping. That Lucio might be able to boot people off point, giving yeah. Woking the Both teams on the point now. Oh, they've already got half of the point. Woking seems to be pushing it. And Woking hold it. Slowly getting the point. Oh, they're off, and. Oh, it looks like South Woking just, going just sacrifice that. 2 1 2 right now, as we see the battle right now. Very close. Of course, Woken still have that Lucio in the healing. Oh, it's going oh, nice. Hog used whole hog and got a double with it. Beautiful ult from the Roadhog there, That's getting amazing. SHSB the point again. So again, no, again, that, road, that Roadhog ultimate is key right now. Yeah. They need something to absorb it. Maybe, what, what would you say if a D.Va came to this, uh, Nathaniel? I feel like running a D.Va, it could be good, but it can also be bad because yeah, they've got their defense matrix, which is a small shield, but it won't be able to hold it for long. It holds it for a couple of seconds and then it cancels it. What would you right. think, James? What could counter that a hold hog, really, to you know stop them doing uh, it? I think they're just planning on not worrying about countering it, but being pharmacy, being in the air, where it has minimal effect because uh, you're so far away and just killing the hog. Well, you're going to get your you're going to get your wish because they've gone back to a pharmacy composition yep. here, James. They, I think surprised. Woking need to mainly focus on taking out their Roadhog first because that Roadhog is what saved the most uh, South End that point. You see the when mate. it went down to a 2-2, him using his ult was what held it. Yes. We can see uh, South End uh, hiding in the room again, May getting ready to place her wall uh, to block off Woking. Yeah. And perhaps trying to kind of uh, pull off the exact same comp, sorry, uh, where they go for the points. It seems as though the pharmacy is taking up, is like holding a lot of distance away, so the road, so the um, soldiers' damage is also very like sprayed. So I'm surprised hit. to see um, Woking not being a little bit more aggressive, actually trying to put up some ult charge. It's not getting too close because that hook, which is probably what Farah is afraid of, is mm. a very powerful ability. So neither teams have built up very much ult charge. No. We've seen how important ults are. We might even yeah, see them go for the point without ults. Possibly, yeah. Which would be a very different fight, but I think. I mean, it's not going to be long until the <laughs> capture points available, no. so... I'm curious what Southend are planning here. You know, they've clearly shown they can think through uh, some reasonable plans, but without the ults, I'm not sure it's going to work. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult, of course, the low ult charge right now, but when you get into battle, it's going it's to charge up very quickly. You're going to see in about 20 seconds or so. When Southend push out, though, I think that Farah with the damage boost could do so much damage on them, they might just be going into the fight too low. The main thing I've noticed is that is um, Southend's uh, May is taking a lot of damage. They're going so in from the low ground, though, not what we expected with Cryo. Yeah, so here we go. We've got Pushing five seconds. We're going to have a, a lot of... Yeah, right they're not, the they don't have any ults. We're not going to push it. Both South End's Roadhog. Roadhog is almost dead. But One more hit and he's gone. Are oh, he healed? Yeah. He managed to get that South healing in last second. really strong here. Oh, yes. and South End came in with the win on that one. It just shows how a different map really yeah. caters to different play styles. It seems, they, it seems they mainly focus on close range map. They're looking when a lot happier, point. we can see. Yeah, you can yeah. see the screen. Uh, they'll, they'll be happy with that. The tactics worked out as well for mm -hmm. them.
Is that a good mental game as well? Frustrating the opponents by not yeah. going out and dueling them? People expect you to be aggressive generally, yeah. so I think uh, they're perhaps playing the mental game. Although Castillo, it's much more like Eco Point, and we've seen, was it stress or was it their play style couldn't cope with that more open map? Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Our third and final map for this series, of course. Only one team can go through uh, into the next round, being the semi finals. Is it going to be only Woken or is it going to be SHSB Esports? We're going to find out very shortly. And looking on the screen, you can see the players right now. You know, we, we see uh, only Woken right now. They look Have, focused. They look focused. They look. Got the cool. Yeah. yeah. And SHB, SHB um, SHSB, so it's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, you know, they're really happy again. And you know, what do we feel now? So, going from the two maps that we saw, I'm going to ask a prediction as well from yourself, Nathaniel Woken or Southend? I think it's going to be very mixed because, as Castillo is very out open, like Antarctica, Woken or Southend? Go on. I feel like Woken might yeah. have the advantage here. What about yourself as well? I'm probably going to have to agree with Woking. Woking. That play style just benefits the map. So All right, well. then. So we're going to get on the way in this next round. So please, James, take it away for this one. Yeah, we've got similar compositions to what we've seen before. I think Woking holding the high ground using that McCree. Um, Southend uh, lacking uh, the shielding, but they've got probably better range DPS from the soldier or at least similar. Yeah, it seems Southend got a bit confident with their characters they had in last match, thinking they can use it in this one. It can work. But it's a lot more open, play. so yeah. I think the lack of cover is going to really hinder them. That Reinhardt shield there is invaluable for Woken. Mm. Uh, but the May War used a really good effect to me. They're already doing a bit of damage to the Roadhog. Ooh. Oh, Woking wow. soldier's already gone. Beautiful. Now cover. they're done. May down to a May and the Roadhog. Roadhog, Roadhog is, is taking low. a lot of damage, but he's trying to stay alive. He's trying he to hold on to that life as much as he can. And he's, he's dead. It's down to just May. May. That, and I think May's looking pretty I low. I think our predictions are pretty right so far. Yeah. That pick was devastating for yeah. SHSB. I they mean, capitalised on it so well, just going in, catching them off guard. I feel like um, Southend are going to have to change their, stra their strategy up because mm, that clearly didn't work. The same comp. I would be very surprised if they pick it again. Yeah. It's probably not the right decision. They must be here. Uh, do you not think they will go for a dive combo like they did, like they tried in the first map? I'm curious if Woken are going to try Pharmacy, actually, or if they're going to stick with that. Mm. Well. If they do run a dive with their... No, they're running the oh. same. OK. Well, I think they've they seen are this match before, same. guys. Yeah, and <laughs> Woking are running the same defence again. We'll, we'll have, have a defence attack. Southend are going to adjust their play stop. I'm going in more aggressively there. But yeah, Roadhog to trying to get a hook in first, seeing if he can take out an opponent straight away. But this is a big problem here for SHHB, is they've got Ooh. no sustainable healing. Roadhog just took a lot of damage from that yeah. one hit by... Oh, no, oh, no. Roadhog, Roadhog should be dead. Yeah, Ooh. Roadhog's almost dead. Just, mate, it's taking a while to heal that up. I think Woke, uh, Southend need to get up close with uh, the Hulk and the May on yeah. Woking, but between that Reinhardt shield and they're just keeping their distance. They need to get rid of the Reinhardt shield. Yeah. If they can get rid of that Reinhardt shield, they may have a chance of taking the point. Woking are respecting their opponents and keeping their distance, which yeah. I think is what's really helping them here. They're probably playing for time, trying to get their ultimates mm. up. But it looks like the Roadhog for um, Southend is going ahead with their ult. Pretty high yeah, on it. He thinks he might have got it. It's nearly there. He might get it as high as he can, see if he can have it on ult on the point yeah. and try and save the game. We can see he's doing some damage on Woking here to slowly build up charge. Uh, yeah. Same for obviously everyone. But, but as we can see on the health point. difference, it looks like Woking will have the advantage due to yeah. them having, a, uh, having an actual healer on their team. Look where the soldier's positioned as well. He's, he's, he's trying to stay back. Safe. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. He's got all playing up top he's compared got... to like them down. He's got Roadhog and May to go in. He knows it's his job to stay at a distance while his teammates distract them to put out the damage. 25 yeah. seconds. Under 25 seconds here. We're going to have the capture South area come up. up. Oh, the Roadhog, the Roadhog for Southend just took a lot of ultimate charge. He's now on 83%. Yeah. Well, he used to take a breather, which, of course, gives him yeah, loads. Yeah, brings him a lot, yeah. So I think we'll see his ult in the fight, which is really powerful. May healing, soldier. I think this one might be very close. Here we go. We're going to see the that, big fight here at yeah, the point right now. Ult. If that Roadhog gets his ult up I think fast he's going enough, in. he might just use it. Just He'll use I it. I think he's going to see it. Yes, getting them off the point. Yeah, he's pushing them off. Brilliant and it's, play. It's South End's point. Wow. It's again, again, it's not stuck in that whole hog. They're yeah, waiting yeah. for it. Again. It's that whole hog that is what's helping South End so much. All right, audience, what do you think? Is it going to be Woken or is it going to be South End? What do you think? Woken? Woken. Anyone for South End? Here we go. It's very uh, mixed. pretty divided. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. That's what we want. We want, we want <laughs> to have the support here, of course. Everybody here supporting each other as best they can. And these are going to be fantastic games throughout the day as well. So we are Same comps again. 
They're, they're be, is this is comfortable picks? This is yeah. comfortable picks. They both know they can win with it. I feel like Woking might have realised they need to take that Roadhog out early game. Mm. Once think, he's gone, they, they, the I rest of the team will Woking needs to be more aggressive. As Southend nearly always managed to win it on the point. If Woking yeah. can get a pick, uh, of course, that's very helpful usually, but they can really mess up. Uh, but Woking, Woking need to rely on the McCree because of the stun grenade as well. If a Ken Roadhog um, uses it and then the creek again with the stun grenade. It stops the ultimate completely. Soldier getting off a lot of shield damage though. That's the big threat for the whole hog. Roadhog uh, taking a lot of damage, possibly bringing out charge. Beautiful Maywall there. They've Trevor now taken off their Reinhardt. They've lost their shield. I yeah. think the damage they can. I don't want to predict it, but I feel like this is more in South and favour. As long as they play it safe for the point. I mean, Lucio's healing is really good, but of course mm. Soldier can put up a lot of damage. Yeah, so in favour right well. now here for SHSB. Are they going to pull a comeback right now on this one? Brilliant. I feel like they will, yeah. yeah the, mm. We've shown how good their communication was with that Maywall going up just as Reinhardt was hooked. Splitting off, off your team will, is a good way of picking an enemy off. Yeah. Because just when they're on their own, they can't... They won't be able to do much. They will just get a damage done. Mm. Woking to McCree, trying to find a pick, but I, I don't think he can quite pull it off somehow. And I think McCree's trying to go for his ultimate, and then he can use it to try and at least do something. But the yeah. May wall, uh, as you see, May is brilliant. It's been brilliant using her wall to shut down abilities to trap people. I think that could uh, uh, counter it. Yeah, so we've got uh, at least under 20 seconds now, and the SHSB in the driving seat right now with three players to two. As we saw the Reinhardt get blocked in by the maze wall, and here we go. Very close result, although McCree well, has us. McCree doesn't have a shield, though. So if he uses all well, I think it was shut up. May they already preempted using yeah, Maywall. I feel like he's going to get shut down. Oh, it was wasted. Yeah, McCree, he's not going to find McCree anything. Oh, oh he got the May. May. Brilliant oh, play. Oh, he gets shut down. There. Secures the and point it's down. for South End. Like, that whole hog is what is for South End. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. I was seeing in... Uh, you know, this is the, you know, the finals. Yeah. Uh, teams being really coordinated and making that play with Roadhog, but I know I didn't see uh, anywhere near that level of coordination in most of the teams in the regionals. So we are on match points here for South End. It's going to be really, really nerve-wracking here for Woking, yeah. of course, uh, but they can do it. If they can counter that Roadhog strategy, yeah. they'll be in it. But again, it's to shut down. Be, they're not being patient enough. I think Woking... Possibly we'll go for a more aggressive comp. Perhaps a pharmacy because they know they need to take out the hog. They can't just they need, uh, yeah, wait for something that, to go for the point. Or someone that can really push that hog like a lot. Yeah. Someone that can do a lot of damage close range. Mm. Something like that. Maybe it's something that could work. Maybe your favourite Rams Reaper. Right, yes. Who knows? Oh, yeah. well, Reaper how, is... how do you know? Oh, <laughs> t-shirt perhaps. Oh, I mean, t-shirt. Reaper account. is also a a counter for tanks. Yeah. So if, if, let's say, Woking do go with a road, with a oh, Reaper... We've already had action, of course, yeah, yeah. so the cameras are stuck on and we all, they were already playing, Woking, so... Woking, though, have oh. changed up their comp like we expected, going for a far more aggressive dive comp, and they seem to be uh, cleaning up, even if they have frozen the hog. Woking going with a Genji as well, so trying to do some good. Oh! Genji got that really name easily. Woking. They found, they found what could be the counter to their Roadhog. Yes! And Genji oh. going in with that... Brilliant really yeah. the Genji, yeah. then! So, yeah, we've seen Woking recognise that need to change up their comp. South, South Ed was not ready for that tactic on there. We just come it out. But now it is do or die for both teams as we're on sudden yeah. death. Whoever yes. wins this round well, will go into the, into the semi finals. Yeah. I think South and they love their comp. They might need to change it, while well, Woking will probably run the yeah. same again. On I feel they're going to run the same thing as they did. And they did. <laughs> oh, they did. They, they, did. they ran the same comp. No, I'm, um, I, was, I was told it was madness to do the same thing again. And again. <laughs> yeah. Different results, but these teams seem to disagree. But it looks like Woking went with what worked last time, going with yeah. a Genji, Winston and Mercy, going with more of a dive attack. South and need to keep Pushing their distance, that. but... Um, I think, of course, Genji can get in so quickly. I think they're going to struggle. And, and Genji's ult charge can get up really fast. As we're seeing now, he's already on 20%. And yeah. that ult will if melt. If he can get soldier. an early blade, he'll be able to take out possibly their, Mer their Mei and their soldier, if anything. But yeah. then you need Roadhog to actually hook in and stop the dragon yeah. blade as well. So there's there's so much counters right now. Working it is, as you can see here. going in. We can see right here, we see Soldier try to shoot down. He's going to be weak. Winston down. Well, the Genji. And their Winston's taking damage, but they've lost their soldier down to a 2v2. It's whoever can do more damage. Yeah. If that may can freeze them, then I think it's more to on you South End's side. As long as Genji doesn't get frozen. Yeah, uh, Genji's really getting his ult push. charge. That's all he's trying to do at this point. And he's got the damage boost. Yep. I think they need... I think um, South End almost needs to take out the Mercy as the Genji's just yeah. too dangerous. That Genji... Yep, sorry. DPS is down for South End and Tank is down for Woking here, Nathaniel. Yeah, I feel like... 
they've obviously got more of like, they've got the tanks, they've got their damage that they can, do, they can suppress. And if that Roadhog can get his ult on time, mm. that whole hog could be a game. Although, of course, Genji could just team. deflect it back at him, which I would love yeah, to see. Yeah, if that Genji can deflect it, if he uses deflect. Oh, it looks like Genji has his blade. If yeah. he, he might push when it comes to point time. 15 maybe, seconds maybe for the point. shut him down with that wall and that freeze, who knows? We'll see in about 10 seconds now as we're getting a bit pushy. We see Genji and Needs Mercy moving up. Hook and the freeze. Roadhog doesn't have his ult, which is good. Right. He does. Oh, the Mercy just got a res on the, Win on the Winston. Ooh. Oh, that is, that is good. That could be a big difference. Yes. And it looks like it's down to the whole hog. The whole hog. Can you pull it off? And it's oh, over. Okay. Roking lane, he held that point. Brilliantly played from That Roking was a very there. close match. Lovely sneaky resurrection. Tactical play there from Woking, and they will be into the semi finals, knocking out South End. What a game! Yes. Yeah. Really down to the wire. We saw some incredible play from both teams, and it was that close. You know, it was down to the point. Both teams even. It was a really incredible game. It was like, in my opinion, it was like game changing res on that Winston that gave. Woken the advantage, having three players instead of two. Yeah, I don't think Southland are expecting that. Gentlemen, no. our first match is done. Our first quarter final is done, and it was a, an exciting game. And yeah. I, can I just give a shout out to everyone here, by the way? Like, you guys are fantastic. Like, keep this up all day. We're going to have a good day, all right? So, only double there. Only double. 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 Toughly fought match. We should give a big shout out to uh, SHSB Esports and, and their part in that in that quarter final. But I mean, what impressed you so much in that? I think that Roadhog is what really impressed me that game. All of his whole hogs were what was saved the game for South End. What helped them push that point. That and, really impressed. And me. for yourself, um, I think South End's may actually uh, her wall use was incredibly on point. But I think Woking's ability to adapt their comp, uh, they were a lot more dynamic, picking comps mm. that really countered. Uh, what the opposition were playing is what won it for them, given how close it was. Yeah. And Rams, what was uh, what was the level of competition like for you? Because obviously, you know, we were talking about how this might be a little bit nervy for some of these guys, you're getting on this stage, but I mean, there's one thing we can guarantee, they entertained us, right? They entertained <laughs> us in the last one, but again, it was the first few rounds in the first map and the second map as well that, you know, they were getting used to their compositions and used to, you know, talk, communicating over, you know, what they're playing on right now and just getting the feel for it. And then it showed in the last map as well how, the communication, you know, when they needed to change their compositions, when they needed to attack, when they needed to block. You had it all in that last round there. And what an experience it was for every single player out there. The first yeah. game out of the way now to play on a main stage like this. Like some players don't even get the opportunity to play like this, yeah. uh, you know, major esports on a stage like this. So what do you think they'll take away from today? Uh, even, you know, SHSB, who unfortunately won't be making our semi-finals, but they're going to be talking about this for a while, right? Yeah, I think this is going to be an experience they'll remember. And, you know, I imagine we'll see some of these teams again next year. Yeah, possibly. Back with vengeance. OK, well, uh, I think we should say a big thank you to uh, Nathaniel and James for their part here. They're fantastic commentary from you guys. Uh, when we get back, though, we've got our next quarterfinal coming up, which will be Resurrection taking on Crosshairs. We'll be back in just a second.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the grand finals of the Digital Schoolhouse competition. Now, I am joined by one of the winners from our first match of the day, our first quarter final, uh, Cyrus from Only W. Uh, how are you feeling after your big win? Um, I, feel, I think we're all feeling great, and I think we all expected to win. Um, not to sound arrogant, but yeah, <laughs> we practiced a lot, and I think that gives us an advantage. Now, let's talk about your team name a little bit, because uh, Only W, you might be thinking Woken, but it's nothing to do with that, is it? It's about the aggression that you bring to, you, uh, to your opponent. So, uh, the W key is to move forward, and Only W is just to run at the opponent and eliminate them as fast as possible. Okay, and uh, obviously, you know, you, it was a tough game. You managed to squeak it out in the end. Uh, we'll talk about that final map a little bit, because it went right down to the wire there. What was going through your head in those final moments? Well, originally, we thought it was going to be a lockdown elimination, meaning you can't pick the same heroes if you win, but then we had to adapt to the other team picking the same heroes and eventually winning. Now, you were talking about your one of your teammates a lot and you were saying that he's quite a talented yeah. individual. Uh, do you want to give him a shout out and let the people know, know a little bit about him? Yeah, so um, he's one of the, like, the top players in the ranked of the Overwatch uh, competitive season. He's like top 500. So um, I think his Genji play at the end really helped us win. It's always good to have a player like that on your team. I'm just going to say, like, it's pretty helpful. Uh, now, final question for you, uh, Cyrus. Obviously, congratulations. How far can you go? Are you looking to win this whole thing? Uh, yeah, I think we all have the eye on the prize and we're just hoping to win. Okay, fantastic. Well, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Cyrus from Team W. Fantastic stuff from you. Uh, I'm now going to wander across here, though, because we've got a new desk. We've got a new panel. How are we doing, gentlemen? Welcome along. We have Adam White, Scott Hill and Bailey Scargill at the end. Gentlemen, what a first day we've had. Well, first game we've had. We're, we're here only for one day, so it's obviously it's going to be first day. Yes. Uh, first quarter final we've had. Adam, how did you how did you enjoy that first one? Yeah, it was brilliant. I, I, I think what you alluded to at the end, having a Genji like that who can change the match. I really enjoyed the Roadhog trying to put push people off of the points and ultimately I think it was a fun game wasn't it guys yeah yeah I think the team really showed their versatility and their ability like we said to adapt they showed throughout the game how they were able to change their play style a little bit based on the other team as the other team would push back against the changes they've been making but you know truly throughout every single game they showed their ability to stay strong now Bailey obviously we're moving on to our second quarterfinals welcome to the desk I should say as well are you excited about today opportunity to, uh, to shout cast here at the yeah, Arena yeah really excited uh, within that first match there, I really thought that only W were going to sit clean sweep S South End, but then South End managed to take a second map and then almost a really close match at the end there, ending on a 3 2 to only W. Well, of course, this is our next quarter final now, which will be Resurrection taking on Crosshairs. Uh, now, do we know anything about these teams? Have we had an opportunity to see them before today? Um, I can speak to Resurrection. Uh, I, last year, they didn't qualify. I think that was probably because I was their coach. Um, and now they've renamed themselves Resurrection and they're in the final, so well done. And I, I think you Strange guys... that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm a, I'm a bad luck. But now you're an expert on this panel. So. Um, <laughs> so I'm here to learn from Yeah, you guys, that's very true. Uh, Scott, what are you looking forward to in this second quarter final? Well, I think we're really looking forward to see what the teams will be able to do now that they've seen the first game. You know, generally when we go into the, the cooled water for the first time, we see teams try and work out how it's going to play out, how the other teams are done. But this, this team now, it's either built up more fear in them or it's made them more confident now that they've seen the first game they've seen some play styles so it can really change the outcome of this match okay well uh, i think it's time to actually bring out our teams for our second quarter final so ladies and gentlemen put your hands together first out will be resurrection <laughs> and their opponents in our second quarter final will be crosshairs Welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, Resurrection, we'll start with you because you've got the most beautiful T-shirt that I've seen so far, and hopefully we'll see some more. Uh, you're seeing the first quarter final here, but how does it feel for yourselves to be here on the main stage uh, with the opportunity to play? Uh, not right. <laughs> not right? <laughs> are you a little bit nervous? Yeah. Uh, are you going to let your gameplay do the talking, though? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to. try. OK, good man. Uh, on the other side of things, Jesus Christ, you're huge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how are you feeling about today? You've just seen the first quarter final. Has that kind of settled the nerves a little bit, or are they still there? Uh, the nerves are still there, but I aim to overcome them and just play well. Good man, good man. And uh, how are you feeling about this uh, this competition today? Are you aiming just to get to the semi-finals, or do you want to pick up a trophy today? 
pick up a trophy, of course. Okay. But, yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. OK, and uh, I'll ask you a very quick question. Uh, obviously, they've said that they're looking to, uh, to pick up the trophy. Are you going to stop them today? Yep, obviously. Simple. Simple as that. Our lovely stuff. Uh, gentlemen, please, up the stairs, take your uh, stations as we head towards our next quarter-final. Uh, we'll wander back over here for the moment. Uh, Adam, some confident words there from one side. Some other players a little bit more quieter, but it's usually the quiet ones you have to look out for, isn't it? That's what we were going to say. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I, I don't really know these guys. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing them in, in, in the Stafford final that I was at previously. Um, but my, my, I, I do carry an Irish passport, so maybe I'll go with De La Salle today. Okay. <laughs> OK, That's well, right. I want to actually talk about Resurrection a little bit because uh, we actually got a little bit of uh, footage or a, uh, a little photo from, uh, from social media yesterday. Looking very relaxed, looking very chilled out here. You can see them. Do you think that that kind of attitude, uh, Bailey's going to be a good thing moving forward? I think in this environment it will be because if you let the nerves get to you, then you could start, uh, might make a wrong move and then that could be the whole series for you. But staying calm and collected, I think having a relaxed mind will help you play a little bit better. Sort of centering themselves, Scott. Is that what you're, you're seeing there? Or do you think yeah. that's kind of a facade and they're actually a little bit nervous? <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. We, we don't really know until we've seen the first round. You know, the first round is generally for games the kind of instinctive. It gives you what's going to happen. It gives you an overview of how the game's to play. But I think it will be, it'll be a very interesting game. And I think this quarterfinal is going to be a real indication of, of who the better teams are maybe that we have here because obviously we've seen our first game, we've got a second one here. We're going to start building that picture. Is this kind of a, the opportunity to put a marker down as far as some of the other teams are concerned? Dominate this one and everyone's going to go, oh, we don't want to play these guys. Absolutely. And, and I think above all, it's an opportunity for one of these teams to pick Symmetra. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Symmetra. Oh. Who loves Symmetra here? Yeah! yeah. 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 I just had to throw that out. OK, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Uh, well, let's talk about this quarterfinal now because we have our map order ready now. So let's see uh, the maps that we're going to be playing in our second quarterfinal of the day. Here they come. Here they are. So we're starting off with uh, Eco Antarctica, Castillo, and Necropolis at the end there. Uh, Scott, what are your thoughts on this lineup? Well, I think Eco Point Antarctica really gives you some sniping opportunities. So maybe we see a Widowmaker or that kind of thing offering the ability to use the wider open areas, the longer scoping range. But at the same time, there's the possibility Eco Point Antarctica is well known for its shield usage. We might see a Ryan Hart kind of you know, supporting someone else and keeping them pushing through the game, but I think, you know, we'll wait and see. And Bailey, for some people who might be watching for the first time, first time Overwatch fans, uh, break down these maps a little bit. What, what we expect to see, what's kind of the layout of these maps and how do they play? So, Echo Point Antarctica is more of an open and closed map at the same time. There's points either side or build buildings where teams can keep it in close if they need to do the brawl compositions. Whereas Castillo and Necropolis, they have both chances for environmental kills. So if the teams decide to play Lucio or Arissa, there's chances that they could either put them off the map or into the well. And can I just say that, Bailey, that shirt is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Like, that is probably the best piece of clothing I've seen so far today, and I'm probably going to have to uh, ask where you got that one from, even though it probably wouldn't look as good as me. Uh, Adam, let's talk about uh, how the players' experience is going to be today, though, because uh, the, the opportunity to play on a stage like this is something that you learn so much from, because we talk about when you sat at home and you can play thousands and thousands of, of hours of, of Overwatch, but being on the stage, you have to produce almost immediately in that sort of short burst of time. So. I was always told when I was competing back in the day that this is like six or seven months online practice is one tournament. Would you agree with that sort of statement? Yeah, well, I, I think probably even longer than six or seven months. Most of these guys are probably gamers for their entire lives. I think today re represents a unique opportunity to, oh, the game has started. Perhaps we should uh, flip over to, to, to I'll that. i tell you what, Adam, that's a fantastic yeah, idea. Right. Let's jump straight into this game. Crosshairs, take it on Resurrection. I think it's quite interesting. We have seen a Baptiste here, which is the first, I believe, so far, or one of the... It's very weird, because this is, of course, the brand-new character in Overwatch. Nobody really knows about the competition, how this is going to play out so far. And, you know, we're seeing these early kind of shots here. Like I called, we have the shield. The shield definitely keeping them strong there, but at the same time, we have strong, strong, strong attack against that. Yeah, Wrecking Ball, also one of the newest char characters added to Overwatch, and looks like right there, Doomfish just took out Reinhardt. Oh, that's brilliant and play there Doomfish. for Diana, getting the grenade on to sleep, and then two on two here. Very off meta picks though, guys, right? Ash, yeah. Wrecking Ball. At, at the same time, for them, sure, but if we look over at Crosshairs, like I said, we have got almost a double sniper. If you can count Ash as someone who's got the kind of more longer range ability with, of course, the shotgun mixed in, we had. We have on that team, apart from the shield, exactly like I said, they're using the longest time map, that shield showed to not be such a great thing. Resurrection, taking the first round there, utilising a more, you know, domination, more stronger, just constant fire attack. Um, a lot of DPS, but, you know... Yeah. 
Bailey, who do you think uh, are the teams going to pick here? Obviously, it's not lockout. Uh, can you explain lockout just really quickly for the people yeah. at home? So normally, lockout 3v3 is where if you take a round, the heroes you play within that round, you cannot choose them anymore for the rest of the map. But we're not playing that today, so there might be a bit of, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. I've, well, we're seeing the pharmacy right here, but I'm surprised that wasn't abused first round. You know, it's really interesting that Resurrection didn't go for that straight away, but they're showing they're using the longer range here. The, the, the pharmacy is great because there's so much, this map is very vertical. There's a lot of levels, there's a lot of possibilities, and the open two sideways across the map that we can see here, offer the opportunity to shoot straight across and get those long shots, but they're showing, you know, to be really useful here. Oh my goodness, like Roadhog Road. has just been picked. Yeah, Roadhog versus Roadhog, and it looks like Crosshairs with a lucky takeaway with those, but, you know, we're seeing the Pharmacy there just taking shots. The Roadhog, of course, has the healing advantage, but so does the, the Pharmacy combo, of course, keeping him nice and healed up in the sky. They're shooting down a little bit there. We're not really seeing any kind of engaging. It looks like Crosshairs, uh, they realize they lost in the first round. They're keeping more inside, keeping a more close cover because, of course, the the Mercy and the Bearer have to be able to actually see you oh. to take some shots. And Resurrection here will have to be very careful. Once that point opens, they will have to drop down. So that means Bearer will have to come out of the sky and leave them very vulnerable to that Roadhog hook. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But Bearer does have the ult here, so there's the possibility to try and waste that on the... Well, not waste it, but utilise it on the Roadhog. Yeah. Because, of course, once Roadhog gets his ult, that's a bit tricky, especially because it goes straight for the Mercy to try and take him out to leave the Pharah alone with the lower health. I think what we're seeing here is a situation where the Pharmacy is able to do more damage to the Roadhog and to the Zenyatta. Obviously, neither of them have a great vertical aim and they're not hit-scan characters, whereas the Tank and Zenyatta will be favoured to cap this point if it gets to that stage. Would you say so, really? Definitely. Resurrection also have the ability to use Mercy's Resurrection. Oh my goodness, we're seeing it all the barrage up there. The ult wasn't so great. It looked like the Zenyatta got lucky and hit those shots, but now it's just the, the Mercy coming the in there, but the Roadhog well. uses the ult, like I said, to take Misses out the Mercy, hook. but goes for the other Roadhog, but wins the round based on point possession. Brilliant stuff there. I want to see a Batista again, man. Absolutely, as predicted. Amazing to see Mercy for Team yeah. Resurrection perform a resurrection. Oh. <laughs> Funny pun. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed to say that. I'm least. sorry. Maybe you guys should watch over me. So we're heading on to the next round here. We're about to see the picks. We see whether Crosshairs are utilizing the long range. No, they're not, or well, apart from the Ash. They're keeping a very tanky, but with the healer to try and deal with the fact that, you know, to keep the strong point, because they need to win this next round. We're seeing an equal game now. Two teams that are very close together in how they're doing so far on the competition. It looks like both sides have gone for almost opposite picks throughout the spectrum, which I think is really going to be interesting to see them clash together. Yeah, yeah. interesting pick by Resurrection, on, I think. That Lucio could just... Uh, use his speed boost ability and they could freeze and Brigitte with her a flail there could just absolutely tear them apart if their Roadhog gets frozen Scott, that's one main player down. Scott, do you think that's a bit of a strange composition there from Resurrection? They don't seem to have very much damage with two healers and uh, or, or sort of a tank healer in Brigitte. Uh, I'd say the benefit of Brigitte is that she's basically invincible if you can use her right. Especially with that kind of healing going back but it, it shows there that Really, it's about how much they've practiced. You don't want to throw a random combination like this, but if they've practiced and they've got some kind of idea of what they're going to do with it, then, you know, a random combination like this against the meta throws the other team off. So it could be really strategic if used correctly. Three versus two here, crosshairs have a one-person advantage that may went down. Two um, healers versus three. It looks like we've got an even pick on crosshairs part here. And I think Crosshairs, as long as they can do this right and they can land at the right point, they have, the, of course, the massive advantage, like you said, with the two healers. Um, but the capture point is coming into play, and it looked like Crosshairs have already got that, that there. They're using the Brigitte shield, Brigitte shield to kind of create a little barrier, to, but they're staying up there. They can't move down. They're too afraid to move down because the massive DPS that's sat on the capture point right now is just a lot to oppose. Yeah, especially with Re Resurrection not having their mid, that's a huge disadvantage for them because if they're, there's nothing stopping them Roadhog from healing. But unless Brigitte uses her shield bash, but she'll have to get very close range to do that. Like oh, the attempt then, point here. It failed. It looks like they're trying to get the close range combat, which is ideal. And they've actually taken one of Crosshairs out. But it looks Bob's like that Bob's in the game. Bob is on the third point. player here. And it, they won it with the Bob. The, the Bob proving to be incredibly effective. Brilliant play from Crosshairs out at the end. Using that one person advantage and obviously slowing the map down. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that play. Has the meta in Overwatch slowed down in recent times? They used to have a lot of dive comp, yeah. a lot of D.Va. We're not seeing that. Recently in the Overwatch League, we've. There's been a lot of 3-3 three, three where it's just lots of brawl, lots of just running straight in and just smashing each other about. So 
but with recent changes to some of the heroes, like Doomfist, who we saw on the, on the first part of this map here, he's got a recent buff, so he's very effective now. I think what Overwatch, what Blizzard are kind of realizing is the fact that they need to level out the playing field in terms of the range of combat. Mm -hmm. So with these the new patches and the new the new hero especially, we're seeing kind of bringing the combat out to a more physical close range thing, but at the same time allowing for like Ash and Widowmaker to get the further back combat. We're seeing the shield there being really useful, the protecting them here. with the high DPS, but yeah, the same combat showing how, you know, maybe the lockout, not having lockout is either going to be a great thing for this team or it's not going to be a great thing for and we'll be interested to see. They're taking shots here across the map. The 76 just kind of getting boosted a little bit, taking out the shield bit by bit so the rest of the team can assist. Both teams, of course, having the shield here, which is going to prove quite effective. It's a very similar, actually, but identical combo, uh, yes. identical lineup. This will move basically down to their the mechanical aim and their experience within the Overwatch itself. A true, a true skill match. True skill oh, match. But that was Diana. Nice sleep, they're keeping up there, just taking the absolute shots, using that shield really effectively. Wanting to get rid of them as fast as possible with that shield going in, but they're rushing in now. We can hear them in the and background. And tactical visor ready. Little, little oh, taps like, going on there, but that's a great oh. snipe. A great snipe, but it looks like Crosshair's got the advantage there. It's like the Anna, Nano Boost did it for the Orisa there, increasing her firing speed and her damage. Crosshair's win the game. Maybe this will entail to us that Crosshairs have that ability to get a more physical attack up close. They, they've shown that they've got maybe the better aim, maybe the better play style, and it really does show how much, uh, you know, the heroes that you select matter. Yeah, absolutely. I think these two teams were definitely feeling themselves out. They, they, they had a wide range of comps there. That was, it, it was yeah. like a cornucopia of composition there. We had the mirror match, of course, at the end, but we had some strange off-meta picks. It was a really, really interesting first map. And over to Castillo now. Who do you think is going to take it, Bailey? I think it all depends on who who takes advantage of all the environmental that they could do. Because on one side of the map, it's just it's just a pure cliff. And if they take if they take advantage of that using Lucio or Arissa, there's a very high chance that they will have a great advantage over the other team. But at the same time, now we've seen them in their first game. You could almost say their picks are more predictable. Yeah. To the level of we've seen what the team is good at. We've seen that they're great at kind of using shields and mm. pushing forward slowly. Will the other team now on a new map where they've got a different area to work with utilize that and use it against them? So can I ask you two, are you Overwatch players yourselves or are you just, you know, those, those who can't do cast? Is that, is that, is that sort of the... I, oh, I, <laughs> I'm not saying, on. I'm not suggesting they can't play, but... Oh, I am. I personally play some Overwatch. I do, yeah, but I'm mainly a League of Legends player. So, oh, okay, cool. You know, yep. play it, play it the League style. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> League fans here in the house. Now. Personally, I play Overwatch. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the best in the world, but I do enjoy a bit of shot casting every now and then. Okay. Well, we'll get, we'll get back to some of the best in the world here. We have uh, Crosshairs against Resurrection still, and. Uh, Interesting pharmacy. Yeah, or, uh, it looks like Crosshairs or... might have a counter for that though with their Widow. But it looks like Resurrection got the early hand there. They're doing a lot of damage. It's a trade that Resurrection are winning. Crosshairs took quite a lot. Their Widowmaker almost got taken out. Quite lucky that they got the healing there from the Mercy. Well, that would have been game over for them. But it looks like here, both teams are now kind of taking the more defensive strategy. They've worked out the range. Keeping the pharmacy there nice and high in the sky. We're seeing, we're seeing two fights going on here. We're seeing one on each side. It's kind of split up a little bit. And now they're going back in their dying instant there for resurrection. That was resurrection resing. Maybe that is their team strategy. We've seen a lot of mercy for them. Maybe they are quite literally going to do a lot of resurrection throughout this this tournament. Well, let's hope so. Brilliant Ooh. play from the Widowmaker. They're getting two headshots in a row. And of course now, Mercy's resurrection is now on cooldown, so she won't be able to use that for quite a long time now. The other Mercy taken down there, and Mercy can't resurrect herself, so now it's just down to the Widow. The Widowmaker really showing some great aim here with all aware of where everyone is. She's still, she's holding out. I'm surprised she hasn't used that since it doesn't carry through. But we're, we're about to see here a little snipe tap again. Oh, that was brutal. Can we get a Widowmaker in the chat, please, everybody? You know, Widowmaker really showing <laughs> some popping off ability here. Widowmaker new meta for Digital Schoolhouse, wow. who knows? Beautiful play there from the Widowmaker, leaping across the point. And you, you have to favor the two oh. against one, and they catch it there at the end with the hook. And Roadhog strong enough to finish it off. Crosshairs lose the first that, map there to Res. That really was a great round. You know, we saw, a, I'd like to say, a Widowmaker carry. 
in, in the lowest I, sense. I would was, almost, yeah, little, I almost agree with that. I, I would say that was a little, although they didn't win the round, we saw a winner make a carry. And I picked off that okay. far, quite a few times, I think, yeah. That was some, some great aim there, you know. Uh, we're heading on into the next round. We're going to see what picks we have. Will Crosshairs be able to get back from that? Of course, they won the first game. They had the confidence there. Were they able to continue that through? And it looks like they haven't gone for the second time, but they've gone for the McCree. Almost a bit more skill-based, I'd say, because, of course, you're dealing with, the, with no ADS. We're heading in now, we've got both teams with the Roadhog, which is a bit standard, I'd say, so far. I think Roadhog for 3v3 is strong meta. We've seen him in almost every game so far played. He's really showing that ability to, of course, with the self-heal and the kind of splash damage at the closer range with the shotgun. But now, you know, utilizing the heal right there, as I said, you know, both teams taking it off. It's a trade there. Resurrection do quite a lot of damage on crosshairs. They win that trade, doing a lot to the Roadhog. The Roadhog gets boosted back up. Resurrection still sat almost at max health, with crosshairs worrying a little bit, bringing them down. But both teams with healers are bringing it back up. They're bringing close range now. It looks like the Roadhog got taken out on crosshairs. Resurrection really showing that ability there with the double. And they're going for the final one. Resurrection winning round. Will they be able to win this next round and take back a game? Uno, dos, tres. They all go down in Castillo. Resurrection 2 0 up here. That was a brilliant freeze by Resurrection's mid there. That Roadhog trying to get that healing in, but not quite being able to get all the way up. Definitely, I think what we're going to see throughout this competition is uh, the fact that both teams are going to show... Firstly, I think we're going to see the Roadhog. I mean, the Roadhog's here to stay. Unless some team has some stupidly hard Roadhog counter that they've planned in advance, I think the Roadhog is here to stay. Hold on, say, that. Say, that, say that, say that, says the commentator, but we don't get a Roadhog pick. No Roadhog's pick. Taken. No Roadhog pick. Bit more risky, but we do have a big shield there, which is basically B-Tech Roadhog. Uh, you know, getting a bit of the combat going on there. We see both teams with shield, which is, you know, a common meta, really, for 3v3, because you get a high DPS and then a nice little shield, and you can get the kind of attack going on side by side. What we're bringing here, we're bringing it slowly together. Both teams trading a little bit of damage, but they're keeping it nice and high on both sides. You know, but it looks like Crosshairs have the early advantage for the damage. Bailey, can you uh, describe, it seems like uh, Crosshairs have gone for two different snipers. What are the abilities of, of, of Ash and, uh, and uh, Anna for the people at home who don't know? So Anna is the support hero in those snipers and she fires um, healing darts that will heal your allies but they will damage other players. Okay. Um, whereas Ash basically just has um, a rifle which can either scope in and for high precision, high accuracy damage or just hit fire which in turn is not as accurate, and it's very effective. It fires a lot faster than when you're stuck. I think Ash mainly people use if you can if you keep the Ash safe long enough. You see we've seen 80 once, 93 times. Yeah, nice pick there by the Ash. A great pick from the Ash, that's building up. If they can get the Bob in, the Bob will be extremely effective. 95% times, 99%. Where's Bob? Where's the Bob? Bob, Bob come on, Bob! Come on, Bob. Can I get a Bob in chat, everybody? A Bob in chat? <laughs> Great little shots, the bomb still hasn't come out. The bomb can be really effective. Maybe showing the raw aim ability here, they're now on the floor. Will they bring in the bomb? The bomb here making the bomb. Come on, it's bomb. Come on, it's bomb. Come on, bomb. Come on, bomb. Come on, bomb. Come on, bomb. I told you. The bomb is the way forward, everybody. You need a bomb. The bomb can carry. Bob is the future. Nice and simple. I'm telling you, everybody, if you get a Bob in this game, you've basically won the round. I want to see more of Bob on this because it, having another player, even if, it, even if he is just shooting because he locks on to any hero that is close to him, it's basically having a Torbjorn turret, but with the advantage of another player. Do you know what I'd have to say, guys? I think that Ash who threw that beautiful Bob at the end there is the star DPS for the crosshairs because that was the uh, Widowmaker as well. That yeah, for sure. For sure, sure. we've yeah. seen they're clearly a more sniper-based person. Which is quite interesting because usually we're used to seeing tanks as, you know, more spray characters as DPS, but they're really showing that a DPS doesn't necessarily have to be oh, an attack. And oh. Goes in there, that was a nice Just little clean slate from Crosshairs. <laughs> But, you know, a bit unlucky there. Mercy's gone, they've lost that res opportunity, but it looks like they've got, they've broken the pharmacy. Crosshair's really smart, they saw the pharmacy. In my opinion, you know, what I always do is I take the Mercy away. Because without the Mercy, you're not dealing with the heals. A lot of people try and take the Therapy because, of course, she's got the damage. But if you get rid of the Therapy, you've still got some heals and the resurrection possibility. If you get rid of the Mercy, you know, you're cleaning the slate ready for a great fight. And we're seeing here, without that healer, it looks like the... The fair is really low. It's going to be interesting to see. I think just a few shots from the Hanzo, and like I said, you know, the Hanzo quite literally just took the fair. They're going really hard, strong tank, oh, and Crosshairs win the round. Crosshairs have the possibility to continue their, their win, but it's a 2 2. Be interested to see what the final round brings to us. Looking at the reverse sweep here, Bailey, what would yeah. you like to see here from Resurrection? What were they doing so well in the first two rounds that they've stopped doing? I, I think it's this map because on, on Echo Point Antarctica, there's a lot more inside place for them to like 
gather, use more shields, but on Castillo it's very open compared to that. The point's a lot more open, there's not really anywhere to hide. Oh really. my goodness, Moira. We've got a Junkrat as played. well. Oh, Moira. Moira and Junkrat, so the Irish team are picking Moira with her beautiful ginger hair to see what <laughs> she can come up with here. Junkrat must be very effective here against this Reinhardt. He can just throw his grenades in and apply damage to that shield. We're seeing these kind of close, those close quarter kind of keeping it nice and healed up in the area. They know that they haven't got the long range characters and they're utilizing that very well, using the cover that this map offers, keeping around the corner, just poking out when they need to, take some shots, get back heal, and they're gonna repeat that throughout this thing we're seeing. Whereas the other team, of course, they've got the shield, so they wanna kind of keep the further away combat and spray, where of course Cross um, Resurrection realize that they're keeping to behind, behind cover. Again, we're focusing on this star DPS from uh, Crosshairs, who's this is very pokey, very cagey affair, just building ults, building ults, perhaps taking it a little bit slower. Uh, Bailey, what do you make of this Junkrat pick? What are they going to try and I do? I think if the Junkrat can build his Riptide ultimate, it will be very effective because no, I don't, none of those uh, heroes on Crosshairs have any, any way to protect themselves against it unless they all get behind Reinhardt's shield. How about you, Scott? 2v2, what do you think? Oh, I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. They could go one of two ways. This can either go away where Resurrection keep under the cover as they currently are and use that to their advantage and force it to the capture point finish. Or it goes away if they try and get, you know, a bit big-headed and try and push a bit more, where, of course, Crosshair's advantage of having a shield will, will prove massive. OK, 20 seconds left until the capture area unlocks. Obviously, uh, we've, we, we've heard some predictions that this is either going to be a push or a hold for the point. Looks like both parties are content just to hold. Oh, but we see a push, we see a push and a, and a nice little swipe there. It looks like Crosshairs are going to capture the point first. But we see the jump crack drop on there, but it doesn't prove so great, but it does take out the jump rat himself got taken out. The 76... Tactical visor coming out here. Tactical visor and they win the kill. game. Crosshairs going 2-0 now. I think, I think that DPS sound on Crosshair is really doing it for their team. Just so consistent with the shots that they've been doing over all these three maps here. Yeah, absolutely. One of the early stars today is that DPS play. Of course, the teammates not to be forgotten about. That is one of the beautiful things about Overwatch. It is such a team-based game. You can't just be a shooter. You need also the support from the tanks to absorb the damage and the healing to really form that lovely trifecta. And I think the other part of it is Overwatch as a team game especially, you can get someone who's very good at the game and can carry you, but they can't necessarily carry you to a win. You need everybody in the team supporting in some way, working together to build up a great strategy, which Crosshairs really showed. Mm. So, down 2-0, Resurrection. Any thoughts, guys, how they, can, how they can pull this out? We've seen the Pharmacy, that shop is closed, not working. We've seen Junkrat, strange pick, didn't really work either. Is there anything that you've seen that they can come back against us, or is that DPS just too strong? On Echo Point, we saw them use Batiste and Doomfist, who are both very strong characters now. And I think if they utilize the Batiste Immortality Field, they could probably take the win, because if they go far, there's, the Immortality Field works, that only 20% of your health cannot be taken away while you're inside that field. I think they need to utilize that and just take part damage. Absolutely, process. they need to pick Symmetra. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised we haven't really seen anyone that's necessarily super toxic played yet. Like, we haven't, I don't think we've seen a Bastion yet, you know? Oh. Where's the, Dude, where's... No, I, I'm, I like playing Bastion, you know? So you're it's, toxic it's a, in the game, <laughs> is that what you're telling me? I'm, I hear toxicity. If you can play Bastion, it's a very good pick. I hear, sorry, I hear toxicity. <laughs> is that toxicity knocking on the door? Recently, Bastion got a buff as well, where his, his accuracy will increase the longer he fires. And looks like we will see the comp that we saw at the beginning. Oh, yeah. some very early shots there from Crosshairs. They're really showing that they've got this in the bag. In, you know, so far, though, something could really happen different. But they're taking some little shots, they're going really hard working as a team. You can see this formation using the shield. They're keeping back, they know how to move as a team, but the Wrecking Ball coming in there straight away, getting some little things and then dipping out. Doesn't want to be part of that. Resurrection there weren't really taking advantage of the immortality field of Batiste. Wrecking Ball just went in there and just went completely out. all the way past of it. Yeah. The immortality, the immortality field is great, but I think it's so new to the game that not enough people have learned how to use it as a meta advantage. Yeah. I think Doomfist and Wrecking Ball are both very dive characters, and Batiste is not really what I would consider a dive character. So using that immortality field wasn't wasn't really a good choice with the comp. We're seeing the jump being queued here. It will be interesting to see how it's being going to be going to, going to be utilised. We're seeing a little bit of the other team sitting there. They're more towards the capture point. They know that as long as they can just tank it onto the capture point, they have the shield, they have the massive advantage. We're seeing the jump being queued a little bit, some little shots going on across. A little bit of throwing across. They're trying to pull them up, get the shots, but it's, it's a nice little heal and save from the Baptiste there, keeping 
behind cover, just charging himself back up, getting ready for a jump. Whether we'll see that being used a lot, the capture point, of course, unlocking soon. As I predicted, Crosshairs moving down, moving up to kind of control that area, keep a nice little tank on there, but they've also got someone up on the high ground prepared to snipe. Absolutely here. I'm, I'm at very, very impressed by Crosshair's maturity and discipline here. They've kept the high ground, but also just waiting for that capture to unlock. No need to get that third kill. They just want to make sure that they win this map. Yes. And, um, and they do. They did get the third kill. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. The interesting going on is the next round here. Now that we've seen Baptiste be tactically used, but not so well, it looks like a lot of teams think, oh, great immortality field, but they don't truly understand because, of course, it's not been out long enough to really play well with him, that, you know, you need to be strong, you need to stay in that area to utilise it correctly. Absolutely. Uh, you alluded to Bastion earlier. Do you think that this is the sort of map where Bastion excels with that high ground, put a shield and a healer behind, perhaps, and wait for that capture I, I point? Think, I would say it's a very strong map to use it on. Um, because there's multiple high grounds, there's three throughout the whole map, and you can just position yourself and move about those wherever you need to. I think, yeah. for sure, especially if you have the Reinhardt Bastion, especially with the new, the new buff, as you said, where you have the ability to slowly focus the fire, if you can pull it off right with a shield in the right place, I mean, like we're seeing Hanzo, we're seeing that pot shots, but it's not showing to affect him. I think if they had a Bastion, it would create more fear in the other team because, of course, it's a massive spray down that's going to be an issue unless you've got a strong healer. Neither team's really hitting any shots here. Both teams kind of just getting the team a little bit scared. We're seeing Resurrection playing a lot more defensive than they have in previous rounds. They're a little bit more scared now, of course. The crosshairs are 2-0 up and have won this first round of the game. I think they're really backing down, you know, they're building down into a, a smaller formation that will stick together more to try and combat this. Absolutely. It looks like that Hanzo is doing his best Robin Hood impression and just flinging arrows across the map, trying to build that ult to potentially unlock that big dragon that comes across the map to clear that point at the end. Got some damage here to Zenyatta. I think the the Widow on Crosshairs here is seems to be a little bit countered by their Rhino here, that big shield. Guys, I'm going to have to jump in. Do you know why? Why? Because I've already won the series. It's have already won 2-0. It's the best of three. We're just playing a game for the sake of playing it. So uh, congratulations, of course, to Crosshairs on the win, 2-0. Uh, to zero. The last game we're going to actually cut short because uh, yeah, they've won. They're in the semi-finals. They don't need to play another game. But really? uh, simple as that, gentlemen. So uh, yeah, give it up for Crosshairs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Boys. Carried away a little bit there. We let that game sort of roll on because we like uh, bringing you a little bit of bonus action. But uh, let's talk about crosshairs because that was a pretty dominating performance from those guys. Two 0 pretty, pretty. For sure, I think throughout the entire game they showed that they were able to keep the strategy. A lot of teams win the first game and then they get into the second game and they think, you know, we're doing so well that we can take a chill pill, we can relax a little bit. But they really showed as a team <laughs> they were able to maintain that strategy. They were able to maintain the skill throughout the entire game. And yeah. Bailey, what about we, what, what were your takeaways from that game? I think the first two games, we're going to ignore the third one. Okay, okay. It never happened. I, th I, think, I think Crosshair's hitscan DPS to Infinity 2 was truly the star of their team, utilising the heroes that they're clearly best on, using Widow to take out their Pharah and using um, McCree to... I mean, I don't think that worked on that map, but definitely playing to their strengths. And Adam, I want to ask you a very quick question. How good are these guys, by the way? Like, Absolutely. genuinely phenomenal backstage. I actually put out a tweet myself saying that. It's actually inspiring listening to you guys. Like, everyone we've had so far uh, from the student commentators has come in and just absolutely killing it. I, I think they're doing a great job. Uh, I am learning a lot from you two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get them a round of applause, please? <laughs> you don't need to give yourself a round of applause. You just lap it up. Lap it up, guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, fantastic job from you guys. Um, what do you think of Crosshairs moving forward then? Because uh, they've looked pretty good so far, you say, and they're looking pretty solid across the board. I think now that we've seen them in a game, it's going to be very interesting to see them in the semis because we're going to get the other teams that have now watched this game and they've seen the kind of strategies that they go forward. They really show to be really strong snipers as a team. They show that their ability is longer range combat, so maybe the other teams will try and counter that by trying to bring the combat really short range. We'll see some short range fights, which are the best, in my opinion. You know, watching people just bash it out in a very small arena is something that's really satisfying to watch. But I think <laughs> it is, it is. We'll be going forward now, you know, with this idea that they are a strong team. They, they wipe the floor a little bit, you know. There was a little bit of floor wiping going on. And, yeah. I think they're a strong team. Certainly want to keep our eyes Definitely. on moving forward. Uh, Bailey, let's talk about uh, the other side of things, though. Uh, obviously, for Resurrection, didn't quite go to plan as they would no. have wanted. However, what, what do you think they can improve on last time? What will they take away from today? I think they didn't utilise some of the new heroes enough. Like, they, they chose Batiste, but they chose heroes that didn't particularly work with him. So I think they need to focus on working on heroes that can um, work together because they decide... 
the TC Mortality field is very stationary and doesn't move anywhere, but they chose to use um, a wrecking ball who just then just went completely past it, just got taken down. For sure, I think says. it's such a new character that using it in a competitive level of play is quite risky. It's a very risky play because you don't truly understand how it's going to be most effective. You know, it's great playing in casual maybe and using it and getting your whole team on there, but a free v free is not casual. It's not a six-man game. The fact that you're dealing with less people who are more versatile to movement, more likely to be moving around the rap map, as we saw with the Wrecking Ball, you know, it's a really risky play, but it didn't, didn't prove too effective. Well, Anna, what were your takeaways from that first game? Who impressed you? Um, what, uh, what, what are we looking forward out from, uh, what are we looking forward to, excuse me, uh, from Crosshairs moving forward? Yeah, well, I, I think Crosshairs and uh, Woking are definitely going to have a, a, a solid match. Uh, I was really impressed with uh, Team Resurrection as well. You know, last year not qualifying, this year getting to the first stage. I'm sure they'll be back next year. Um, and just in, in general, that, that was six fantastic players that would beat me very easily, repeatedly. Um, <laughs> we, can also, make the, we, can, can we can make that happen? No, we're not going to do that to you. We're not going to do no, that? No, no, don't worry, you're safe. Test match. You're safe Plus three. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'll well, play with you. I will genuinely. Let's, do it. Let's, right, well, okay. uh, let's right. have a look at the bracket then. Let's have, uh, see how everything's uh, panning out at the moment as far as the teams are concerned. Who's going to be in our first semi-final? You can see it right there. Only W in our first game, picking up the 2-1 to one win over SHSB Esports. Uh, moving into that semi-final where they will take on Crosshairs, who picked up the 2-0 win uh, that we just saw there against Resurrection. But they're the games that we've got to come uh, after this, we've got Bow Hunt School against Unconfirmed, and then we've got Mass Door Gaming taking on Scorpions. Now we're going to take a little bit of an extended break here because we're going to let the players uh, refuel a little bit, get a little bit of lunch under their belts, as, as much as probably we are as well. We're going to go and get dug in, uh, but we'll be back in just a few moments. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few.
never taking whatever you told me. I know what I could be. Making the most of pentacle and sides. Tell me, is this what you made me?
Just can't let this go Every last chance I had is gone But I just can't let you on uh, Mike Barnes is the man who's the media information so you might be the man to go to he was hovering around somewhere red t-shirt to ask the way Thank you. 
And welcome back everybody to the grand finals of the Digital uh, Schoolhouse Tournament from this year. Uh, my name is Mark Hatcher, it's been a pleasure to Desk Coast uh, so far today and we've already had uh, a couple of fantastic games to bring you guys at home. The Overwatch action has been hot and the players and the commentators have not disappointed so far. Uh, it's been a fantastic day so far. Uh, welcome, we've got some new guests here alongside the man who's already been here of course. We've got Rams back on the desk but alongside him we've got James Wiseman and Heather Steele. How have you found it James? Have you enjoyed yourself so far today? Yeah, it's been really interesting watching everyone play. Definitely. Uh, and uh, Heather, how are you finding today? Um, it's been pretty chill, it's been fun. Are you, um, yeah. Are you, uh, are you enjoying the Overwatch action that's gone down so far today? Have you been impressed by anyone in particular? Um, I've just enjoyed watching the whole thing. Um, Woking, who won the first one, were the ones who won my regionals match. So, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. OK, well, uh, it's been uh, fantastic to hear from the guys so far. Rams, I'm sure you've been thoroughly impressed with them so far, everyone that we've had up here on the desk. Yeah, everyone is, you know, full out on the, on the commentary. It's been amazing. The games as well has been insane. We've had some really close games and we've had some not so close games at the same time. But it just goes to show, you know, who, who's really ready for today. OK, well, uh, speaking of ready for today, we do have our bracket to update with you guys at home to let you know how things have gone down so far today. You can see at the top there, our first semi-final is, uh, is in, the w in the waiting, waiting in the wings is what I'm looking for there. Uh, only W uh, taking on crosshairs. But we've got to get our second uh, lot of quarterfinals out of the way here. Bow Hunt School will be taking on Unconfirmed. That will be our next matchup. And then, of course, after that, we have Matador Gaming taking on Scorpions. Now, we've already got our two semi-finalists waiting there in the top. Who do you think, uh, just from those low lower bracket teams there, we should be keeping our eyes on? It's, uh, again, I mean, go just quickly say about this. I mean, oh, that's a tasty match coming up as well. But these last two, um, what we've got now, I mean, Bohuns did win their qualifier um, from the lakeside, Belong. And then, uh, again, it's uh, Unconfirmed, who actually beat um, year, the, year, the first year winners. Uh, wow, OK. Right there. So uh, with a North East, North, East, North East Futures. There we go. I got it right. Sort okay. Of. Well, yeah, uh, but yeah, but, but they, they beat the they beat the champions of the first year, and uh, looking to come back as well for this one. Okay. Well, good idea for us. Let's get into the next game. Yeah. Let's yeah, get into yeah. our next game. First out in our third quarter final of the day is Bohan. <laughs> and their opponents in our third quarter final of the day will be Bohan. No, it won't, because they're already here. I'm a liar. It's unconfirmed. We all make mistakes, right? We all make mistakes. Uh, we'll start over here with you guys. Uh, Bo Hunt, who I've introduced twice. Sorry, unconfirmed. I will, I'm going to give you a proper introduction in a second. How are you feeling about today? Are you excited to get into the action? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Fantastic. And what have you been impressed with uh, with some of the players you've seen so uh, far today? I've been quite impressed with some of the Roadhog plays. They've been quite good. Are you lo looking to shut those players down later? Yeah. On? Yeah, OK, good stuff. And now, ladies and gentlemen, unconfirmed, right? OK, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> how are you feeling about today, even though I just butchered your intro? Um, I'm feeling confident about it. I think we could probably do well in this. So it's different. It's difficult because we were practicing lockout and it's not lockout. So it's going to be a bit weird, but I think we can do it. You can adapt, you can adapt. And how does it feel different to playing here on this Gfinity main stage here in London to when you're just playing at home? It's a lot more nerve-wracking, really. I mean, it's different when we're playing just us six with our subs at school. Yeah. Now we've got this massive crowd, it's a lot more nerve-wracking to play, yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Don't worry, the crowd have been fantastic today. I keep bigging you guys up because you've been fantastic today. Uh, but please, go and take your stations, gentlemen. Uh, best of luck in our next game. As we wander back over here. 
See, I told you, look, you guys have got nothing to worry about. I'm completely ruining everything I'm doing today, so you guys are going to be wait, absolutely fine. Wait, I was trying to get Northeast Futures. There we go. I've got to set it There we go. Then. You're back yeah, as well. <laughs> well, we've got, of course, a Teesside qualifier winners against Lakeside qualifier winners as well. So, again, it's going to be another tough, tough match. And what are your thoughts uh, on the team name Unconfirmed? Because when I saw that, I just think I'm waiting for that information to come in and I'm waiting for yeah. the, for the producer to tell probably me. probably just chose that to mess with you, I think. Is that what it? Let's see. It's everyone's probably. against me today. This is, uh, this is sneakier than I thought it was. Uh, let's have a look at the maps for our next quarterfinal then and let's see exactly where we're going to be playing. Uh, here we go. We've got Black Forest, Castillo and Necropolis. Uh, what are your thoughts on these, Heather, uh, for this lineup of maps? Um, I think both... Black Forest and Castillo are very close quarters maps. You'll be there'll be a lot of melee me me in those ones. Well, Heather, what we should do is we should get into our first map here. So, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's over to you. Please take it away. Here we go. Then we have got Bow Hunt against Northeast Futures. Here we go. We're starting off the round with our with our um, players. We've got Mercy Farah and a Roadhog composition against the Mercy Bastion and. Ooh, and Arisa as well, so at long range. What do you think about this then, Jamie? That's the first Bastion we've seen so far. So that'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And already a kill as well. And the resurrection as and, uh, so we had a pharmacy taken down, been resurrected, actually Bastion taken down as well. And this is all going well for the blue team now, Heather. I think but, um, I think Farah just used her ult there, so that was that, that, that would have been done a lot to help get back in the game. Um, yeah. And yeah, they just lost. Yeah, they just lost, and Bohun's actually come out with the Bastion and Arisa for the first round in this game. So, yeah, so do you think they would use the same composition now, James? They might. Um, I think they've been, I think both teams have been practicing lockout previously, so they'll probably have other comps that they'll switch to. Okay, as we're going to get underway. First round, of course, go to Bow Hunt and looking good from that. Are they going to use the same composition? We shall see. No, they've actually changed no. up here. We've got a Moira, a Junkrat, and a Diva against Unconfirmed. Uh, ooh, this is the Reaper. Ooh, I've got Reaper. Finally, a Reaper in this one. A Reinhardt, and of course, it is. I can't see that. It's a healer. Yeah. Uh, look, um, Brigitte. Yeah, yeah Brigitte, that. there we go. I couldn't see there. But yeah, we're going to start off here. And of course, on the red side, Heather, what's it looking like? Um, oh, I just moved. Um, the Reapers get, like, sort of getting into it. I think with the Diva, she sort of has a second life, so it's a lot easier to stay in the game as long if, like, once the mech's been destroyed, because she can recover the mech. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the Junglat can do if he can actually keep himself alive long enough to achieve anything. And use his ult. Yeah. So a lot of poke right now. We've got actually Reaper on a half of his ultimate up right now with 54%. On the other side of Bohun, uh, Moira getting her ultimate at 50%. So right now it looks very stout. Are they going to be wasted for the points here, James? It's seeming like it's a constant fight, but nothing's really going on our side. Although we have just lost the Moira from Bohun. Yeah, great play and there. the Davis Astro Mac. Yeah, it's a great play there. Three versus two right now, Heather. It's all looking uh, daunting here for Bohunt. Die, die, there it die. Is. Wow. Quick round from two to zero there. Straight in. Reaper again. A lot of damage up close and personal with those shotguns and, you know, one all and so far so good. So what, what are you making of this so far now, Heather? Um, I'm thinking in the first match, they used the composition, that they used the same composition that was used in the very first match by, by, by one of the teams, I can't remember which one. Um, and I'm thinking that it might be Bohunt that has the advantage here, um, having just won that match. Yeah, so saying that, though, we've got a pharmacy composition and a deeper for Bohunt, but actually we got to see our first Baptiste as well, and I was looking forward to seeing if one of the teams would be using Baptiste, of course, the new yeah. support hero here, very good at healing, along with a Junkrat and a Roadhog. So, uh, James, do you think this is the right composition to go against the Pharmacy? Maybe, if he can refrain from using the um, <coughs> Immortality Field when he doesn't need to, because then he can just deny first damage from both the Power and the Diva. And of course, Quite ba Baptiste, uh, with that some machine gun there, the free burst uh, machine gun, does do some real damage as well, so it can actually do, can pick off some of the pharmacy composition. Yeah. 
But what we're seeing here right now, we're seeing uh, the immortality field has gone down. We're seeing a lot of patience, a lot of poke right now. A lot of heels coming in from Baptiste, trying to stick with her team. Junkrat is going down. Oh, oh and actually Baptiste instead goes down from the pharmacy. And that'll be two versus three, so it's Junkrat and Roadhog trying to take trying to do some damage right now, but Pharmacy is really coming out on top here. Okay, both Farah and the Mercy have their ults, so that's going to be interesting to see. 25 seconds here now, Heather. What are we going to see from here? Well, I saw Diva in the capture area just there, but she moved out, so currently there's no one in there. And, oh, no, um, they have just gone in there now, and if they can stay in there for long enough, they'll obviously be able to capture it. So I think Unconfirmed could win this one. Oh, but Bo Hunt's going back in there as well, so... Well, Bo oh, Hunt's got one player. Yeah, one, okay. one player is one versus three with the uh, whole hog, and it's not going to be enough because Barrage will come down. It was three versus one. It was a very tough time here for Unconfirmed, yeah. and they will take the round, and it's going to be map points here for Bo Hunt's school uh, as we're going to see out the next compositions, and, uh, yeah, so far, so good. It looks like... Let's see, is there going to be another composition change? We'll find out in the next eight seconds' time. Been very mixed so far on the compositions. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting. Here we go. We see the composition now. We're actually getting a pharmacy composition along with a soldier 76 here on unconfirmed. Lucio Genji and ooh, Winston. So it's a massive dive composition here from Bohun. So what do we make of this? Well, if they know how to use that dive comp, it can be very powerful and it's looking wow. like they do. Right now, just going all in face in right now. Winston and Genji really tearing up. This one looking to take out the map, but there's only one person left for Unconfirmed. It's going to be, it is going to be the round. Looks like there it is. So the first map will go to Bohunt School. Oh, well, sorry, is it Unconfirmed? Is it Unconfirmed? Oh, sorry, Unconfirmed, sorry. The, uh, my, my apologies, it looks like the scoreboard was uh, changed, so it's Unconfirmed. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> scoreboard again has got me. From the first game, they changed the scoreboard. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, unconfirmed. I would put it that way. But, yeah, unconfirmed to win it. Right. They were, of course, T-side winners. What did you make of that? That was definitely showing the same very strong pharmacy that they were playing at the um, qualifiers at the regionals. So, that's definitely interesting. Yeah, so slight uh, bit of a mistake there. My apologies. So, scoreboard is updated as unconfirmed winning that one. Heather, what do you make of that as well? Um, I think that it was... If they had changed, used a better composition, Unconfirmed could have been a much better chance of winning because they're certainly very good at it, but I think the composition that they used in the map specifically didn't give them so much of an advantage. So we're moving on to Castilia. What, what uh, should Bohunt be doing then? Um, again, what, what, now they've had a bit of a break, they're moving on to the next map. What should be the tactics and what should they be thinking about, James? If they can find some way to counter that dive comp, then they're in luck. If they've got stuns and flashbangs and that sort of thing, then they should be all right. But if they don't sort of adapt to that, then they'll struggle, definitely. OK, then. So we're just waiting for the next map. Of course, it's Castillo. I do apologise again. Uh, it was unconfirmed, again, who actually won the first map. Uh, we're just waiting now. Of course, they've got their lovely T-shirts. They're all designed their own T-shirts, I believe, you know, for this, in their own uniform, which is cool. And it's good to see, you know, the schools having their own sort of uniform for this. It shows how much pride they have yeah. for, you know, just coming into these sort of finals and everything. Yep, so, OK, so I'm just being told, yep, that's fine. So just waiting on the next map right now as we're going to go into it very shortly. Here we go. Fight. So, G, let's right. see. Back with that dive comp from um, Unconfirmed. Yep, so with the scoreboards will be changed. So it's actually Unconfirmed on the red side, and then it was Bohunt on the blue side. So apologies for that confusion. And we are starting off on Castillo, and there's a massive dive comp again. Again, they're sticking with it, Unconfirmed, into the faces okay. of Bohunt. But actually, Reaper is doing best. It actually focus on the Moira. And actually, Winston has gone down. So it's two versus three. Two versus two. Actually, Reaper's gone down. Two versus one. As Lucio's gone down. Now for Unconfirmed. So Genji getting hammered down. And we'll lose that one as well. So first round here to Bohunt. Right. That was so quick. It was so quick. It was in your face. Sort yeah. of composition there from Unconfirmed. But it got countered there by Bohunt. So a great start there from Bohunt. Yeah, strugg struggling to get any poke damage in before they dived in because of the Ryan's shield. 
and then the Reaper polishing off. Someone I didn't say. But yeah. So let's have a look at our next compositions for the next round. We got Bo Hunt on, Baptiste, uh, McCree, and Orisa. Meanwhile, we're unconfirmed will we'll run Lucio. Oh, first Zaya on this one and Brigitte. So what do we make of this, uh, Heather? Um, I'm thinking Orisa is definitely one that's not used so much. I, particularly in this map, I personally would find it more difficult to use Orisa, but it could be it could go around the other way and work in their favour. Yeah, they haven't so much. There isn't so much room for the Orisa to work here, but that Zarya could definitely be interesting. She can keep charge up. Yeah, putting the bubble on to their teammates, gaining the uh, you know the advantage of her power. Uh, increasing the power of her weapon and uh, oh, it's, it's worked, it's worked a lot, it's just pushing in there and uh, Unconfirmed will gain back around on this one as well. So one all the score on this second map. Of course, Bohunt do need to win this map to take it to three. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, two more rounds here for Unconfirmed and they will go through to the semi-finals. Let's have a look at the next compositions within five seconds. So far, so good. Really, Unconfirmed re just really want to be in their faces right now, James. Yeah. It's, uh, we've got we the standard pharmacy with the Roadhog from um, Bohun again. So is that going to be a good strategy? Because they know that Unconfirmed want to get in their faces and now they're trying for a poke composition here, Heather. Um, yes, I think that they're focusing a lot more on... Well, they haven't used the Orisa again this time, so they're focusing a lot more on using it particularly for this map again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that McQueen can hit the shots on the fat wood and just take down the pharmacy. But so far we're not really seeing much. Yeah, so far it's just a bit of poke right now, as you can see on the screen. McQueen just doing some damage. But Arisa as well. Arisa's shield is not up right now. Got boot off actually. Okay. And there's two versus three, so it's McCree and Mercy here for unconfirmed and unfortunately there. Uh, oh wow, it's actually got from two versus three. Two, uh, three versus one as well. Sorry, three versus two to three versus one. Now it's just McCree on unconfirmed side. Mercy, Farah, and Roadhog. So now they can make all of them. Oh, just fell off. Okay. <laughs> just, just rather than try and get killed, I'll just walk off instead. And now we'll give the round to Boho. So a good comeback. It's the worst way to fight. So they, they realized they weren't going to win the round. Well, McCree, you had to have like dead eye pretty much to yeah. try and win now. There was no chance of getting. Uh, with that, so yeah, so map point here for Bohuds if they can win this we go to a third game And I believe it was on Necropolis as well, so even another tougher map they, uh, It worked. they've carried on with it the sticking with the pharmacy and the Roadhog and Unconfirmed are back to their um World comp with the um Zarya. Yeah, so this is the first this is the round that they won with this composition as you can see here trying to attack from above as you can see above there Oh, and there we got one Zarya. down is Zarya down with the pharmacy card, but ah, wow, and it's going to be Brigitte as well. So it's just Lucio, and that's it. Wow, a quick round there. Yeah. And Bohuns will actually equalize as we head into map three right now. So very, felt like they got back what yeah. they wanted. Yeah, nothing to be done against that farmer there. Clearly knows what, um, knows what they're doing. Very cool and calm and collective you can see on your screens right now, and have a, they look very focused. Yeah, they're... They look like they're strategizing for the next one more than anything. So um, we are, I mean, we're going to head into Necropolis, and you, you know, you speak about Necropolis as well earlier, and uh, you know, just want to reiterate, it's, it's very, it's very open on the outside, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are not many buildings for Necropolis ever. Yeah, so it would be difficult to play a sniper in Necropolis, like Widowmaker or someone, um, since there's no buildings that you can shoot from. Um, I think a lot of ranged attacks still would be useful, as well as possibly characters and heroes with shields, because there's not going to be so many buildings you can hide behind. Yeah, so, audience, what do you think? Is it going to be unconfirmed or is it going to be Bohuns? What do you think? Unconfirmed? Who's supporting unconfirmed for this? Yeah. What about Bohuns score? Who's supporting them? Bohuns. Yeah, you twice, yeah. I, I, you twice, Mark, as well. As we've got to get into this one, we see our compositions. This is the third and final map for this one. We see Lucio, Winston, and Reaper this time for Bohunt. I don't confirm so. Mercy, a Widowmaker, and an Orisa. So snipers are out for this one, James. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see 
how the widow deals with um, with the Lucio from the one confirmed. Oh no, from Bohan, sorry. Yeah, and of course that shield will start to um, wait. Yeah, the shield, the bubble from Winston will start to make things difficult. And really, they've got to protect the Widowmaker, unconfirmed, they've got to protect the Widowmaker away from like Winston and Reaper, Heather. Level yes, the Mercy's, the Mercy's obviously straight in there with the healing, and it's, it's interesting to see what, how they're going to be able to deal with the complexity of the, of like the pyramids and stuff. Yeah, watching the um, Winston's health slowly tick back to full on, um, Lucio's not so great healing. Yeah, of course, the sustainable healing is very slow on Lucio compared to Mercy. Um, but of course, Mercy has double damage as well for the secondary, so can pull it on uh, either Widowmaker or Orisa, trying to go for that long range. But again, we've got 25 seconds until the area in the middle, so this might be in favour of Bohans because they have the more melee type up close and personal composition towards against uh, the composition of Mercy, Widowmaker and Orisa. So what are we taking this, James? If they can get in there before the Widow can pick someone off, then they can do, do a lot of damage. And, and there go. goes the Widow. Yeah, the Widow and Winston actually focused, had a good tactic to focus on the Widowmaker. Widow is left alone, two versus three right now, as all of it is going on to that. And it's actually three versus one. Orisa has actually dropped off and then Mercy will go down. So first round will go to Bohunt in this one. So looking good. that. That sort of up close and personal composition worked out. Yeah, definitely. So what do we see? What are unconfirmed going to do? What do you think? Should they go for the same composition or stick to the say, stick to what they've got, Heather? I think switch out the Widowmaker because she couldn't do so much in the small spaces until they were already in the like in the in the area match. They're back to that Bullcom which worked so well for them that one time. Yeah, the Lucio Desire and the Brigitte against a Baptiste, a Reaper and a Rhino. So we've got an actual shield here against a bubble shield. Um, so they can take a lot of damage as well. I mean, Brigitte has got a shield, but it doesn't, doesn't take as much, uh, you know, to d destroy it. Yeah, it takes a lot of organization to protect your team with a Brigitte shield, so. And actually we're getting a uh, Baptiste and Reaper, uh, Baptiste and Reinhardt just walking in, trying to find the opposition. There we go. Oh, actually Reaper tried to get in there, tried to take uh, some health off. But actually taking the high ground here for Unconfirmed, they know this is going to happen. They, they know that Bohunt wants to come in. And here we go. We're going to see if they can get in up close. No, they run away. Run away back and forth. It is right now. It's like, it is like a uh, seesaw here in this stairwell. Very close right now, Heather. I think the long, it's going to get quite confusing, so you really want a very melee character in here. I honestly don't even know how to say that. Um, using the shields a lot is going to be useful in the close quarters, but a big Ooh. shield would be more complicated. Baptiste nearly went down uh, from Zaya, but Reaper actually managed to get a kill, so it's two versus three right now. Go. Salt is on really low health. I know the soldier's already got one back up again. There's Baptiste uh, there for you, and of course it's two versus three right now with the immortality field. 15 seconds right now coming in, as we'll just wait for the point to open up right now. We'll see. It's going to be do or die here. If they can get an early kill here, unconfirmed, onto Bohans, then they might have a chance. But here comes Reaper onto Brigitte. They're all focusing Brigitte right now as Brigitte swings as much as they can. Oh, right has dropped down and is out. It's two versus right, right now. Tie. And unfortunately, it is lost there because of what Bohans have actually gained the control points. So nearly, if Lucia was able to bop off Bohans, it would have been there. But 2 0 right now, and we are on match point. Right here, James, for Bohunt. Yes, it'll be interesting to see how Unconfirmed deal with this sort of dire situation they've found themselves in. So, let's see what they do. Here we go, let's see our compositions right now. We've got Mercy, Winston, and a Reaper for Bohunt. So it's going to be an up close and personal one against a, well, a, it's going to be a uh, Bastion coming in here for Unconfirmed, along with Mercy and Reinhardt. So shields protect the Bastion composition here, Heather. It's interesting to see a Bastion being used in this sort of map because often a Bastion just kind of sits down and picks off different players like he, like he is now. Um, but it's certainly difficult to do that inside the temples. Yeah, there's not so much room for them to work, but it looks like the Reaper's heading out for a flank on that. Yeah, well, he's doing Reaper, his best to... Reaper trying to get around and trying to 
you know, make some noise, find that Reaper. The re you know, as Reaper as a character, you always want to try and sneak up, mm -hmm. be up close and personal, try and take out, because that those shotguns of Reaper does a heck of a damage when you're, when you're very close. Uh, but yeah, it's being spotted right now, as you can see. Winston and Mercy, I think, might be preparing yeah. to attack right now. So, here we go, James. We've got the next few seconds coming up. It'll be interesting to see what happens when those two dive in. They're probably waiting for the Reaper to get up behind to confuse them. So there's some movement coming in. Yeah. Bit of poke right now, Heather, coming in. We've got 30 seconds right now, so who, who's this going to be favouring? Um, the both... I'm thinking unconfirmed has the Bastion, which once you're in Ooh. once you're in the area, and obviously Bohunt just lost the Mercy, so they're down with the Hela, which is going to be an issue. Plus with the Bastion, he's going to be able to pick out characters here as well in the area. Yeah, so Reinhardt's just on the point right now to contend in with the Winston and the Reaper. Reaper goes down at Winston as well. So, so yeah, unconfirmed take that using that Bastion. They played a tactical game there, you know, with Bastion on top and, you know, with the control point just being just about to open up, there was no choice there for Bohuns but to try and get in and get the kill as best they can. If they got the kill in, kill in on there on Reinhardt and Mercy, then, yeah. you know, it would have been easier because the Bastion would have had to drop down out of form. So, 2-1 right now, still match points here for Bohuns right now. And we've got our compositions. And what do you make of these compositions, James? Straight in with the Bastion, Lisa Mercy, to basically maximum pocket for the Bastion. He's, he isn't dying unless someone gets in behind there, which will counter the ph oh. pharmacy. We had the pharmacy roadhog combination again, and yeah, the fire just died, but Mercy was Mercy is crucial, but no, again, it's going to be the Orisa's that's gone the, down. And the Mercy's out. Wow. Just, just, um, just the roadhog left. Wow, and that's unfortunate. Easy pickings there for Bohan today. Are your winners of this third quarter final? They will head into the semi final. Your winners 2 1 in a map score. So, congratulations to them as they will, you know, they look a bit relieved right now. Confirm their place in the semi finals. And, uh, Mark, we've got ourselves uh, another semi finalist. Uh, we certainly do. Uh, what a game that was. Went all the way down to the wire there, but Bohan. Uh, closing it out with two back-to-back -back games. Uh, a very exciting one. We went. That was kind of the closest score final I think we've had so far, as far as competition was concerned. What, what impressed you in that particular game? Interesting to see lots of variety in the team comes with the Zarya coming in and that sort of thing which we just haven't seen yet. And lots of Bastion news, which is interesting. And uh, what did you make of that? Teams obviously switching up what they're doing in-game. Do you think that's something we'll see more as we go through the, the tournament a little bit? I think, actually, as we go through the tournament, they'll start off not changing so much then change but I think they're going to settle more into their comps by the end of it and uh, what was the what was the thing for for unconfirmed maybe to go away and work on because that first game they looked really dominant we were, I thought I was watching it backstage I was like these guys look for real here this is a quick game and we're done and dusted but then obviously mm. things just kind of slipped away from them is it maybe a confidence yeah. thing mentality thing or maybe. just outplayed a little I bit think those last the two? little Lucio Zaria Brigitte comp they need to work on that because they they can be really effective with that but they're so the Zami being caught out of position quite a lot. And uh, what was impressive for you? You've obviously seen three quarterfinals now. You've had the opportunity to sit there and uh, enjoy the action that's been going on. Uh, what stood out for you so far in that particular series and then overall? How do you think that uh, Bow Hunt are going to fit in as we get towards those semi-finals? Again, just it's the, it's the first game on stage as well. Just trying to fit in, you know, just trying to get relaxed into, you know, playing on the stage and you know against with, with the audience here and on you know, on the streams as well, just getting used to it. But I think they, you know, once they got that first map, uh, once they came back from the first map and got into the second map and the third map as well, it just started to be more relaxing and they sell a bit more confidence. And hopefully, you know, they'll be watched, they've watched the other matches and they'll be ready for the next semi-final. Okay. Or the, 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 the semi-final that they're in. OK, well, finally, did you both enjoy your, your time on the desk yeah. here? Can we please give it up once more for what has been another fantastic little duo, James and Heather, uh, doing an absolutely fantastic job once again. I'm going to carry my applause on over here because we've got another special guest. We've got Gio joining us here, a fellow esports host and commentator, so you can feel my pain when I'm struggling announcing the same team twice when they come out. Uh, how are things for you? How are you enjoying your day? Oh, 
it's really great. I actually just got here. I've been here, been here for very long, but I was watching up on there, and I'm I'm so impressed. I love it, and I love the venue. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty, isn't it? <laughs> um, now, uh, <laughs> pretty pretty. Um, let's talk about what you've been doing uh, as far as Digital Schoolhouse is concerned, because you casted some of the regionals, so uh, you've had the opportunity yeah. to sort of see a few of these teams. Uh, what was that like? What was the sort of the level of competition like? So I went to Bristol and helped out with the original qualifier that they were doing there, and I actually had a lot of fun because I'm obviously used to casting the big kind of six versus six full series and obviously these three versus three sort of competitions is a little bit different to what I was used to so it was also a challenge for me as a caster because it was something new but uh, not only was it really exciting because you could hear all, all the students kind of like get into it and that's the great thing about having lands is that you can actually feel that energy but also the uh, the broadcast talent that I was working with the, the casters were so good how good are and they? they like, seriously really everyone we've had good. so like, far people has been amazing really natural on camera abilities and I was really impressed and I, I was I was really glad that I got the opportunity to actually work with these people. And what's the, uh, sort of from your experience, what's it like for these players coming up here and playing on a stage like this? Because it's very different to when you sat at home or if you sat at school or wherever yeah. you might play in a more relaxed, comfortable environment. It's a totally different game. Yeah, I mean, even in professional broadcasts, one thing that we do often mention is playing in that LAN environment with an audience on a stage is very different. And mentality in competitive games is such a massive thing that you have to take into account, both when you're commentating the game, but also if you're playing in it, if you're a coach who's got to take those things into account when actually training the team. People don't realize how much different it is. You have that pressure, you have an expectation, and you're suddenly aware there's all these eyes on you. It does make a big difference. OK, and where can we see you in action next? Where are you going to be? where you're going to be working. Good question. So the next thing that I'll be at is I'm going to be casting two of the Overwatch tournaments at Insomnia. So if anyone's going there, it's the big LAN that happens in Birmingham multiple times a year. So I'm going to be doing a couple of tournaments there. So I'll be exhausted, but if you can catch me, come say hi. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, Gio, thank you very much. Um, beautiful to have you here. And uh, you ladies and gentlemen, much. give it up for Gio. Great to have you. And now we're wandering back over this way once more. We've got to change up in the desk once more. Welcome back. Welcome back, gentlemen. Uh, we've right. had some fantastic action so far. What did you make of that third quarter final? Brilliant stuff, yeah. yeah. Lots yeah, of fun. Talented game. players. Mm. Great shout casters. Uh, cast a long shadow. Cast a long shadow. <laughs> is, that, is that how you feel at the moment, Adam? Oh, I'm feeling a little, so. bit, a little bit vulnerable. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if it was the vegan food I ate last night or if I'm just excited, but I, my stomach's a little bit... Woo. Yeah, I'm feeling quite the same at the moment. But, uh, gentlemen, what did you think of that third quarterfinal? Uh, for two, probably one of the tightest contested matches we've yeah, seen so far. Yeah, it was far. very close. Like, seeing how they played in the first match and then how it, like, progressed and how someone... how the teams, like, switched between who was getting wins, it got close near the end. What do you think made it so close? I think actually it was really interesting to see uh, the different comps people were experimenting with. We had a big variety of characters, and I think sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, and that was partly what made it so exciting to watch and helped make it so close. Mm. Adam, what do you think the pressure's going to be like for this final quarterfinal now? Because they've watched everyone else play, they've kind of got an idea of how everyone's playing, how they're going about their business. More pressure here, or is it just a case of, you know, we've seen what others can do, we back ourselves, we're going through um, I think it's, uh, you know, they've definitely seen that the three semi-finalists are competing at a very high level, but they got here today, so I'm sure that they're more than capable young individuals, and uh, my advice is just to have fun, you know, enjoy it. This is a very unique experience. Okay, well, it's time to get into our final quarterfinal of the day. It's obviously going to be a very exciting one. Uh, the first team that's going to be coming out right now, welcome out, please, it's Matador. Opponents today in our final quarter final will be Scorpions. All right, all right, all right, gentlemen. The final quarter final of the day. Are we feeling excited? Are we nervous? How are we feeling? Oh man, I'm getting nervous, yeah. But the whole thing is so exciting. It's amazing to be here. That energy's infectious. I'm liking the smiles yeah. at the moment. How are you feeling about this quarterfinal? I mean, yeah, it's competitive, but it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. And, you know, <laughs> just here, have a bit of fun. It'll be fine. But you're going to win, right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we're going to win. And how are you feeling about things? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to work out pretty well, hopefully. Maybe. Okay. Well, I've got to say, the jerseys are looking absolutely superb. I need to, need to point that out. Also, looking fantastic, gentlemen. Uh, how are things feeling on your side? Uh, we're feeling pretty confident, you know, we put in the practice, we put in the hours. Um, you know, we hope we can go better than getting knocked out in the quarterfinals, but we're just going to give it our all. Obviously, it's been a long road here to get to the, uh, to the finals here. How does it feel sitting on that stage at the moment? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's exactly what I said, to be honest. Um, how are you feeling? Is this, is this yours to take today? Yeah, I think we're really excited and we're going to bring it home. 
Okay, I like the confidence. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take the uh, main stage back to your stations as we prepare for our, our final quarter final here. Strong words, strong words there. On one side, we're thinking, you know, we're here for a little bit of fun, but again, it's one of those, we're here for fun, but, you know, we're here to, fun for me is winning, is usually what I think. Strong words and, and swish threads as well. Those oh, guys look nice great. Yeah. yeah. They're looking pretty fly. Yeah. Uh, how, are we feeling, how are we feeling about this, uh, gentlemen? Um, as we look at our map on and now, we'll bring that up so we can talk about uh, the maps that we're going to be uh, playing today. Uh, obviously, it's our final quarter final. A little bit more pressure on these guys to make it through now. Black Forest, Castillo, and, and Echo Point, Antarctica there at the end. What are we feeling about this series layout? I mean, these are the, these are the same maps that were played in the first map, in the first game. But they've, they've switched it around, starting off with the one that I, like I said, was really close range, as we had seen the way people were playing. Long range wasn't really the best. But I think it's going to be very mixed. I think the first map isn't really going to be the best indicator, especially if it's close, because we've seen teams that can excel in Black Forest struggle on those more open maps. So it's going to be a pretty close one. Okay, and Adam, do you want to see some more Bastion play? I want to see Sebastian, but some <laughs> Symmetra, please. I was just, I'm so glad I, it, yeah. I'm please! So Who's, who <laughs> likes that there's one person out there cheering? Come on. Oh, yes, I like that. I don't know if you're making friends yeah. or enemies here. <laughs> uh, I kind of a little bit of both, a little column A, column B. More it's of the enemies. Be interesting. I think Matadors have a distinct advantage on Castillo. Okay. They're playing at home. Okay, the, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on this. I get this. Cool. The Spain. Like that, yeah. Mexico. I would fall like the office there, David Brent style. But uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about this, gentlemen, just a few <laughs> more moments. Obviously, you've had one opportunity to, uh, to commentate so far today. Uh, what are you feeling ahead of this second match? Are you excited for this one? Is this another? Do you just want to get yeah, into the action? I'm very excited. I'm a, I'm a lot less nervous than I was now, so yeah, that should be good. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I've been watching all these fantastic games. It was great yeah. to do some commentating earlier, but I'm really excited to be back and uh, mm. commentating some more. And having, having watched the games today, who do you think has been the most impressive team that you've been, seen so far? Who's been kind of the standout for you? I mean, Is there anyone that's kind of stood out? Or do you think the field's kind of like quite even? I don't want to be biased, but Coventry did smash no, You did, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you did, nil, say, so you did say. Yeah. You're sticking with your boys. Okay, yeah, fair obviously. enough. I think, um, for me, actually, I've just noticed how close the games have been mm. compared to yeah, the regionals. Definitely. The regionals, you know, Teams would generally, one team would win all the matches, and here they've been so close, so many of the games, which I think has made it far more exciting to watch. And of course, yeah. that's a, you know that's massive, um, you know, props to all of the teams that are here. They've had to fight such a such a long way. Obviously, you're involved in some of the regional tournaments to get here. It's no surprise that we're seeing uh, such tight matchups in some circumstances. Absolutely, I think I've heard that there are some multiple top 500 players here. A couple of Genjis that are very good. I know that the Crosshairs DPS we were. You know, fawn, <laughs> fawning over him uh, with the Widowmaker play. It's so, you know, just great skills. And obviously, we can't hear the IGLs, the in-game leaders, but I, I can sometimes off stage. And the communications, they're just constantly talking. So, you know, in esports, it's essential to be a good communicator, like in life. Very, very true. Well, uh, obviously, talking about communication, uh, we have a fantastic panel of guests uh, who are going to be available very soon for you guys at home to send your questions into. You can see all the information down below. It's just about here. I managed to get it right. There it is. There it is. I managed to get it right. And uh, obviously, you can join the conversation. Send in your questions, not only for the panel, but also for the guys on the desk. Send your support uh, to the teams that you might be following as well. Much like my man in the middle is sending his love towards Coventry all the time. <laughs> but uh, for now, gentlemen, that's enough of that. Let's get into our final quarterfinal. It's over to you. Woo! Yeah. So I, I think just to, you know, uh, to, 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 before we get into the analysis of what these teams are going to be picking, you might have some insight into who's going to be playing for Crosshairs. Um, uh, excuse me, not Crosshairs. Uh, Scorpions. Your, your team is Scorpions, yes. isn't that correct? Um, who, who's here for Scorpions today? Okay, not so <laughs> very popular. We can do yeah, better. Babe. Can we support Scorpions at least? Woo! Come on, let's go. Oh! All right, and for the Matadors, please. Yeah! Oh, that's a big difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Both teams picking a Pharmacy Roadhog comp, which we've seen a mm. lot of uh, in the previous games. It's a nice mirror, it can work. Yeah. The problem is, it's got, you've got to be accurate with those hooks to get so, that Pharmacy out. Yeah. And also, it requires so much sk more skill and yeah. power when uh, I think obviously you're of opposition of flying. 100%. So with this mirror match here, guys, is it definitely going to be Ooh, a case of, look at this pharmacy, just one more yeah. shot on that Mercy to take him down. But obviously, Not those right. rockets in the air, it's difficult to connect to those shots. Um, I wonder what the Roadhog is doing. He looks like he's just trying to been The Scorpion's Fire is getting a lot of tracking on the characters. As I've noticed, like, the accuracy is really good, like, really high. This is the Scorpion's Fire. Yeah. yeah, the Scorpion's Fire, yeah. And they managed to take out Matador's Roadhog. 
massive. Oh, that was a good pick. Now it's just a pharmacy versus a roadhog and another pharmacy. Yeah. Farrah's looking low and is out. Oh, Farrah's dead. It's all down to it. Hopefully this Mercy, mercy can, can get, get a res possible res. I don't know if they'll risk it. Oh, that Mercy tried a res and got it on the roadhog. Mercy gets the res. Roadhog back That was here. surprising. Two against three. Roadhog yeah. from Scorpions. He's got his ult. Are we going to see him hog? It, perhaps. Full hog. Oh. Oh. Well done to Scorpions on that round. They played well. Good resurrect, though, from Matador's Mercy. Yeah, yeah did, 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 did his best to bring the Matadors mm. back into the matches, but the sting of the Scorpions yeah. was too piercing. I was kind of a bit worried about it. As soon as that Mercy got pushed away due to that fire was throwing dead. her, I thought they had missed that res, but as soon as it got through, I was like, OK, this, is a good, this could be a game changer. Do you think we'll see some more Pharmacy? Possibly. Oh. Very, very likely. And uh, yes, a Pharmacy. Oh, it looks like Matador changed up with trying to. a long-ranged hit scan. Trying yeah. to take Possibly out able to Pharmacy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ash, obviously, if you're accurate with Ash, they're a really good counter to Farah if mm. you can pull it off. And Arisa's shield doesn't hurt. 100%. Absolutely. Scorpion's here going with the, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> and the same squad as the last time. Um, Matador. Scorp um, Scorpion Farah did just take a lot of damage from that Ash. I think that's who that Ash is focusing right now, just trying to take out that Farah. James, what do you think of the uh, Moira pick here? That's I think an it's, it's an interesting one, so they're very dominant a while back. Uh, we've not seen them as much now. Um, clearly here doing a really good job keeping her team healed up close, uh, while Matador are playing more defensively for point, although she doesn't have the most healing per second, which I think is perhaps hurting them here. Oh, we've got a hook on the Arisa, though. Um, plus, Moira's healing can run out very fast, yeah. unlike, them, unlike the Mercy, who has unlimited healing but she has to focus on one person at a time. Yeah, and it's much less offensive. But the Matador's yeah. Ash gets picked off by uh, Farah. And I think Scorpions are trying to They're all pushing it. Trying to do a pincer maneuver, going from bottom and top. I think, oh, having God. watched the other games, they don't necessarily want to risk it going for the point, because we've seen how that can end. Uh, mm. Where a, a dominant sign loses on that. Oh, the Farah's trying to go above them, see if she can take them out. Accuracy. Trying to take out the Moira, the support. Yeah. Priority target. Chasing them. Not quite managing to land any hits, though. Scorpion's Farah almost has her ult as well. Moira's but Moira ult. does have... Moira is using Coalescence right now. This could help them a lot. Doesn't manage to get anything from it, though. Very Risa short. deploying her turbo charge. Is that going to give her the damage she needs to kill Hog? Supercharge can boost your damage a lot. Ah, but there it goes. It's going to take her a lot of damage yeah. and it's over. Scorpion seems to there a lot of in yeah. the point. So I think... I think Scorpions may try running Pharmacy again. They've clearly shown they can, on this map, uh, beat Matadors with it. I'm curious what Matador are going to try uh, to counter it, though. Nathaniel, what would you do um, if you were a Matador? I mean, I feel like possibly maybe have a healer that can heal more at a time, but also not have a run out of heal. Like with Moira, she ran out of heals very fast. Sure. So and maybe a soldier and a nano. We're seeing it possibly. now with uh, them yeah, they switched, to Mercy. Yeah, they switched to a Mercy. No DPS, though, which is interesting. Mm. I don't think we've seen people run two tanks uh, and one healer before. Mm. Well, it's going to be difficult to deal with the verticality of the Scorpions. They just fly up in the sky. A mm. um, nicely defendable position, though, where they're reasonably high up. Perhaps trying to go for the point on the ground in terms of actually contesting it. Uh, yeah. They've got a lot more presence. Arissa can do a lot of that damage towards that, that, that pharmacy as well, taking them down fast if she's accurate enough. Especially once they get the turbocharger up, Arissa, with her shield, becomes a massive threat. But it is clear to see that this, this round seems to be more favoured than the Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Seeing as they have won two matches in a row now. Absolutely. Matador can get a comeback. Mm. They just have to try. They're currently pinned down in the building and, you know... Oh, yeah. oh Matador getting a hook in? No, not quite. And when we've seen team, teams pinned down in the past, generally speaking, the way they manage to win is to be clever and go for the point. So I'm curious at all if they're going to get a pick. Matador's Pharmacy, that Farah, I mean, Mercy, <laughs> is getting a lot of Ultra. She now has her Valkyrie. Yeah. That can heal everyone at a time, especially if you're pushing the point. Farah also pretty much has ult, which is going to really hurt uh, Matador when they push out, especially if they push out through that doorway. It's perhaps a little predictable. We've, in previous games, seen team Team teams use the lower doorway uh, to surprise people. Sure, and I think, James, you, you called it right here. It looks like Matador Gaming are just trying to slow this down, wait for that capture area to unlock, and perhaps counter it down. Oh, oh, far. oh my gosh, Matador just got a mini They've that. got a double one. Oh, we're going to wow. see three. Oh, oh to get the res. Mercy tried to get the res in. She didn't manage well to get the Well played by Matador. Ma there. Matador came in with the comeback. Very tactical play, they're biding their time and then going in when they have the best odds. Uno dos tres, it's as simple as that from <laughs> yeah. Um 
Guys, what do you think is gonna is gonna change this game now? We're gonna see Matador now stick to the stick to their. It's a very cagey affair, you yeah, know. With I'm curious selection. whether Scorpions they might run uh, Pharmacy again. I'm not sure. No, oh, they're switching wrong. up. They went with a Reaper. <laughs> oh, that's great. So obviously Scorpions <laughs> predicted Matadors were going to go yeah. with the double tank again. And they've picked and they've, a yeah, brilliant and counter. A tank counter. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. And of course, Moira uh, is a very good uh, healer in close range for like, all of this court. Oh, they're already doing a lot of damage. Mad Matador's yeah. pressing a lot of damage. The Reaper's trying to push forward, though, thinking he can get some damage, and he's staying he's behind. Be he's staying in front. Oh. Brilliant hook oh, there from the Moira. Moira. Well, brilliant hook by Matador's oh. road hog. Now they're running out, now they've got yeah. their heals. Well, it's down a little to... bit of self-healing, but they're... Yeah. Well, it's down to if this Reaper can push them without dying. Oh, the Reaper is gone. Oh, yeah. It's down to the Roadhog. Take home. this round. Yeah, I... <laughs> this is really getting, like, really clutch. Yeah. Mat Matador seems to be trying to make a comeback. Yeah. But it's showing, that it's showing how even the teams oh. are. Yeah. Full house and Matador is And Matador coming. came in, yeah. Down. We're now on the match point with, with both teams equal. I'm yeah. curious. Whether Matador are going to try running that again, whether Scorpions just feel they misplayed or they're going to change the comp. Honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, and this is the beautiful thing about this mm. three on three style combat where it's the, the match has come thick and fast. It's team yeah. deathmatch focus as opposed to traditional yeah. six on six overwatch. Lots of composition change as well. It's, it's not they're going with the same strat again. Matador Ooh. and Scorpion are going with their pharmacy strat. Okay. They're going back to something that worked earlier on in the game. Now we've seen how this has gone in the past, so yeah. uh, we'll have to see if Matador can uh, change it up. We do know that it did change once they had their two yeah. tanks in the board, but. Can they pull off the same trick with going for the point or with Scorpions wise up? Again, they get picked on the Mercy, not quite. Lovely hook from Matador's Roadhog, though. Yeah. He seems to be very accurate getting his hooks in, trying to pick off one character at a time. Ooh, brilliant use of Arisa's orb there He'll to move. group people up. Yeah. Pull them out of cover. That Roadhog is staying very aggressive, trying to get the hooks as he can, pushing it out for a second, grabbing them and then coming back in. Matador can, you know, pick anyone off, even at perhaps Mercy can resurrect them. That'll give them huge advantage when they probably they went, go for the point. Yeah, they went underneath now. They're trying to play from the ground. Curious how this will work, because without the cover of the building, I worry they might be a bit vulnerable. Exactly, yeah. Yes, it's definitely an inside-outside fight here, guys. Uh, really seeing quite a, a, an echoing and Ooh. mirroring of map number three Ooh. here, and we're seeing yeah, a lot yeah. of damage being done here. Far results. Yeah, Arisa was taking a lot of damage there from, Matt, from, from Matador. And it seems like that the Farah does have a role. She's Beautiful using it. Farrah. She got a kill on the Arisa. Arisa. Can they close this out? Great yeah, stuff. The the oh, and the, and the Mercy got the resin. All the, the Mercy goal now. Surprised they're fighting over the point so early, actually, given it's not up. This is yeah, the fight it's usually see with the point up. But, oh, uh, Scorpions have their whole hog and they're using it. Get them off the oh, yeah. no. So they're getting the resin. This is and back really to a 3v3. <laughs> this is, this is really low. Nice. Nice. <laughs> the damage booster yeah. right now. Are they going to find anything? Matador, I feel, like better uh, position on the point from what we've seen so far. Mm. It's safe to say this is probably one of the closest matches Ooh, we've, ever Mercy we've had to this Mercy. gate today. Mercy picks off things a little bit. Oh, Matador's Mercy. Matador's are far ahead. Oh, oh, it's done. That's it. Scorpions coming in with the clutch there. Very, very close very game, game, though. Yeah. That's that was close. an unbelievable first map there, guys. We mm. saw the Scorpions take a 2-0 advantage. Matador's clawed it back with some clever team comps, and then we saw a mirroring of the round number three. What do you think? It's impossible to predict who's going to win. I think this, it's yeah, it? really interesting how early they fought. You know, that kind of fight we saw would usually only happen once the point was up. And it's interesting. I think Matador's perhaps had a bit more confidence, and that's why they went uh, towards the point early. And that may have cost them. So I got in trouble earlier from asking if uh, if the my co-casters were also gamers. All right, do you guys Overwatch? Yeah, I play it all you, the time. Who do you main? Reaper. Reaper. Oh, excellent. yeah, I'm a Reaper main. That's why when I saw that Reaper, I was very like thinking about it, seeing how the way he was playing. Sure, absolutely. And how about you, James? Junkrat for the personality. Junkrat for the personality. <laughs> and the golden gun I have for him. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Bit of a quirky character, are we? Oh, yeah, that's me. Quirky nice. heart. Okay. <laughs> and a peg leg, I see, to boot. Oh, yeah, I've got a peg leg, obviously. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Okay, well, we're on to round number two here. Uh, I think we're going to start in the next... I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> waves hi to Mom there. Mom, remember, you can tweet to us and ask some questions of these uh, to, be, to be pro gamers one day, hopefully. I think it'll be interesting to see as we move on to we've got Castillo and Eco Point. Oh, I can't remember the order coming up. 
and those are much more open maps. We've seen Black Forest is the outlier in play style. So will we see significant changes or will both teams run pharmacy some more? Well, I can say that we're most likely, from what we've seen, a pharmacy. Scorpion are probably going to go with their pharmacy, seeing as it worked so well that match. The town of Castilla has so many pharmacies, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> it, yes. can, it can open up. It's really open map and then... The pharmacy will be able to do long-range damage, fire at them, track them, and we're done. And look, look at what this. we see. Pharmacy, and pharmacy versus and pharmacy. They're doing a mirror strat. This is such a strong comp, though, because Hawk's mm. got the objective control, that yeah. self-healing and the hook, but... Oh, oh my god! Oh, Matador's pharmacy is already dead. Wow. Are they going to try and go for the reds? Yes. Yeah. Risky move, but if they can pull it off, it'll bring them back yeah. into the, uh, the round. She has all the time to get that oh. res in, and it's gone. Just Hawk. This round... It clearly is going towards Scorpion. Yeah, yeah, this round ended very quickly. Scorpion's already one map up, and now they're one round up against Matador Gaming. That was a really quick we, one. One we, happened. Yeah. We've seen Scorpions uh, in the previous map were more dominant with Pharmacy, were mm. better with the comp, and perhaps because the map leans towards it more, I don't think Matador are going to try and uh, out-Pharmacy the Scorpions again. Yeah. Yeah, I think we might need to see some Soldier 76, some maybe some Widow. It's a yeah. very open map, so it, 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 you can avail to those characters that have good Ooh, hit scan. We've seen a Bastion. Ooh. Beautiful. Give it up for Bastion, crowd. And last time we saw a Baptiste earlier, it didn't really work so well, but maybe it could be different this time. You need good coordination to pull Baptiste off. Yeah. I think Matt Storm might have that. I think it will be good, especially with his immortality field, keeping that Bastion alive inside it. Yeah. He won't be able to physically die doing all the damage he can towards the fire. Arrow, particularly, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Teresa, keeping him safe with the shield. Seems like the entire comp's, uh, you know, aiming to protect the Bastion, which is, of course, a very viable strat, given how powerful Definitely, he is in the yeah. mode. But uh, I think Matt Adora probably... Uh, that Bastion is trying to set up. Boyd. Bastion set up there behind He's the Abyssal Shield. Point. Very difficult yeah. for the Scorpions to get in behind that, and you're seeing... Perhaps this was the perfect counter to that pharmacy combination because mm. they cannot get into the air because that Bastion will just melt them. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, they can peek out of cover, fire rocket, peek back in. At long range, that can break down the shield quite effectively. Tattoo placed on the wall there brilliantly by the Scorpions. <laughs> Beautiful Overwatch logo there. <laughs> Yeah. I think Arisa's almost fishing for, uh, for something for her uh, Bastion to shoot, but uh, both teams having a little break, you know, it's, it's been a busy day. Uh, Nathaniel, <laughs> some people have not had the opportunity to play with, um, uh, um, I've, I've got the character's Baptiste. name, Baptiste, excuse me, yes. Um, so can you talk us through some of the abilities here? I'm seeing him spring up in the air. Yeah, that's his exo boost. He's able to jump into the air really high, like higher than most characters, so he can do a lot of damage like over walls, if you can see them. He also has his healing ability that can not only just... He has his healing grenades, but he also has the healing that can heal himself and the people around him. Okay. So um, kind of a more mobile Anna, yeah. potentially. And also, with his ultimate, if he can get that with that Bastion combo, the place. amount of damage being done will be super high. Okay. It doesn't power. seem like he's going to get it. Immortality Field going in, keeping his team alive there. That was very good. Cool. Far is gone. Roadhog's fallen. Yeah. Bastion Master. clearly was a good pick here. Bastion yeah. was very oh, good. I think we saw uh, the other ability you didn't mention, his immortality field. Yeah. yeah. Stops people dropping below 20% of their health. Uh, used mm. really effectively there to mitigate a lot of Farah's damage. I, I dare I say it, I think that was some excellent in game leadership from Matador Gamings. Mm. They obviously saw that the Scorpions have got that brilliant DPS supported with that mercy. They decided to hold an area, wait until the point was ready to be capped, put themselves on it. Put down the shield and invulnerable time. Sounds very simple, but uh, it's not, is it? It's Scorpion's no. going for a kind of a, a more divey comp on Matador, switching yeah. out the Bastion, perhaps thinking it might not work again for the slightly more versatile. So in comes Wrecking Ball, though. And uh, back he comes. That okay. Tracer is trying to push forward against their, against their team, trying to see if they can do some early damage, get some ult charge up, and possibly even Pulse Bomb them. Yeah, Pulse Bomb is so powerful because obviously, once one teammate's down, you've got a big problem. Mm. Great stuff. Oh, first time we've Chase seen is you. already Chase gone. Down. <laughs> wrecking Ball hiding around the Lucio's corner. Lucio's taking a lot of damage. He's down to the Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball has got hardly any health. I doubt it. He's just going <laughs> to kill himself. <laughs> Off he goes. <laughs> that hamster knew when he was beaten. Yeah, he didn't want to just let them kill him. Didn't, didn't want to lose. No. Went out like a Wrecking Ball. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. If either of you want to sing, go for it. I don't mind. <laughs> I can't sing, you so can't I'm sing. good. I, I, I won't uh, make you all suffer that. Maybe <laughs> next map. I'd be interested to see whether uh, Scorpions decide to change up the comp. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Or perhaps they were just too aggressive. They tried changing up their comp before and it didn't work. They're going back to their pharmacy. 
feel like we've seen this one before. We should Oh, right. and Matador going with their two tanks and a healer and their Mercy again. Now, we've seen that both Mercies are very good at getting their revives in, as we saw in that final match on Black Forest, when they both got one revive in, saving their team, but it came down to whoever got the ult first. I'm curious if Matador's comp, which was so good on Black Forest, we have all those buildings, is going to be slightly less effective, because there is a lot less cover on this map. Uh, you know, yeah. It's much easier for Farah to get you with a rocket, because there's much less space in the buildings. So we'll have to see. We can see that Farah is taking a lot of distance away from that road hold, so she doesn't get hooked in. I think she's a bit afraid. <laughs> she doesn't want to get hooked in and killed off. Well, yeah. she's going she knows it's the, last, it's the last round for Matador if they win. Yeah. Great play there from the Farah, hiding behind the mm. trees again, keeping that distance from oh, the Orisa. Oh, There's a little Arisa bit of an engagement right? here. The Roadhog goes oh, down for the Scorpions. Oh, and that Mercy got the resin. Oh, as we had said, they are both very good at getting revives in to help their team out. We do have a far one available. Is that going to fall? Oh, Benny! Pharmacy went in and got the Mercy and the Orisa. I it's think. now down to a Roadhog who just kills himself. Off he, goes. he just ends himself, just like the Wrecking Ball. This is becoming a tradition, honestly. Yeah, you just... If you know you're out, you just got to take it out. we have come to match like a again. lemming and just... You know, <laughs> jump out. Just jump off. Yeah. That's cool. So what are we going to see here, guys? So surely Scorpions pharmacy. are going to go with the Pharmacy they're, again. Yeah. Matador, are they going to go with that Baptiste uh, they, sort of hard counter again? It's definitely possible they will go with their Baptiste and Bastion because that clearly worked against the... Oh, they went with the soldiers. You were right yeah. on that. Matador did go in with their soldiers. I'm um, right occasionally. <laughs> and obviously, we've got Scorpions running their pharmacy with a, with a Roadhog. I think if Matador um, stay a bit safer in terms of not pushing down to the low ground, they will probably yeah. do much better. I'm surprised, actually, they would go for the smaller building uh, as mm. the side of the map. Scorpions are on, offers far more cover from those fire rockets. But both teams playing it. Pretty safe. Scorpions, if they take this well, round, they take the match. So. The Scorpion's Mercy was taking a lot of damage to Seth. She only just got out there and managed to kill us off. Oh, 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 that Roadhog road just hooked in the Arisa. Back immortality field. Oh, back piece of immortality is keeping his team alive right now. Oh, the immortality field is dead. I'm not sure they're going to make it. Farah is looking pretty aggressive. That's the main disadvantage with the immortality field. It can be easily destroyed. If you just focus it, it'll be down in seconds. Yeah. Ooh. Scorpions here like. look like they're going to take this series. Mm. They've. Uh, Three on one just against that soldier. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh that soldier. Oh, oh, Scorpions coming in with the clutch, winning that match. Well played for Scorpions there. They played really well. It was close. They're so happy. You can tell they are ecstatic about that one. Really fun of faces, the big one. <laughs> yeah. Favourites then, Scorpions turning up here and uh, getting the win and a pretty dominating way in that first map, but they're made to work pretty hard in that second one. Yeah, yeah. And what was your takeaways from that one, Adam? Uh, who impressed you? Uh, you got your Bastion. I know you were pretty happy about that. That kind of stuck <laughs> into the party. I was delighted with the Bastion. I was actually quite surprised in the third map that uh, the Matadors went for something slightly more mobile with that Soldier 76. I think the only thing that swung that map, however, was that Roadhog hook on the Orisa. Looked like the Orisa just peeked past the shield, Definitely. got hooked, and, 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 and from there on in, it was over. And obviously, uh, the guys on Matador there, they gave it their all. They didn't quite come up good there. But again, a fantastic experience for these guys. A little bit of advice for you guys, maybe moving away from today. What could they work on? What could they uh, look to improve on? I mean, like, Next Matador time. clearly need to work on, like, countering a pharmacy. Because as we saw, that was their main issue. They worked with a Bastion. But in the final round, they decided to go with a soldier, and that didn't really work for them. Is the best way to counter a pharmacy with a well-balanced diet and a lot of sleep? <laughs> Who knows? Mm. I mean, yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> no, I don't know nothing now. That. Well, that's, 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 that's the, the, worst the biggest joke piece in the of truth. Of the digital that's, that was <laughs> truth. That wasn't that was, a joke. That yeah. was straight up truth. That's right. Um, what about Scorpions then? Let's talk about these guys because that was impressive from them. Yeah. We know they've got a lot of support uh, here in the arena as well. Uh, some probably some of the loudest people I've heard in quite some time. What, how impressive were they in contrast to some of the other teams we've seen so far today? I mean, it did take them a struggle on some of those rounds, but they did pull through and managed to get a two-nil win on that. So I feel like they've definitely proven themselves and they. they they definitely have a place in the finals. They could definitely be there. Not, not that I'm biased or anything. I do think they're kind of <laughs> massive. We're hearing that this, a lot today. <laughs> of, this, of, this, of this pharmacy and Roadhog, which has probably been the most dominant composition we've mm. seen. Their ability to just play it well, uh, especially yeah. with the Farrah aim and the hooks have been really on point, has been really good. But I would like to say the Matadors, I, I think they're the only team we've seen who have really used Baptiste well. It's quite a new character, yeah. and they've shown how quickly they can learn. Because this immortality field was really impressive from them. Not and quite enough, though. Can yeah. I just say, like, Props to those mercies for the way they were reviving people. In that, in that last round on Black Forest, they both got a revive in, which could have saved their team. 
And it ended off with Scorpion getting the win on it, though. So, well so, done, uh, Scorpion. So much love for, for those guys. Much love, <laughs> yeah. of course. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket now, though. Let's see uh, how that affects everything moving forward. Obviously, we know who our winners were from that last game. Scorpions picking up the 2-0 victory over Matador Gaming. But now we have our semi-finals set up. Only W will be taking on Crosshairs, and Bohunt School will be taking on Scorpions. What are your thoughts on that, gentlemen? Because we're kind of getting down to it now. Just a few more games to go. Well, I'm not just going to say this because of who my co-casters are, but I think we might see a Crosshair Scorpions final. Uh, they've been the teams that I, I... I have seen Woking play, actually, in Stratford, and, and they beat our team, Ladywell Prendergast. So, look, anyone could win it today, uh, which is a, a huge platitude, but I am going to say that these guys, their teams, might get to the final. I'm going to agree. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, we'll leave it there for just a moment. Yeah. We're going to go for a break now. When we get back, get back though, we've got an awesome uh, careers panel from some of the, uh, the people that are involved in the industry that you guys, of course, have been sending your questions in. We'll have questions from the floor uh, as well as some from myself. So we'll go for a quick break now. When we get back, we'll be back with all the action.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the grand finals of the Digital Schoolhouse Tournament. Now, obviously, we've had some fantastic Overwatch action already today. We've had four quarterfinals, and we're waiting to get into our semifinals. But now we have a very special occasion for everyone. We have some of the pros from the gaming industry sat here, uh, ready to answer some some questions from everyone at the moment and uh, obviously tell us a little bit about the games industry and uh, how everyone can get involved. We're going to start with yourself. We're going to start with uh, Charlotte Rouget Murphy, uh, junior digital account manager from Sega Europe. Um, wanted to start off by asking you uh, quite simply, uh, what was your first job in the gaming industry? So my first job in the games industry was a production intern at Splash Damage. I just kind of moved country and I was like, oh, I want to really get into the games industry. And I was like, oh, I'll just go for it and managed to get that. So I really wanted to be a producer on like the development side. So yeah, that was my first job. And what do you do now at Sega? What does your sort of role involve? Uh, what's your role in the, in the gaming industry at the moment? So as a digital account manager, I basically liaise with all of our partners that sell our product digitally. And it's kind of my job to manage those relationships and make sure that they get all the help that they need. And, you know, we just help each other. OK, fantastic. Well, I'm sure there'll be plenty more questions uh, for you in just a moment. Uh, we'll move on to someone we've already spoken to today. Uh, and we're coming back to you again. Obviously, we have Gio here, uh, eSports commentator and host. What was your first job in the game? Because it's slightly different here. We are sort of an on-camera yeah. as, as opposed to sort of being behind the camera. So technically, this is my first actual job in the gaming industry. But if you want to count it, a couple of years ago, I did do work experience with Criterion Games, who are an offshoot of EA, um, because at the time I wanted to go into development. Um, but that wasn't a job, I wasn't paid for it, it was just sort of work experience, so I, technically this. And it is quite a big part of it, isn't it? Especially on camera stuff, is getting that experience under yeah. your belt. Uh, where did you find those opportunities? So I actually entered a, I don't want to say a competition, because it was more to get an opportunity to go to GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference back in 2016, uh, which, uh, to have it all paid, it was actually with Yuki. Um, and so I, I ended up going there, and I met some people there, and I remember talking to them about how I was interested in going to, at, at the time, I wanted to be involved in physics engine development. Um, and so I met these people from Criterion who were really interested. And so we set something up. So that summer, I ended up going and, and doing some work experience with them. OK, fantastic. And then next year, we have uh, Lucy Nadrag, uh, new art elite League of Legends analyst yes. uh, for Excel. Obviously, I know the guys at Excel <laughs> very well. Hopefully, they're looking after you. Yeah, uh, what's your sort of role with Excel at the moment? So I am a league analyst for Excel. And my job basically consists of working alongside the coach and the players to make sure that they are prepared in the best way possible for their weekly matches that they have at the top like the highest level you can in Europe so I'm assisting the coaches the managers and just making sure that the players themselves feel ready and just helping them way out of it way so I can no pressure no pressure no at pressure. all no pressure. Involved in your role no, at all no, no. No, not at all um, and what was your first job in the gaming industry how did you sort of find yourself in this position so being an analyst was actually my first job and I actually started out at Excel anyway but I went away, tried coaching at another organization, and then I came back to Excel, so they're, they're clearly doing something right. Um, but that was really my first breakthrough to eSports, and I've kind of loved it, fell in love with it, and I've just stuck through it. OK, fantastic. And then next to you, we have, uh, we have Mary Antiel, which is the head of eSports and partnerships at Belong by Game. And now game is obviously something that a lot of us would have uh, spent a lot of time in uh, over our lives. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role. Yeah, so I look after all of the eSports operations, um, running tournaments across a range of different games. Um, we run tournaments from kind of a grassroots level, so for people first starting out all the way up to um, kind of the best in the UK scene. Um, and then they also look after partnerships as well, so working um, with publishers, with teams, with other organisations um, to agree commercial deals and rights for esports tournaments that we run. And how did you first get into the gaming industry? So uh, my first job was in game, so 14 hey. years ago. <laughs> 14 years ago I started off in a store, um, started as a Christmas temp and I've still not left yet. That's a beautiful story, isn't it, in yeah. itself? Yeah, that's a beautiful story. Uh, thank you very much. We'll, we'll come back to you with some more questions in just a moment. Uh, at the end, we have uh, Liz Prince, uh, the business manager, uh, Amicus. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, Amicus is a recruitment business. Um, we specifically recruit for the video games industry. Um, I've done recruitment for 25 years, but this is my first job in video games, which I started 14 years ago. 
Um, yeah, so in terms of recruitment, we obviously put clients and candidates together. So when any of the studios or the publishers or the esports organisations need talent, um, we go and find that talent and try to attract them to the roles that, that we have. Okay, and uh, very quickly, uh, how are you finding the esports industry? Because obviously that's something you've, you've been in recruitment a long time. Yeah. I know you sort of change roles in recruitment. How are you finding the, the industry? Um, esports is a fantastic um, part of the games industry. I think it's, um, it's, it's just the next iteration, really. It's, it's getting some of the biggest games to the most enormous audiences globally. And I think it's also great for people to be able to watch the games as well as play. So, I mean, one of my big passions is about getting more girls into the games industry. And I do think that um, esports is a way that, that girls can start to get a foot into a world that perhaps has been seen a little bit as a, a boys' culture, which I don't think any of us would agree with. Um, I'm outnumbered so at the moment. I'm, <laughs> like, and that's exactly why we've done it. Yeah, fantastic <laughs> stuff. Um, obviously, I want to say I used to be in recruitment myself before I got into the, uh, the esports industry, so we might have to have a chat later on <laughs> about, um, yeah, about some things. But um, I actually want to open it up now to everyone who is uh, in, the, in the audience, because obviously we have uh, some fantastic <laughs> minds for you guys to pick away at if you've got any questions about uh, the gaming industry, how to get into the gaming industry that people uh, might want to ask. So I think we actually have a hand up over here. Yes, sir. Microphone's just coming. There it is. Thanks. Um, so actually, I want to ask about careers not in the game industry. So um, I'm very interested in the skills that are being developed uh, playing games, whether it's on a professional level or just at home. Um, and I wonder what your, uh, maybe Liz in particular, but, but any one of you, uh, think about uh, transferability of skills um, and how can that actually help uh, any, any uh, game player in, in the uh, real world career uh, path? So are you specifically thinking of transferable skills from a game player with perhaps work experience in another industry but wanting to get into games? Is that what you're thinking? No, so the, uh, so the other way. So um, I would say someone who has been um, achieving quite a bit and putting in quite a bit of uh, uh, time and, and skill development in playing games, whether it's a uh, pro or, or uh, amateur, and how does that? How can that translate uh, to uh, co uh, other career paths that are not necessarily in gaming? In games, I guess. Um, I guess the majority of the skills in playing playing games is is actually about team participation. Um, so it's a little bit like um, doing really great project work at uni um, or at, at school level. Um, it's it's being able to show an employer that you can work together, that you can communicate. Um, I think some of the best communication that you see is actually amongst these teams. Um, I, I don't think there are necessarily any um, skills. So, you know, when we're talking about things like um, hard skills, so technology skills or um, things that you might learn playing the game, it's mostly about the softer skills and, and the character building stuff. I don't know if anyone else has got Anyone else want to jump in? Well, I, I, I don't think... If, if all you've been doing is just playing the game, I'm not sure you can, like, write that on your CV and get away with it. But I do definitely agree with the team working thing, is yeah. at the very least, on a personal level, it should give you an appreciation of how mm -hmm. important teamwork is and how important it is to coordinate with other people. But also, if you do have any experience playing on a team, whether it's in, like, a really local small tournament, you don't have to be a pro, as you mm -hmm. said, then you probably could be able to say, OK, well, I've done this, I've been able to work under pressure, I've been able to perform and, and bring out not just a, a product in that, you know, you're selling your team, but also in we've been able to bring out results in this high-pressure situation, a very alien situation in front of other people. We've been able to communicate well to achieve our goals. We've been able to work as a team. Uh, and things like that, I think, are pretty important. OK, fantastic. Uh, anyone else in the audience have any questions? Yes, one over here. Now, we've got to try... It would be the other side, wouldn't it? So we've got to get the mic all the way across. Oh, look at, look at Dan. He's done a great job. Well done, Dan. All right, please, far away. Hi, yeah. Um, uh, what would you recommend to anybody who would like to get into the gaming industry that might not be gaming itself? So, like, commentating or just behind-the-scenes stuff, like, organising the event. Like, what would you recommend to those kind of people? Anybody want to take this? Yeah. Um, so, if you're looking at maybe something like marketing or that side of the industry, um, I would highly recommend making a portfolio. Um, if you're doing 
kind of for fun anyway. Something that you can present to somebody within that field is amazing. Um, and with regards to kind of event organization, I, as a hobby, do event organization for charity work. So if you do see charities kind of making those events and esports things, then definitely get in touch with somebody that does that. Um, it will at least give you an idea of what is necessary to participate in those and kind of what skills that you need to bring to make an event like this, really. Uh, I, I think, as you mentioned, commentating as well, which obviously I think I'm the only person here who actually does that. Uh, obviously, when you're talking about on-camera stuff, like that can seem quite, uh, not gate-kept, but a hard, a hard route to get through. For me, actually, the first, the first thing that I did was uh, to show anyone that I had any kind of on-camera presence was I'd done YouTube as a hobby for years. Nothing to do with video games, but I managed to show that to someone and say, look, I'm, I'm good on a camera. Like, I can talk on camera. I have confidence. And, and then they let me like have a go at uh, doing video game host, uh, esports hosting, and I knew I wanted to do commentating, which I practiced in my own time. And uh, you can stream that, you can put that on YouTube, and then you can gradually hone your skills, do it with someone else, and then you can start to show that to people. Uh, and so I think that the general point, uh, to kind of go off what you were saying as well, is you want to build some kind of portfolio showing the skills that are required for the job you want to do. And in some cases, that may involve getting a degree. Marketing would probably be a good example of that. Not that you require it in a lot of cases, but it's still a good way of um, showing formally you have those skills. But uh, yeah, I think it's mostly recognize what skills that you require in order to do that job and put together a way of showcasing that. And if you're a big fan of, say, Overwatch, for example, while we're here, um, a really good way of showing off your skills as a commentator would be just to pick matches that are already live, the, uh, just the raw footage, and commentate over that. And then show that, you know, I have the knowledge about the game, I can commentate on this, and use that as part of your portfolio as well. Yeah, I would have to agree. I'd have to agree. Doing a lot of stuff off your own back, basically. Mm -hmm. Make a name for yourself before someone comes to you is the best way to do it. You want to get into commentary. But um, any other uh, questions we have? Uh, yes, young man, please, with the NYC shirt on. So I was just wondering, <clears throat> where, do you, where do you guys see yourself in five years? Like, do you see yourself Ooh. still doing the same job in wow. the game industry or like <laughs> branching out if you're doing like marketing to commentating or the other way around? Do you have a job to be filled? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we can go along the, on the, li along the line pretty quickly. Uh, we'll uh, uh, absolutely, so I'm gonna retire, hopefully, um, <laughs> in about five years. Um, no, I, I will 100% be doing a similar thing. I think we will have um, done an awful lot more work on the initiatives that, that we've got running, um, as well as the, the recruitment that, that we do. Yeah, I mean, for myself, I'm hoping we continue to keep opening uh, gaming arenas across the country. So I want my job to be getting much bigger. <laughs> lots more tournaments, uh, lo lots more activities and events going on. So I'm hoping that I can continue to lead my teams and um, make everything we do really, really, really good. Um, for me, in five years' time, I would have hopefully finished my degree by then and then go full-time into eSports. At the minute, I'm getting kind of best of both worlds and doing both at the same time. But afterwards, I would like to go 100% into eSports. Yeah, in five years' time, I'd say I definitely want to be doing the same thing, uh, maybe branching into some other games as well, as I, I mostly do Overwatch now. I have done a couple of other games recently. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as eSports grows, there's going to be more and more um, events and things like that, so hopefully more opportunities for me to work and get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess mine's the difficult one. So as an account manager, I guess five years' time, I'd like to be more in business development and kind of grow that way and do more relationship building with other companies and other divisions of the companies, which is always fun. Like, I already work with Mary's company to do charity tournaments, and that was just a random coincidence, yep. <laughs> really. So hopefully there in, like, five years. But where do you want to be in five years? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I'd like to go into the actual, like, gaming side of it, like, actually being a gamer, and I'd like to branch into, like, loads of different games to get a, a wide range of skills to develop. Cool. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> spread, spread the hedges. Uh, any more questions uh, from the floor? I think we have one more uh, just down at the front. Uh, how f like big do you think esports is going to grow and how hard do you think it's going to get into the industry, be that player or production? I think it's a very good question. Wow. And I'm yeah. pretty sure that none of us Quite sure. <laughs> um, we'll start with you, Liz, again. If... I mean, this is 
Gosh, I think it's just the start, isn't it, of, of the esports industry. Um, in terms of how difficult it would be to get in as a player, um, I do genuinely believe at the minute we've got this sort of Champions League, pre uh, Premier League type of arrangement. So I, I do think it's the best of the best that are, are becoming the biggest, the biggest players. Um, I'd love to see maybe perhaps more niche games being played so that the wider audience can actually become better known as, as players and, and get that sort of level of sponsorship as well. Um, but in terms of the size of the market, gosh, I, I hope it just keeps growing. Yeah, I think it's um, fair to say esports is, is definitely going to keep growing. I think everything suggests that um, esports is um, going for a really, really exciting time in terms of the growth and the interest. Um, I think there's still a lot of work for lots of different um, businesses and esports to do to help um, make the journey for new players, for organisations much easier. Um, I think there's a load of different people need to be involved in, in helping that. But I think everybody in the industry recognises the potential esports has and there's a, a, lot of, a lot of desire from everyone involved to make esports as successful as we can in the UK. Yeah, I think I agree with your points and say that esports is, in my eyes, one of the fastest growing industries that we have. You know, Twitch is such a big platform like millions of people will tune into that and watch the game that they desire. But I also think that as time continues, it might be harder for a player to get in just because the standard is going to continue rising and getting harder and harder. But I think from a managerial and business side of things, mm -hmm. I think that will make even more opportunities available for people like yourselves to get into. So I don't think that it's there's a limit. I think it can go even further than it is now. More organisations and just the scene as a whole will be taken more seriously from sponsors and other routes available. So I think it's going to continue as one of the fastest growing industries there are. I think it's a, it's a testament to how fast esports is growing. The fact that esports as an industry has been around for about 20 years now. And a lot of people talk about it as if it's only a few years old. And that's just because so much of its growth has been happening in the last few years. Um, I think what you guys have said about like, you know, the, the level for talent is going to get much higher. But also the age that talent start to peak is going to get much younger because talent are being picked up at quite young ages. So if you're in school, start now if you want to be a gamer, <laughs> a pro gamer. But um, I think something that's going to really help esports grow because it can't just rely on kind of venture capital I think it's going to be a lot more collaboration with traditional sports which we have seen uh, amongst the number of organizations working um, uh, with traditional sports I mean the craft group own an overwatch team um, just to kind of name one example uh, and as that the divide and the taboo of kind of traditional sports and uh, and esports starts to minimize. That's when we'll start seeing a lot more growth from that perspective. Well, it's difficult to go last because you guys have made like all the points <laughs> I want to make. But yeah, I think esports is just going to continue to grow. The rate will probably slow down a little bit, but it's definitely a booming industry. And with regards to obviously being a player, I think, like you said, you know, that entry level is going to be really young now. Um, we see some amazing players throughout the entire of, well, all games, really. Um, so, yeah, practice. Don't get off on your schoolwork, though. So, you know. I think it's a perfect way to end it, isn't it, really? Uh, thank you so much uh, for all of the questions from the floor. The guys will be around, of course, for the rest of the time that they're here. So uh, find one of them if you have any more questions you want to ask. Uh, can we just give it up, please, for the panel? It's been absolutely fantastic to have you all here. We've, thank you so much. Uh, of course, for answering all of those questions. Uh, but for now, we're actually going to go to a very quick break because when we got back, we've got plenty more Overwatch action. We've got to find out who's going to be in our grand final. We've got two semi finals to come. Don't go anywhere.
That's why I need to hold on to everything I don't know what to say now. I need to hold on to. And welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Digital Schoolhouse Grand Finals. Uh, we just had a fantastic little section uh, there with some amazing panellists giving their insight onto the esports industry and the gaming industry. But now it's time to get back to the action. We've got our semi finals uh, to get underway now. And uh, look who are the beautiful people we've got back on the desk now. We've got Rams uh, and we've got Scott and we've got Bailey. Obviously, did a fantastic job earlier, yeah. uh, gentlemen, I must say. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket and the, uh, the games that we've got coming up to keep you up to date. Uh, with all the action and of course what's going to be up first in our semi-final is only W, uh, the most aggressive team by their own uh, their own admission going up against Crosshairs and then in our second semi-final which will of course uh, be coming up after that will be Bo Hunt School taking on Scorpions. Now gentlemen I mean it's getting down to business it now is, isn't it? If your players were a little bit nervous now when you're one step away from a yeah. semi, uh, from a grand final, I should say, uh, things get very interesting on that stage. You know, at this point, we've also seen all of the teams that have gone through have proved to be really strong. We've had some great games so far, and we're heading into some teams that really show their the versatility. Some of them are more to keeping the same formation, but I think we're going to see Clash of the Titans almost to complete our semi-finals. Now, Bailey, is the gameplay going to be as impressive as that shirt, which I keep going on about because I'm <laughs> genuinely in love with that shirt? I think the gameplay, as we just saw in the last uh, quarter-final, there that. That last match was so intense, and I think as as, we're, as Scott said, we're finding the best of the best here, and and then eventually we'll have the best of the best against each other, and I think that will be some of the best game of today. Okay, well let's take a look at the maps then for our next game. Uh, Rams, I'm going to let you talk us through this a little bit because uh, you can see here Castillo, uh, Eco Point, Antarctica, and Necropolis is going to be the the final potential deciding map here. What are your thoughts on this lineup? Again, Castillo, uh, another open map which uh, with areas where you can hide in for a bit, and we've seen a lot of teams that have just been patient and waiting for the point to open on that one. 
Uh, Ecoport Antarctica, I think it's the second time we're seeing this today as well, and Necropolis as well, and the third one. So, again, it's, mo it's more maps that are open. I do have some areas where you can either play very aggressive or very defensively, and then we see towards the end what happens. And, you know, we've seen it in the last few games. But, I mean, we're coming to a semi-final where, you know, only Woken just barely, you know, got out. And then the next one as well. Yeah which we are in-game as well, 1-2-0 uh, straight away, but we well, are going to go straight away. Should we find it. out what's going to happen in our first semi-final? Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise in here for the semi-finalists. Yeah. Yeah. Taking on Crosshairs, yeah. gentlemen, over to you. Yeah, they really, started, they really want to get the game started up and forget about us that's, talking. That's, that's so, yeah, start, so starting off now, we're on to blue side, who is going to be only Woken on the red side. As you can see now, oh, actually, got Genji out on the first corner right now, and so far, so good. Oh, it's a quick round right now, baby. We are. We're seeing, we're seeing the teams red really. We're not really sure who's who currently, but they're dominating quite strongly. They're using their versatility of different characters, teams the Ash, the Mercy, which is kind of a weird combo together, but used effectively there, clearly, with the Ash cleaning that up with the Mercy assist to take out the Winston. A nice little clean slate for the first round, really showing the team's power. Will they be able to maintain this through the next few games is going to be the interesting thing to see. First round to Coventry on that one. Bailey. Yeah, a really, really nice job on Coventry's part. The Winston clearly countering their Genji. And if I'm right, I think that Genji was Crosshair's so called top 500 player. <laughs> right, and then they're going to bring it out again as well. So we got a Genji, Mercy, and a Winston. A really mad dive cup against the. Oh, and Ash. It's the first time I've seen Ash, I believe, in this one. Mercy and an Orisa. So we're getting a dive cup against oh, a. Good a pick. Yeah. It's, it's, it is really showing we'll be how important the, the picks are. They're trying to get the Genji here to a point where they can utilize him correctly. Um, we're seeing, of course, the, the res there. But what's going to happen is we're going to see these two Clash of the Titans, really. Like I've been saying, you know, we've got the double mercy on both teams, and then we've got really a kind of tank, and we've got somebody who's a bit more versatile to gameplay, a bit more working with the levels. It's going to be interesting to see how each team is able to deal with that. You know, we're just getting some great little shots here to start with. They're trying to get the Genji out there. Looks like Crosshairs there. Lost two people. Crosshairs about to lose the first again, but they had a great revive to start with, but they took the mercy out. We're seeing only W really trying to maybe bring this round back. They know what's going on here. Both teams, or both teams have lost someone now, but it looks like only W take the round back, making it to 1-1. One, one. The dive gun being more effective than a pick comp right now. I'm a little bit upset that round was so short. I was really looking forward to see if Bob will come out again, and hopefully sure. we'll see more Ash as uh, these games go on, and hopefully we'll get another Bob situation. Bob really did prove effective early. You know, like you said, it's like having another player on your team, because although Definitely, it's not necessarily yes. the best player, it's someone who's going to get a lot of shots on target and is going to have that extra health that almost scares the rest Bob of Bob essentially is tactical visor, but with Orissa. Definitely, yeah, it's like merging the two together. So we're going for a different sort of uh, composition here with Crosshairs, with the Anna this time coming out, and Long Range with Widowmaker. So both sort of snipers, one with heal and a Reinhardt to protect. Meanwhile, the dive comp is still there for only Woken, so... Is this going to be effective, or is this going to be another dive here well, straight away? I don't know. We're seeing Widowmaker a brave pick, brave pick, but if they get the right support, Widowmaker Anna is especially brave, really low there. It looks like only W utilizing that Genji really well to get some early shots. Almost got down there, but the Winston getting healed back up. We're seeing both teams kind of when they're healing back up. They've gone the wall. The Genji pulling it out of the bag. The Winston supporting him takes out two of Crosshairs. We've got Ryan Arger just taking some shots. Crosshairs lucky enough to take out the Genji. They now have taken out the serious ones, but it looks like only W have won again 2-1. They've really been bringing this back out of the bag. I think it's essential that, that their mercy is keeps resurrecting uh, Genji because he's clearly a really good player. And getting that double dash there, which is what we would call, it uses, if you flick your mouse quick enough, you can get two dashes out of one ability use. So we're going to look at our next round. Of course, it is map points here for Only Woken. As you see, our compositions right now, sticking with it. It's, it's a winning formula here for Only Woken. Meanwhile, for Crosshair, it's going to be Lucio Soldier, and it wins. So a bit of a dive here and a bit of long range. So mixing it up, and but yeah, do or die on this map for Crosshairs. Well, I think we're going to see that. It's quite interesting picks. Both of them, they're going for the wins, and they know that that's kind of a more tanky character, that they can use the shield and the electric static to kind of build up a bit of a more defensive strategy. But it looks like Crosshair's got the upper hand there, taking out Mercy their main healer, which could be really effective to going for that Genji. They've got the Genji very low and not really much that the Genji can do to try and combat that, especially if that soldier gets right in sight, you know, the Genji could be out and then we could be dealing with, you know, the Winston versus Free. But it looks like only W are great taking that health back. They got some shots on the soldier, but the soldier really proven strong. And, you know, they take the other two crosshairs, win the round again, equalising back to 2-2.
Yeah, as soon as that Mercy's down, Crosshairs just have to pick at only W. They cannot regenerate that health in any way. So just keep poking damage and eventually they will fall. So our last round actually is uh, two all apiece. This will be last round. Whoever it goes to, of course, will they stick with their composition here? Only W will they counter? Will they change? We're going to find out right about now. Oh, I need the Fair Mercy. Uh, no, it's, oh, it's a not, change. Not. We've got Batsy Soldier got and Aerisa. So a bit of a long range here Match. for Only Woken. I but with Crosshairs, it's going to be long range as well with a Roadhog. It's going to be really interesting. We saw some great Baptiste plays from Matador Gaming earlier today, but it's it's a really controversial character to be using in a competitive situation because a lot of people haven't got much, that much experience with him, haven't built up that much um, combinations yet. He's still in a very early days. We're not really sure about how the meta is going to work with him yet but you know it'll be interesting to see whether they can effectively use him keep everyone together which is a downside the fact that they're dealing with a roadhog who is great when people are very closely together and can kind of shoot up against them you know both teams trading a little bit of damage but it looks like no one's really winning this trade so far both teams keeping the equal side of the maps they're just keeping nice little pot shots with each other the shield proving very effective we're not really sure what's really going to go happen not really, not, not really sure what's going to happen here today. You know, put your predictions in the Twitch chat, guys. You know, tell us what you think is going to happen. We'll see these two teams collide. Yeah, so we got uh, the, the ultimates actually charging up right now. 52%, 55% here for only working 47. So both neck and neck in terms of the actual ultimates, except for Risa. So they're being patient. This is more patient play here rather than rushing in, Bailey. Yeah, for sure. I think only W are taking this very cautiously because they know if they get too close to that Roadhog, it could just ease up one of them and get a single hit. And I think Batista was a very good choice here because if Bob does come out, and I think we might see him here, they can just use that Mopar skill to totally initiate him. All better. Right, so 20 seconds though, as the points will be open very shortly, but it looks like it looks like Crosshairs is going to try and move in as best they can, but only Woken will back off as well. They, they want to play the point right now, Scott. Well, yeah, we're seeing the Soldier with the ult there. That could be a really strong play if they can time that right. The Baptiste healing them up. Soldier, get the ult ready. Both of them have the ult. And now we have seen Bob, Bob coming into play, ladies and gentlemen. Bob in the chat, Bob, Bob, Bob in the chat, boys. Let's get a Bob in the chat. Didn't prove that effective. Only went from winning the round. 100 IQ plays, I'm telling you. There are uh, hold. W with their player power by Intel i7 right there. <laughs> yeah, so only Woken will take it just by the skin of their teeth on the points, of course. It was a very patient play by both teams. Rather than rushing in, of course, we saw a few rush rounds, a few uh, dive compositions here from only Woken, and then the patient play here from the crosshairs. But now it's all to think about now as we're going to go to Eco Point Antarctica for our second map. As you can see on your screen now, the players are crosshair players uh, really having a think of just having a quick chat and having a look. Meanwhile, only working, feeling really hyped right now. Yeah. I think it's going to be different because Eco Point Antarctica is such a different map. It's got those really long halls that you can use that are great for snipers, but it also has those close combat areas with the staircases that you can't really do much with unless you're a more close range character. So I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a switch up in these team strats and we're going to see something that's a little bit different. You know, we're going to see something that's going to be a lot more close range, a bit more physical combat, which is really what I like to see. And yeah, what do you think, Bailey, as well? Yeah, for sure. I think, as we can see here, um, only W going for the Winston Genji comp that they went with last time. But Crosshair is going for a McCree Anna here, which could almost a complete counter to Genji, just completely immobilizing him. Yeah, of course, with the stun grenade from McCree, and of course, biotic grenade from Anna as well that can stop the healing. So a lot, it's going to be a lot of long range here from Crosshair's side uh, to try and get... Ooh, Genji actually getting a lot of health down, but gets to... Uh, Gets itself back on the uh, re-energized by the Mercy as you see Genji go. Whoa! Oh, fair play to that Genji with the, with the Mercy assisting both and the Genji swiping it out. That is the Genji. Is that the Genji they've been promising us? Is I that, really think so. That was that was that was clean beautiful. Sweep then by but OW. The Mercy really supporting that, keeping everyone nice and nice and you know high health wise. They just go in, they just swipe them out, and it is it is game over for Crosshairs right over. That was that was an obliteration. I, I think only Walken uh, is planning to only win right now. A lot, a lot of uh, a good team play there. Both the Winston and Genji jumping at the same time, landing on, but landing on all the crosshair players and getting those quick kills. But meanwhile, we we'll see they're going to stick with that formula again. You know, this is elimination. Uh, you can stick with whatever you want to, and it is a winning formula for them right now. Crosshairs have changed to so Lucio, Soldier, and a Winston. So a bit more of a dive here with a sustainability at the same time. But we'll see how this. The point is, you can see right now, only Woken just trying to build up their uh, ultimates right now from afar. Meanwhile, Poke coming in from Crosshairs. And right now, 
Uh, it is looking good, but only Woken's got. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Both teams kind of doing a little bit of the trade. But it looks like Crosshairs have the advantage this time. Although they are going for the Mercy, which is quite controversial. You've got to take out that Mercy if they can kill their, their healing source for their team. But it looks like ONW lost the Mercy there. Crosshairs proving to be a little bit stronger. They've also lost one. It's an equal trade right now. But it looks like Crosshairs have the slight advantage health-wise, just kind of taking people out. The Genji, of course, still a little dashing around the map, getting some little hits across. But it looks like it's a 2-2 two -two now. It's going to be interesting. They've lost the Mercy over on only WM. Crosshairs have lost the Soldier, which is which is interesting. It looks like only W very low health-wise, but the ult is there on the Genji. If they can time that right, that could be quite brutal, but they're worried about the health, maybe. The fact they've got a lot less that they can kind of deal with in that situation, so they're going to have to really put in. But it looks like Crosshairs were able to take out. Take out the witch and they're dashing against the Genji. Genji, you got the oh, Genji! So close. So close, ladies and gentlemen. That was... Fair place for that, Genji. Can we, get a, can we get some respect for Genji in that chat, ladies and gentlemen? Some respect for Genji in that chat. That's, that was... That Genji has truly got some talent. I definitely it just think all, only W's Genji is a force to be reckoned with here. But luckily for Crosshairs, they took out their healing source right from the beginning, so all they had to do, as I said, they just got to poke damage at them, and there's no way they can regain that health. Yeah, it was a very, very dire situation with Genji, only about 20% health there in that one. And actually, we get a change right now. So the competition has changed here for only working with a Lucio, a Brigitte, and a Reinhardt. So we're getting a lot of shields here and a lot of boost. So they're going to look and try and dive heavily with the hammers and the mace of uh, Brigitte and Reinhardt. For Meanwhile, sure. for uh, Crosshairs, it's gone back to the Anna and the Ash here. So we're going long range along with uh, Roadhog's uh, you know, his flat cannon. It's going to do a lot of damage, as you can see here on the shield. I think what we're seeing here is we're seeing the team sticking a lot closer together. Now that it's at an equal level, they both are, they both know that each other are forced to be reckoned with. And they're kind of keeping the closer range combat, which is what, what's so great about this map is that it forces that, like I said earlier, you know. We're seeing the teams grouping together, both of them, or one of them utilising the Roadhog, the other one utilising the right heart for the shield. It's going to be interesting, definitely, once, once we see some true shots and combat going on. But, you know, now we're later stage in the competition, both teams are playing a bit more careful. We're not seeing the offensive strategies that we saw so much earlier in the competition. Now we're seeing teams playing more defensive and to be a little bit more careful, which is, which is quite surprising. You know, maybe if we had one team that just went on an absolute offensive streak, they would you know, possibly win that, but it doesn't look so great. We're seeing OEW taking out the Anna. That's a little trade there because they've lost the... I can't see who that is on the other side, but it's it's really getting somewhere now. Both teams getting 2-2. Two -two. This is a really close game. Although only... Do, only with, uh, only bleh, can't speak. Although they are one point up, they have the advantage that they've got that, you know, satisfactory feeling. They've got the, the happiness they're winning. But at the same time, like I say, that crosshair's just come in and just wiped the floor a little bit. There's a the floor, you know. See the poke there from... Uh... Crosshairs proved to be a lot more better than the shields. I think we were worrying about Crosshairs not having shields in that one, but it just seems the, the five hat was better there, Bailey. Yeah, I think maybe only W thought they, they were safe with their Genji, so they thought, oh, maybe let's try something new. But as we've seen, it, they might not be as strong in the brawling comp as they think they might be. And again, we go back to the winning composition here for Only Woken, back to the Mercy, Genji, and the Winston. Meanwhile, for Crosshairs, they've got brought, they brought out a May this time, so they really want to try and stop Genji coming in and freeze him to death. I think what's quite interesting is the fact that a lot of teams so far in this competition have gone back to their winning composition for the final round to try and bag themselves a win, or to try and bring it back, which almost makes them quite predictable. Um, we've seen a lot of pharmacy throughout this competition so far, and the predictability has meant that we've seen very hard counters against that, but it shows to be really effective there, predicting that counter, they're just wiping through them that quickly. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't get the same ones that are going to Only W would take Echo Point on Tatsuka, and I think it was a good counter made there, just there's nothing they could do against that. Winston's shield is only very temporary, very low health, and once that was down, could not use it again, and May just absolutely... Mace Freeze Isoblast will slow them down as well, so there's not really much chance for them to escape either. Yeah, you can see on your screens right now, the, the team's having a good chat with each other. Of course, Crosshair's coming in with one on. We are going to head over to our third and final map, which I believe is Necropolis. Um, again, both teams really fighting it out. Again, the Genji did prove uh, unstoppable in the first map, but countered by Crosshair's in the second, and it's going to be... It's going to be interesting. So, I mean, where do we stand? Can they rely on Genji once more only working, or do they have to find something else? Well, 
like we've seen in that final round there, maybe going the Genji is a bad idea. Although it's one of their strongest characters, the fact that picking Genji has the predictability that comes along with it. You know, we saw earlier in those games where the Genji, the Genji's great. You know, there's no denying that that was some great Genji plays we saw. But at the same time, when they tried to use that classic Genji combo that they had at the very start to try and win that final round, that didn't prove effective at all. It was too predictable. So, so let's, because we're on to the third map, there's only going to be one winner to go into the grand final. So. Any quick predictions between you both? Mm. This is a tough one because they both performed really well and obviously they've got one map apiece now. But I, I think I think only W could take this. And what about yourself, Scott? I think I think they've got it. I think they've got it. You know, they've shown that they have the confidence, but at the same time, if they were a bit more versatile with their picks, they were a bit more open to different changes, one. I think they'd be a really great fight. Team. Okay, so we are gonna start off then into the first round of this third map. And we are getting, again, is back to the dive comp. They're back to what they are comfortable with for only Woken, but Lucio, Soldier, and Winston as well. So slightly bit of a dive comp with a bit of long range as well from Crosshairs. And they're going to keep, you know, on, on the high ground right now. And it looks like they're just going to be patient and wait right now for either their ultimates or the points to open. For sure, we've seen both teams as what we've been seeing so far in the semis is the fact that they are really keeping a defensive strategy. Although they've got some maybe offensive characters, we can see this grouping on the two sides of the map, the classic rotating around slowly, taking shots at each other. We may be seeing a capture point end, but it does look like Crosshairs are slowly getting a little bit closer and then backing off a little bit. They're kind of testing the waters for each team. They're seeing how offensive they're going to be or how defensive they're going to be. You know, of course, the healing on both sides is going to be vital for this. You know, Crosshairs with the with mass amounts of healing potential from that team. You know, we're, it's going to be quite interesting how do you feel that's going to be a... Yeah, I think definitely, I think Crosshairs have a little bit of an upper hand here because they have Soldier, which is a lot more effective at long range than Genji is. So wherever the Genji and Munson go, they'll all have to go together. Otherwise, they might not be able to take them down on their own. Some good aiming here from the Genji right now. And of course, the ultimates are building. 86% hit for Genji, 93. It's actually built right now where they've got a, a massive ult advantage uh, only working against crosshairs right now. So as we come into the capture point, 20 seconds again left right now. And get the Dragon Blade is available for Genji. We'll, we are going to see that die very soon. Uh, they're just waiting for that point to open. I think all hell is about to break loose in the next few seconds. It will. It is both team play really defensive. We're seeing some really great there. The Genji is wiping the floor. The Genji, can he get the triple? Go on! Go on, Genji and chat, everybody. Let's get some Genji and chat. The Genji with the triple! Round of applause for the Genji, everybody. They just genji the predictability. You know, they really showed you with the great support and you've got someone on your team who can maybe carry you a little bit. There was, there was a little bit of carrying going on there, but the Genji really did show this. There is some great, yeah. great I, possibilities. I think, I think the other teams will definitely have to watch out for only W's Genji here. They'll have to be very, very wary and watch that they don't get enough charge for that Dragon Blade because he's very deadly, even on very low health, as we saw in Echo Point on Tartica. He even managed to get one pick on around like 20 health. Yeah, so we start in the second round off with one round to, right now to only Woken, of course. It's best of three. We're on our third and final map. Whoever wins this will go to the grand finals of the Digital Schoolhouse 2019 Of course, tournament. now, over on the crosshairs, we have the potential for Bob this game. If they can keep their Ash nice and safe, they've got the Mercy there and they've got the Winston, maybe they can protect it. And like we said, you know, that's the possibility of bringing an extra person onto your team. If they can, uh, if they can protect throughout this entire round, that Ash, right to the end, which they seem to be doing so far, they're kind of keeping it in a more safe spot. I think the Mercy takes on the hit, the Ash taking quite a lot of damage. The Mercy is quite low, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like Crosshairs has the potential. Crosshairs have lost the Mercy, Crosshairs have lost the Ash. There goes the chances of Bob this round. But it looks like we're going in here. The Winston, nice and low. Winston is out and only. Oh. That was a very nice close little, round. Nice little cheeky round. The teamwork there from both the Genji and the Winston to jump right in at the same time onto the Mercy. It proved devastating uh, for that. And it's two rounds. And we're at our match points here for only Woken. I As think what it did for Crosshairs there is that Genji's Tesla cannon can just completely target two people at once. And I think that's what really did it for them. And then that Genji, of course, just coming right in yeah. and getting the damage in that he needs to. You have to be careful to kind of protect your, your key players in the rounds. I think we've seen quite a lot of this. We see the true tanks with a lot of shield characters we've seen to kind of keep someone safe until they get ult that's got really great ult potential but low health throughout before that. 
But now we see a different change right now. It is match points here for only Woken, but we'll see not the Genji comp. We'll see a Zenyatta, Reinhardt, and a Lucio comp. Meanwhile, with crosshairs, we've got the Mercy, the Pharmacy with the Roadhog. So Which is the classic 3v3, you know, combo. It looks like crosshairs want to use that power because they know they need to win this round. Oi! And nice it proves to be effective. There. It proves to be effective. You know, that's their Genji bit, although he wasn't playing Genji this round. The Pharmacy combo, although I'll allow that because they are they were quite unpredictable. They they haven't pulled that out of the bag so far. They say that's the final round. They just pulled it out and they're utilizing it right there and it's really showing that Crosshairs have their power here. They've got one person left on the other side and Crosshairs still got all three on maximum health. Something that we haven't really seen so far in this competition and they are just wiping the floor at this point. They have to get him into it, confine him to a nice small spot and then just get some great far shots and then it's just game over. Or you could just be patient and wait for it because again, there's only one person. I mean, if, sure. they want, if they want to win, fine. But being patient right now, let's let the Lucio bubble about. But then again, there isn't much the Lucio can do because when it comes down to the capture point, of course, the air advantage is going to give the Pharah a massive boost. Being able to take down when the Lucio short and the wall run kind of thing going on, but it's nothing compared to keeping on this guy. The Lucio is scouting out his target, but he's not taking any shots. You know it's quite a risky thing to do because, of course, you're dealing with a situation where you've got all of this power who's just wiped your teammate. You're not doing great health-wise yourself. You're not just going to run straight in there. Playing it more tactical, but it has 13 seconds to get to the capture point. It's that's going to be really risky to finish this round off. Yeah, it is, and it's smart play as the capture points is about to open. Of course, this should be a round for Crosshairs, unless Lucio just starts to bop everybody, but no, there no, you go. Crosshairs, no, Crosshairs had that one in the bag. They pulled out the Farrah Mercy. Let's give a round of applause to Crosshairs, everybody. You can, you can only wish for a triple boot here from Lucio, yeah. but 2-1, uh, of course, it's not a sort of a whitewash here, so again, two more rounds for Crosshairs, but meanwhile, it's still match points as we are going to look at the next, uh, next lot of heroes that are going to come out for only Woken and Crosshairs. And uh, let's have a look in the next second or so. Yeah, they've gone back to it, so only Woken's gone back to that composition. Meanwhile, Hanzo has come out here for Crosshairs with an Anna and a Roadhog. That's interesting. The hands are really on pick, seeing the fact that Crosshairs know that the other team really utilised the Genji quite well. You know, that's going to be quite hard to hit some shots since he dashed around so much. They're climbing up the wall, they're getting some great early shots on the healer, sadly, so there's not really much that's going to go through. Great pick from the Hanzo there. The Hanzo just getting some nice little shots. The Genji also proving really effective. It's been a bit of a trade on this side, but it looks like Crosshairs are losing out now. There's, of course, the, the Roadhog there, that if they can take that out, oh, it's a 1-1, one, one, a 1v1, one one, ladies and gentlemen, Genji versus Roadhog. Wow! It's, it's going to be very tough it's right now be because we're self-sustaining -sustain, healing from Roadhog. And Genji only on 75 health right now. There's a nice little deflect there. That'll bring the health down just a bit here for the Roadhog, but 51 health left on the Genji. It's going to be the fact of, will they be able to... Oh, no. Oh, very there. interesting hook. Very right. interesting hook. Oh, it, it, it was a... Oh, good, 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 effort good effort by the Genji, good though. Good effort. Positioning himself around that little pillar there, just so that he could not be seen yeah. by the Roadhog. And I also noticed that what he would try to do is he'd get a little bit of damage on the on the Roadhog, maybe. Try and get the Roadhog to use the heal, and then on the cooldown for that, then absolutely just batter the Roadhog. Yeah. But sadly, didn't get fast enough. The Roadhog got a great shotgun, you know. Here we go. Really then. proved effective. Match point for both teams right now is do or die for both of these teams. Lucio, McCree, and Ryan are here for Woken. So Zenyatta, Ash, and a Roadhog for Crosshairs. So one of these teams after this round will be into the grand final. Who is it going to be? We shall find out right now as we are going to stick with the McCree. who's going to just come in behind the right heart shield. The Discord will be on right now. I think it was on uh, Reinhardt there, but it's actually getting down. Ooh, a lot of health going down right now on the Woken side, but we'll be going up. And it's not very sustainable. Lucio no, the Lucio, the Lucio losing a lot with the Lucio. We did switch into healing mode already, trying to get that back up, but I don't know if that will be enough. Of course, the Reinhardt with a very low shield there, almost out. They probably should have fallen back a little bit and tried to charge it up a bit more, but straight into combat. Crosshairs know what they need to do. They know that they need to get into a high-pressure environment which they're really pushing now, and that's proving really effective. Of course, both, tree, uh, both teams have now been in a trade of damage, but it looks like neither can more successful, apart from the fact that the, the Zenyatta right, has good. gone from crosshairs. A nice little right heart swipe there, I'll give them that. That was that's fair play. You know, both teams still in the trade, of course. Crosshairs at a disadvantage now, because they've lost their Zenyatta. Trying to keep it, they've got to keep the Ash safe if they want to go for Bob, 46% ultimate charge. Both teams now kind of idling around the map a little bit. They're scouting out the competition. They don't really want to go out. We may be seeing a, a, a finish on the capture point, which we are now. Capture point area. Maybe we'll see a last minute rush, but no, we're seeing some shield play out here. Kind of keeping it back, keeping behind the shield. They're pushing slowly but securely. They have the all on the McCree now, just waiting to see inside. But it looks like crosshairs there were really strategic. They just burnt that all. They got out of the way fast enough, but that just wasn't effective. 
Yeah, I think Crosshairs are playing really well here. They're just staying out of the way until the time is needed. Oh, Roadhog is out. Is he going to push off the cross point? No! Oh, oh. Roadhog is down. It's three versus one. Send help. The ashes. Oh, oh. ashes out. Oh. Fair play. Oh, it's going to be a dirty run final. And there are your first participants into the grand finals. It's going to be only Woken with 3 2 in the final map. And you can see they're so excited there. You know, the elation, the elation of that win there. And that will put them into the grand final. And you know, awesome play by them and Mark. What do you make of that? Craig? I mean, that was uh, certainly an exciting semi-final, wasn't it? That yeah. was uh, did exactly what we wanted to see. A massive uh, congratulations to Oni W uh, for picking up the win there. But there were some big moments in that was... particular matchup. I want to talk about that the Genji triple. I know you were getting excited about it. I thought you were about to jump up on. I top always, I'll just climb on, run up. You know, <laughs> the Genji, the Genji really proved effective. But the problem is when you have someone on your team that's really strong, you have to have the support for them. You know, the thing about Overwatch is it's such a team game that you can have someone that pushes really strong, but unless you've got the support from the rest of the team to keep the heals up, to keep the support up, to keep some DPS maybe to, to get them nice and low so that the, the clean can come in, and we saw that. We saw some great support for the rest of the team so the Genji could just come in and just do his magic. And Benny, I wanted to ask you about that 1v1 situation as well, because at one point that was uh, Crosshair's tournament life on the line, because that was match point for only W, and he managed to clutch yeah. up and send it to that final round. What goes through your head in those situations, apart from the fact that why are my palms all of a sudden ten times sweaty than they're ever going to go? I think in that situation, you just have to stay calm and stay cool, because if you get in and if you just jump in, there's a very high chance that you'll get a bit too excited, almost maybe a little bit nervous, and you'll probably just slip up. If you mess up one time, then that's just the game over for you. And what do you think, uh, Rams, the moment was that, you know, only W managed to pull out that win? Because it was so close. It went down to that final map, it went to the final round. Uh, what was the kind of the deciding moment in that final round for you? To be fair, I mean, I don't think it was the actual game plan. I think it was the, the way they picked their compositions in the last round. I mean, they could have stayed with their strongest one. I, I think the change there to Zenyatta really proved not the best for Crosshairs, and it showed there um, with uh, only W just coming in straight in there and, you know, taking the win. Is that one of those decisions towards the end there where it's just kind of a risk-reward one? Like, if it works, it looks genius, but on yep. the other side yeah. of things... I have seen what's yeah. happened there. We have seen a lot through this competition last round where they've gone for their classic combo, which has been very predictable. It's a bit of a risk to try and play that strategy. You know, it, it really comes down to if you're lucky or not whether the other team has predicted it. You know, that's, that's, that's the problem when you're not playing lockout is the fact that there is a high predictability of what you're going to play, which has shown so far. Yeah, I, I especially think I'd like to, like, uh, Crosshair's, like, placement there on uh, Necropolis. Um, the way that they centred only W within that building so Ash could send in a dynamite and just put damage all over uh, only W was a really smart move by them because there's no way for them to escape. Zenyatta was pressuring the right and Ash was pressuring the left and there was just no way for them to get out. Okay, well, gentlemen, it's been absolutely fantastic. Again, uh, let's give it up to Crosshairs as well for their, you know, their participation in the tournament and uh, as far as they've managed to go. But uh, when we get back from the break, uh, we have our next semi-final to come up. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be Bohunt taking on Scorpions.
You can see the crowd are all ready for our second uh, semi-final here. Much like we are, the first one uh, certainly did not disappoint. Um, but this one, obviously, is going to be between Bow Hunt and Scorpions. I know there's a lot of Scorpions fans that are out here at the moment, but I'm going to give you your chance uh, to make some noise in just a moment. But let's uh, introduce back on the desk. We have Adam and, of course, we have James. We have Heather. Uh, excited to have you back. What did you think of that semi-final? Because that was nuts, right? Yeah, that was <laughs> the, the Genji from with the... Um, God, what the team's called. The, the Genji was incredible to watch. Just mad. That triple kill on, on, on Eco, on the Arctic one, right? That was mental. <laughs> that was brilliant. We're going to see yeah. some of that today. I loved, I loved how uh, Scott was going, get him, get him, get him, get him, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> and he did, he did. He managed to, uh, to close that one out. But let's talk about uh, the game that we have coming up. We'll take a quick uh, look at the bracket first, of course, to show you uh, exactly how the, uh, everything's lining up. Of course, we just had the winner of our last game uh, where only W did manage to go through into our grand finals there. And now it was, of course, Bohunt or Scorpions who will be joining them. Do you think they'll be a little bit intimidated thinking ahead about who they've got to play? Because that was a pretty impressive performance, although it did go right down to the wire maybe but hopefully they'll just focus on this game because it doesn't matter who you're facing afterwards if you don't get through this one and heather what are your thoughts on this particular game that we've got coming up are you excited for this one because obviously you know win one more game now and you're in a grand final well bohunt did really well but um in the first one scorpions won two nil whereas bohunt won two one so I think they'd still be with it, in with a chance, definitely. OK, well, let's take a look at the maps now and uh, see if that's going to change anyone's opinion uh, as far as uh, what this uh, semi-final is going to bring to us. We have Black Forest, uh, Necropolis and Castillo once again here. Uh, the map order obviously changed up a little bit here. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? It'll be interesting to see how they play on Black Forest because it's very different to the rest of the maps. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with 
um, usually a pharmacy there, but... Yeah, that, I think that's going to be the story of, of the first map, definitely. We saw pharmacy, 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 something else, and then pharmacy. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's going to be full-on medication for bow hunt, um, or the scorpions will be sickly and, and wither and perish. Do you think we're going to be seeing something like that, Heather, or do you think we might see one of these teams maybe change up a strategy a little bit here, try and catch their opponent off guard? I think they're going to have been watching how the how um bow hunt chain, how bow hunt played before and they might face their strategy off that on the other hand they might go with what won them previously well here we go then our second semi-final is underway this is where you make noise ladies and gentlemen it's bow hunt taking on scorpions well brilliant stuff here from uh from from bow hunt just just initially playing with that bastion obviously they have been watching this tournament up until now and the scorpions yep. have gone with that favored roadhog pharmacy uh combination which has been so successful on these maps with high verticality and open areas um james what are you feeling about uh, about this arisa bastion is it going to have enough dps to counter probably the damage being poured out by the bastion with the damage boost from the mercy should hopefully be enough to take to deal with that um <laughs> The pharmacy and the huge health pool of the Roadhog, but and Heather, are are, are we seeing uh, you know what we've seen before, where one team is slowing the map down, waiting for that point to be capturable, uh, and the other team is sort of just poking and trying to get one of those picks? Is that what is going on here? I think they're both trying to guess each other, but they're both defending quite well because you know as you can see the health both both sides, they're not getting a lot of hits in. But they are definitely trying. I think there's a lot of hiding going on. There is a lot of hiding, and uh, Farah is just putting as much damage onto that Arista shield as possible. Bastion now got the ultimate unlocked. Capture area coming in three seconds. Look at this, we've got Pharmacy pumped up. Roadhog gets a kick. Oh, he gets a hook, but then the Bastion does the ult and smacks him down, and then the Bastion gets the Mercy! Wow. My goodness. That was absolutely fantastic. Gamers, rise up. And uh, obviously, uh, two, those are the most old school iPads I've ever seen. Two people have <laughs> got uh, IMAX up there. IMAX, showing my age there. Um, what are we going to see here, Heather, do you think? Scorpion's going to stick with it? Well, they've got the um, Pharmacy Roadhog. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Both sides. Top again, yeah. which is uh, both sides. Yeah, they. that one's been used a lot. Oh, look at this Pharmacy. Oh, oh, oh my wow. gosh, and the Ferris just knock each other out. We're going to have a tank and a healer. Probably going to see a res on both sides, though. I agree with Scorpions that, but already thus have far. Theirs, but that might make things difficult for Bohan to get the res in. Well, the other side's Ferris is already down. Is that the Ferris? Yeah. yeah. Up there she oh, no, goes. Back. OK, Ferris now with the res. Oh. Um, again, very cagey of Ferris. I suppose that's to be expected. What do you think, James? Yep, so we're, yeah, we're already back to the beginning of the match having basically not happened. Um, They've just hit the reset button. Yeah, yeah. just to say, except Knight of Mercy has res available quickly and not. They've uh, blown the cartridge, you know, to get that dust oh. out of the... Oh, there we go. Oh, double oh, kill oh, there! Oh, that was fast. But Hunter Pharmacy has gone. Pharmacy and... goes for the bomb. I think... Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. The Roadhog fights valiantly there, but does not have the sustainability or the damage to win that three on one. One all here, Scorpion's bow hunt. Predictions, Heather? Um, I assume they're going to be using the same comp again because, on the other hand, they might change it around this time, seeing as they've used that one so many times. And yeah. James, what is a counter to this pharmacy? What sort of characters can a bow hunt use? Anything hit scan, basically. Anything um, hit scan. Or a bastion. Bohan's with enough shield, up. and there you go. Bohan's changed up now. They've got an Arisa and a Bastion in. And the Scorpions are sticking with the... Um, yeah, the Compaganda. The oh. Scorpions sticking with the only three characters that they play in this game. <laughs> um, Bohan have, have gone with the, uh, uh, the first map uh, pick as well, and that's a beautiful salute there from Pharmacy, just uh, for the fans at home, hiding behind this little tree. Put your security in and, uh, hands. Uh, wow, this uh, looks like uh, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Very easy to commentate on these matches because, uh, well, they just don't really want to fight each other. 
the pacifists overwatch, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely interesting. This time the Bastion isn't sticking out the front of the shield, so that's usually good. And the Fowl seems to be painting a tree. <laughs> well, obviously, Scorpions have picked up on where that Orisa uh, shield likes to be put down and the Bastion likes to hide because they are going for these long distance, long range shots just to keep that ult boosted. Um, if, they can, if they can try and get behind the shield, they might get in more of a chance, but that would have to, they'd have to get past everyone here. Sure, there would have to be a hard flank capture area coming down now in 25 seconds. And again, we're just seeing poke, 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 poke. Yeah, unless that hog can sneak in behind the um, the bastion, then they've just got to wait for them to break formation themselves. So just getting the hokey pokey. They're just hiding right now, but I think I think that's um, the Pharaoh going in there now. Trying to get in at least. Great stuff. So we're seeing a repeat of map number one there. Oh, Lashen gets the initial pick. Are we going to see a res from the Mercy? No, we're not. No. And the Roadhog spawn. Hulk. And the Bastion takes the yeah, Roadhog go. down. And Bowhunt win the second yeah. of three in order to take down this first match. Let's go see if Scorpions learn their lesson and don't go with the same comp again. Again. Who knows? I, you, we know what Einstein says about this, don't we? Do we? Mm. No. Okay. So Einstein says uh, that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. And expecting new results. Bingo. That's wow. the one. Bingo, bingo, bongo, yeah, and, and the scorpions go for it again. <laughs> Why not? Although we do not have some hit scan from the other from the McCree on the other side. So. And James, when you say hit scan, just for the people who aren't so familiar with Overwatch, what do you mean? Um, the hit scan means that the damage is dealt the moment you click on the person rather than with a projectile. But that doesn't matter anymore because he's gone. Um, <laughs> the, um, oh, and oh, so and we're down to just the, we're down to just the Roadhog now, and now the Roadhog's almost gone. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Bye. Heather, what happened there? Talk us through that. Um, I think... Pharmacy got three kills. Yes, basically. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, the Scorpions need to, they, they do need to definitely change their comp because they're not getting, they're, get, they're like getting some wins, but you're, it's just, just drawing constantly mm. with this. Um, you know, they get one, they get one. And if they change their comp, then they might be able to right. win more. For the, they third haven't time, changed it. for the third time this map, we've seen Bowhunt go with the Bastion Orissa and Scorpions with the Pharmacy supported with that Roadhog. Um, and the Orissa's already down. Okay. Oh, the Orissa's been picked nice and early. Oh, the Mercy's and down the Mercy's as well. Been oh my gone god, as well. No, the other Mercy. And there's that. There we go. That's just live. Nice. One, two, just three, Bingo Bang of Bongo, Monster Uncle, and that is. Map number one for the Scorpions, who yeah. are being well supported here, even by some of the Matadors players who actually lost against them. So right. lovely community feeling here at the Digital Schoolhouse. Um, Heather, do you think we're going to see more of the same in the next map? Wh wh which one do we have up next? Do you remember? Is it Black Forest? No, we just had Black Forest. I think we've got Necropolis. Necropolis. Ne maybe. I Necropolis or Castillo. Necropolis. I'm, I'm being told in my ear that we've got Necropolis. And, and obviously, Pharmacy is such a strong pick on that map as yeah. well. So, mm. I, think, I think the Scorpions are going to go with the same comp that got them to win this. Yeah. Um, they probably just want to play it safe at the moment, because you know if they, if they do change it mm -hmm. and they choose a bad comp, that could be them completely missing out yeah. on getting to the finals. I would say that the uh, line the, 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 the line of sight, the vision in Necropolis in the upper uh, section of the map in terms of the verticality of it is completely open. So yeah. actually having that Orissa, Bastion and Mercy combination on this is very well suited, particularly when you let that capture point open up because the Bastion can just spray. Yeah. And, you know, it'd be so difficult for the Scorpions to, to hide. So we might, we might see something uh, mm. different here, but uh, we're, we're, we're going back here to Necropolis and uh, yeah, they've okay, chosen okay. the same. They both have chosen the same of comps course. again. They've uh, they've chosen the same comps here, guys. Map number two. Give it up for Bow Hunt and Scorpions audience. Right, we're seeing the well. The Avis is already quite low, or getting to being. Yeah, that Mercy and Roadhog. They were staying together and hiding because the Bastion's already out finding people but everybody's just kind of 
out of the way. Nobody can really find each other. Yeah. Yeah, no clear lines of sight here for bow hunt and scorpions, but uh, absolutely taking the advice of the quite brilliant shoutcasters, might I say, um, I who, have, who, who have pointed out that Bastion up here can really just tear those, uh, you know, pharmacies to shreds if, if yeah. they get that clean sight. Yeah, if they basically don't judge how long they need to, if they don't um, get out of the sky fast enough, they are gone. There isn't time, especially with the damage boost on the Bastion. Absolutely. Scorpions here just hiding, just waiting. Finally getting the evasive world out. That is just looking for people, but I think he should move at some point just to get a clearer line of sight because they're just going to be stuck there for ages otherwise. Okay, All the capture the points point. about to open. Okay, 20 seconds left now. Someone's going to have to move. They can't just keep doing this over and over again. Bastion takes a little bit of damage there from an incoming rocket from... But the shield's up now, Farrah, so... shield's up. Heals up, you'd have to fancy. This Aris is going to jump down onto the point in a second, I'm sure. Yep, there it is, yeah. down. I know somebody else has got to go on that point, otherwise they're just going to win. Mercy oh, healing, Arissa on the point. No contesting. Oh, there's Bowhugs one. joined. Farrah's just, just used to roll. There we go. Oh, and... OK. OK, we've got a Going Mercy against the Bastion. Now and the Bastion oh, takes one. down the Mercy. Bowhugs have won the first match of that second map. There we go. James, what happened just at the end there? There was a Mercy. She didn't get the res off in time, is that no, right? No, that was quite a risky way to do that. If she got around the corner, she might have been able to get it, but the point was already the point had already active, been so there was nothing to be done now, I don't think. I see. Full battle mercy on the Bastion's probably not going to work. Um, exact <laughs> same comp again. Um, right. Who loves uh, seeing the same comp over and over again? Fez, yes? It's brilliant! More and more pharmacy. And hiding behind that bastion is the uh, the other mercy. And we're now having some a little bit more aggressive play here from Scorpions. What what do you think, Heather? What 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 would you do differently if you were operating? Um, I would say definitely go much more aggressive. See if you can sneak around the back of the shield, because you know that they they won't be expecting that, and you can just take them out from there. Um, with the shield in the way, it's, they can shoot you, but you can't shoot them. Speaking of sneaking around, where is that boat on? Because... That is a, that is a bad point. Oh, Roadhog oh, gets the Roadhog on the Bastion, but Mercy is there to the Bastion, kill. The Bastion's already gone away. The Roadhog's trying to find the Bastion now, I think. That was a good call there. Uh, was it James saying that the Roadhog was sneaking around behind, and now the Bastion is... This looks a little oh. bit disjointed. The Bastion gets taken down. Can the Mercy get the res in time? Oh, and they oh, jump and on. Oh, is down. is down. And yeah, there it goes. So we just saw there at the second map that that Bastion so got hooked, got was, was got taken down. Is that right, James? Yeah, and I mean, the pharmacies, it's still working, so they're probably just going to keep using it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if anything will change on the bunker from the other side. It might, looking unlikely. I'm saying with the um, current speed, the oh. Bo oh, they've they've got um. Oh, wow. oh, I can't see from this angle. Is that right, Widowmaker? It's a Widowmaker. Yeah. It's a Widowmaker. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna see the skills of this wow. DPS. Okay. They're like straight away. Waiting for that Farah to heal. Just hiding behind that. Nice, nice play here from Scorpions that are getting out of the line of sight and Widow getting another shot off there. Excellent. I have noticed that people are spending a lot more time in, out in the open than you would typically do on this map, which does give um, Widow a lot more chance to yeah. snipe people. He's really limiting the, um, the, pharma, the pharmacy's ability to get up in the air. She knows right. She knows exactly where they are. And, and why? Why is that, James? Why can Why can the pharmacy not get up in the air? They'll just be shot down really okay. fast. There's like Thanks two shots, and they can both be dead if she's oh, that's... enough. Great. That was the Widowmaker nearly dead then, but she yeah. regained her health already. Yeah, that was excellent play there from the from the Pharah, just getting one fully connected shot off. And we're just seeing sort of a, a battle of two on two with the the, the, the DPS against him, the, 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 the Roadhog kind yeah. of playing this KG affair, right, yeah. James? Yep, the um, uh, yeah. Widow now has Infrasight up, so... Nice. Yeah, no one's oh. hiding. Oh no, there's deaths now. 
at Mercy for the second time this match gets it, and Widowmaker is going for the oh. kill and gets the last shot. That was really strong. Oh. Mercy, one <laughs> shot, the Widowmaker. Yeah. And so now it's just the Roadhog, and if and they can get down the Roadhog, yeah, the Roadhog's about to go. They found him. He's not going to be able to win now. It's going to be very difficult for the Roadhog. It's going to have to get perhaps there an environmental kill. Yeah, there we go. Wow. So Heather, was was the Widowmaker what changed that? That I that think so, of the definitely. Um, if they use the Widowmaker again, they might. If they they might see see the Widowmaker coming and stay inside, but if they don't. It's going to really limit the um, pharmacy yeah, then if, again. If that widow's in there again, and oh, okay. Oh, they've changed their comps completely. They've got a Lucio, a Winston, and a Genji, I think. Very Oops. strong dive from Scorpions, and something interesting from Bohan. They've still got that widow in the mercy for the res, and then a Reaper to confuse them mostly, I think. I think because the Widowmaker limited the pharmacy so much that time, they must have changed it then. Mm. Yeah. That was quite interesting play there from the Scorpions as well. They almost tried to rush into the, 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 the sort of the crypt, so to speak, that, uh, that Bohunt were hiding in. And obviously that Winston is a great counter to the Widowmaker because you can yeah. jump on top of her and do such concentrated damage. Widowmaker almost takes down the Lucio with a second shot. Yep. And the mercy of Bohunt is low, but she is healing. Oh, and they're under attack there. Bohunt's under attack now, but... They've been kind of pushed into a corner, but they're still hiding, and they're coming out the outside now. Right. Winston, low health here. James, what do you what do you think thus far? It looks like uh, you know Bowhunt have got this distinct territorial advantage against. Uh, they do, but if the Scorpions, all of their heroes have the ability to just dive in and um, just completely overwhelm the um, the opposition if they're um, organised enough. And, well, it's looking like they are at the moment. Oh, Mercy there goes gets taken down there. This is going to be really difficult now for Bohan to come back. Widowmaker got her ult, but that doesn't and really help him in this situation. Oh, and here comes that blade. Yep, there we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Epic stuff from the Genji there. Yeah. Really pulled it back for Scorpions, who looked like they might have lost that fight. So yeah. it's all on this match now. So, let's see if... Let's see if they've gone back to their old comp or if they've changed again now. Mm -hmm. Eight seconds till the fifth and decisive match in this second map. If Scorpions take this, they will be through to our Digital Schoolhouse finals, and, is that correct? Yeah, they've, Scorpions have gone back. They've both back gone to back roots. to their old comps. Cool. They've both gone back. Going back to their roots and bow hunt as well. We're going to see Bastion against Pharmacy, really. And the oh, oh my gosh. And the Mercy's gone. Mercy's already gone from Bohan. Oh, that's... Yeah. That's probably it. Is that Ferris has been James? taking out loads of people. The Farmers took out the, um, the Bastion there we go. already. And they're done. Yeah, they're done. Well... That was really quick. Match. And the Scorpions are through. Is that it? They're through. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Just keep doing it. Pharmacy after pharmacy after pharmacy. That was uh, That's great how you play, win. though. But I yeah. think, actually, the decisive uh, match on that second map was probably the one where the Genji took it down because it was so close. And if they'd have lost that, we would have been on the third map. Right? Yeah. Um, it just shows how how, how, how close these, these games have been and how the, the skill level is almost... It's Even the teams that went out in the first round, I think yeah. some of them are as, just as good as the other ones. Follow. <laughs> SHSB underscore esports. Okay. Doing it. And on that note, I think uh, everyone should drop a follow because uh, that's smart advertising. You guys yeah, uh, have got a future in marketing up there. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about that game then because obviously we now have our second grand finalist here. Uh, congratulations to Scorpion with a 2 0 sweep. Uh, over their opponents there, but Scorpions look pretty dominant. Obviously, that last uh, game went down to a little bit longer than you would have expected, but uh, yeah. they closed it out pretty quick in that final round. They sort of said, you know, we played about a little bit here, and now we're going to yeah. get the business done. Lots of interesting play, especially when they finally started changing their comp around um, to that absolute dominating dive they had, which was very, very strong. And do you think Scorpions were maybe trying out something for the grand final, trying a few different competitions of their lineup, see if uh, there was anything there that worked? I think maybe they were, but they were... The, they did end up settling back into, you know, their original comp, which I think they're going to bring that one into the final. 
OK, and uh, speaking of the final, uh, obviously their opponents will be only W, who have been incredibly impressive themselves today. Uh, also very exciting in some of their games. Now, Scorpions look super strong. We know they've got a lot of support here. Uh, only W, though, are going to be a formidable opponent for them. Uh, I'm going to actually test, tease you for some early predictions, Adam, just to put you on the spot about how that's going to go. I'm holding up a W here, <laughs> and that's what's going to happen here. They took down a team that I coached who had a top 50 Genji player in the Stratford regional qualifier. I'm also just not sure if you keep hammering on that door with Pharmacy, it'll be enough. They, I, I think Woking will have that sort of creativity and that ability to adapt uh, and change to their environment. I don't know what my co-casters think. If the Scorpions can learn to adapt, then they might, they might take it, but if they don't, they just won't take it. It won't be. It won't happen. Woking's going to be anticipating the Pharmacy, so they'll do their best to go against that. So depending whether Scorpions go with that or not would probably be a very much an indication of whether they'll get through or not. Um, of course, working is very good in the regionals. They beat everyone. Um, but I think Scorpions could do it, because I don't know how they did it in the regionals. So speaking of Scorpions, what are their let's talk about their strengths as they head towards our grand final there. What have you been most impressed with them, not only from that last game that we've seen, but from the tournament as a whole? We'll, we'll go along and sort of pick one thing out each. Um, I, I think that uh, two things stand out for the Scorpions for me. One is the support that they've gathered. Um, and, and also, I think that they're committed to what they know. You know, they obviously have a, a, a certain ability. To, to, to capitalize on the strength of pharmacy in a three-on-three -three style format. I also think, I don't know if you guys agreed, that they are quite clever in disguising the sight lines so they don't open themselves up to those DPS hit scans uh, to destroy them. Um, but mainly the fans. Mainly the, mainly the fans. It's always good to have support, isn't it? It certainly helps yeah. you out. And what about yourself? Yeah, what do you think definitely the crowd favorite. But yeah, it's, it's definitely been interesting watching the persistence with the um, pharmacy. Just and them sort of leaning around corners to try and deal with the, um, the shield of the Oasa has been interesting, just staying out of the line of fire. And Heather, what's been most impressive about the Scorpions for you so far? And I'm not going to allow you to pick the fans, even though you're <laughs> great, don't get me wrong, but... Um, definitely how they, like, sort of see what they're doing and how to improve it. Um, like, when they, they switched from mostly defensive and hiding, to attacking when they saw that, that wasn't really getting them anywhere. Mm. So I think, yeah, that was a very important factor. OK, well, uh, let's take a look at the bracket now. Uh, obviously, we've had our two semi-finals decided, so now we're going to have our road to the grand final complete. And it is only W going to be taking on Scorpions, like we've been just talking about for a few moments there. Uh, commiserations, of course, to Bohunt School. Fantastic performance from those guys uh, here in London today. But it's time for a break. We're going to have a little extended break here before we get back for our grand finals. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much once again. Another round of applause again for James and Heather uh, for their fantastic work. Adam, you weren't too bad as well yourself, mate. Uh, We'll be back in just a few moments uh, with our grandpa.
And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to London, welcome back to the Gfinity Arena, and welcome to the grand finals of our Digital Schoolhouse Tournament. It has been a fantastic day of action where eight teams have now been whittled down to our final two. The finalists, of course, are only W and Scorpions. And to be honest with you, I don't want to hang about too much down here. I'd love to get into the action and get straight into our grand final. So with that in mind, please help me in welcoming the players out to the floor right now before they get on the main stage. Put your hands together. You've been fantastic so far today. It's only W and it's Scorpions. <laughs> Welcome, 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 gentlemen. So one more match to go. You've uh, obviously performed incredibly well today so far. You have been my favourite interview so far today, so I'm going to come to you first. Uh, how are you feeling now you've got to these finals? Um, I'm really excited. Everything we've gone through, every match, the quarters, the semis, we've been pushing, we've been pressing. All of this, it comes down to this. This Amazing. Ama Seriously, that's amazing. OK, and now coming over to you guys here, uh, how are you feeling about the finals? Is it just business as usual, or is this a little bit um, more different? It's going to be a shake-up as well, because these guys have been playing a lot of different comps as well, so we might actually have to adapt off um, just Fire and Mercy, but we're going to give it a go, hopefully win, and um, yeah, hopefully be crowned victorious. OK, fantastic stuff. Now, before we get underway as well, we have to uh, do a little bit of uh, a coin toss here to decide uh, some of the rules for this final match, so I'm going to bring in my fantastic admin. Where is he? Where is he? Where is you, Joss? There you are. Uh, so we have a coin toss here. Uh, essentially, the higher seeded team will be calling, so only Ws, you're going to be calling this. Uh, pick a player. Who's going to be calling? You get, okay, okay, all right. So we'll flip the coin. Basically, whoever wins this has the choice of either picking two maps that they want to play in the series, or they have a choice of deciding the map order. So, uh, Josh, this is your big moment. This is all your, right. this is your big or moment. Tails. Heads or tails? tails? I'll keep an eye on it, don't worry. It's a heads, so we come over here. What do you want to do, gentlemen? Do you want to play the same map twice, or do you want to decide map order? Um, same up twice. Same, <laughs> that was like Chinese whispers across there. Same up twice. Same up, yeah, same up twice. Okay, and uh, obviously you guys will be deciding the map order. Uh, so that's uh, what we're, the process we're going to be going through now. Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you uh, a little bit nervous about that? Obviously losing the coin toss, or it just doesn't no, matter? It doesn't matter. It's the coin toss. I don't care. Okay, and what map do you want, not want to play twice if you do see it pop up? Uh, Actually, don't say that because they're still picking them. So <laughs> thinking about that one very smartly. Uh, everything decided as far as maps uh, to play? What map have you chosen to play twice? Uh, we chose Necropolis uh, due to the long pillars and the expansive area. We think we can manoeuvre around that quite efficiently. And have you had a lot of success on that today? Um, I mean, we won our only map on it, but I think at home and practising, it's one of our favourite maps to play. Fun, and I think we're quite good at it. OK, fantastic stuff. Uh, just as we're getting this all wrapped up, of course, a reminder to everyone in the crowd that it's been a great day and a shout-out to everyone who's been involved because it has been uh, absolutely fantastic so far today. We're nearly through the process now. I say nearly, I have absolutely no idea how close we are to getting through the process, but hopefully it's, uh, it's closer than uh, we were a minute ago. Are we all good, Josh? We're all good. We're all good. All right, good stuff. All right, take your seats, gentlemen. It's time to get into our grand finals. Uh, one big round of applause here for the two finals teams as we now... Move over to speak to these wonderful gentlemen once again. Uh, fantastic to have you here for our grand finals. It's been a long day. It's been a fantastic day. It's been a very exciting day. And I'm hearing in my ear right now something to talk about straight away. Black Forest will be our first map of the series. And it is an elongated series here. Yeah. It is, uh, of course, this is going to be sort of redemption here for Scorpion as well because they were finalists last year and they lost out to Crip School, um, you know, coming second. Now Ooh. they're back in the finals this time. Can they go even one further? You know, that's, that's the question now. Against a, a strong team like Only Woken, as we've seen with the, the Genji play, the dive plays and all that sort of thing. So it's going to be on their minds quite a bit. But hopefully, you know, they've, they've watched each other. They've seen all the plans. We're going to see a great grand final. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic grand final. Now, unfortunately, Matador didn't make it through, no. but it does mean that you can stay completely unbiased for, for this nice. grand yeah. final here. Um, what are your thoughts on this grand final? What have you been impressed with the two teams we've seen? I think I've been impressed really with the teams that are able to make a lot of changes to their, their combination, their loadouts. You know, throughout this, we've seen some teams who have just gone for the same kind of picks every single time, and that's been almost a bit predictable. I think now that we're in the final, the teams are almost forced to kind of pick totally different things. They've seen each other play, but they haven't yet played each other. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. Now, we do know what our first map is, but should we check out what the rest of the maps are? I think it's a pretty good idea ahead of our grand final. So uh, let's have a look here. Black Forest, obviously, to kick things off. Uh, Necropolis, the second one. Eco Point, Antarctica. Necropolis, again, that second 
pick coming into effect and Castillo uh, there in that final pick. Now, gentlemen, anything particularly popping out for you here? Any teams been very strong on these, on these particular maps? Well, I've noticed that they've gone for the double where they've got the more space, but they've also got cover. So uh, clearly it's a team. Awesome. They are. They're a more. They're a more probably. You know, get up, physical fight, close range kind of team, and that really shows in their pick there, where they've gone for a, a kind of map where they have the opportunity to get to cover, but they also have the opportunity to make plays when they need to. Okay, fantastic stuff. Well, I'm hearing in my ear that the game is about to get underway. So let's get straight into our grand final here. It's only W taking on Scorpions. And we are going to get underway. Best of five, of course. It's going to be really a tough battle between all these players right now. And, you know, Bailey, what, what are we going to make of this first map? What do, you, what do you think? I think this is a very good map for the first ever game of the Grand Final because this map has shown that it's very popular with Fire Mercy like we're seeing here. I'm not sure what team that is. Um, but we're also seeing Batiste here, which we haven't really seen played as much. But not many teams have chosen to play Fire Mercy on the map just because it is so open and there is this little kind of house here that is so enclosed that they, they can just shoot their rockets into and just gain that bolt charge so quickly. Yeah. The thing that I really like about this map is the kind of different levels that it offers you and a lot of cover opportunities. It's a it's either it's a love it or hate it relationship with Black Forest, you know. I personally love it because it gives you the opportunity to have indoor fights but also forgive the outdoor kind of area you have opportunity to knock people off. And we've seen some combat going on here. A little bit of tapping from each side. They're both playing really defensive it seems so far, kind of holding a building and kind of sticking there. They've got to be a little bit careful the pharmacy combo keeping up in the sky, a little bit predictable, I'd say, so far in the, com uh, in the competition. We've seen this far, uh, far of mercy in the Roadhog just so many times that it's almost predictable, and we've seen quite a hard counter. Same kind of thing that Matador Gaming did actually play early, where you've got the, the Baptiste to kind of get you that little health shield. If they can use that right, that will prove to be really effective. Yeah, and of course, you can see on your screens, of course, the Scorpions, I believe, are in the blue. I think I'll get the actual, we'll get that confirmed as well. As, uh, but yeah, so Scorpion's coming in blue, as far as we know, and only woken in the red right now. And actually, it's been a nice sort of, it's been a quiet uh, round for this one because now the, the capture point, there's not been much damage, has it? But the capture point, they're both playing for the capture point for this first round in the grand final. Oh, we see some great nice damage. Great little shots there, but it doesn't prove to be that effective. Both teams trading health a little bit. The, uh, the Baptiste Shields there is proving to be quite effective. The, the, Farrah trying to take that out immediately. Doesn't get too successful, but getting some great shots across. Traded damage again, the healing really proving it. Caps point unlocked, we're seeing Caps point battle now. It looks like Blue got lucky there, trying to knock people off. And there we go, first point straight away on the Blue. A great pick by, I think, Scorpion's there on that Soldier. Predicting that they probably will go for our mercy here, and Soldier being the hit scan hero, Easy little counter to that Farrah there. They really showed that by playing predictable is not always the best plan. Yeah. You know, oh. they've, they've been watching the team in the other games that they've played and they've saw that that was coming. Also, very good use of Batiste there, using it, not moving about, but staying within that amount of field to keep that 20% health that they probably needed against that Farrah there. Okay, so just a, a bit more confirmation as well from the scoreboards. It's actually Scorpions in the red and only oh. W in the blue, so... Um, that, that, well... Doesn't surprise me. Uh, surprise seeing that Farrah Mercy combo, they've been playing that basically the entire time throughout the competition so far. Which is, you know, interesting to see. They're that, but they've changed it up this round. I think they've realised that only W know that plan. They know that that strategy, they know what they're going to do, so they have, they've changed. They, they have to be versatile. This is the final. They've only got, you know, one real good shot. A winning here. We've seen some great little damage trades between the two teams. No one really getting away that lucky so far. You know, what we've seen with these two teams is something happens at one point that just flicks the switch and everything happens so quickly. You know, we see some great combat. But currently now we're just seeing some trading from both sides, just dropping some damage, showing their dominance of a certain area and just staying there. Both teams seem to be scared, Bailey, of just actually attacking each other. You know, Only Woken was so aggressive in the semi-finals as well, but now against uh, Scorpius, of course, it's grand final. I mean, should they really be scared in a way, or should they really just go with their own tactics and go for it? I think playing cautious on Scorpion's behalf isn't too bad of an idea, because as we said, they've come second last year, so I think they don't want to lose the rounds as quickly. But I think they might also be scared of the Batiste, because if they try and brawl in and go head to head, the Batiste is just going to throw down the mortality field and they're just not going to do any damage. So we're going to see, we're going to see the capture points opening in, in under 30 seconds again. It's going to be another capture point take uh, from both teams to see. And we can see the ultimate's being built up right now. So far, the advantage of Scorpion, Scorpion's team. Uh, but yeah, do or die now in this one. I think it would be interesting if we if they can hold it this long. I mean, the capture point is almost unlocked and nobody's really made any true plays towards it. Although, saying that, Scorpions look like they're making a little bit of push. They've got the McCree kind of sat there waiting for someone to go down more towards the capture point and then just tap their heads. 
Clearly, they're just waiting on the point, but it looks like only W spotted that. Playing a little more tactical. We see the first push from only W there. Now the catch point is unlocked, but it looks like Scorpions had someone on there. They stick someone on there. They win the round, equalizing it back up to 1 1. Yeah, it was a bit too late there. You know, again, only, only Woken was trying to wait for Scorpions to pop out, and then. Scorpion saw that and actually went under them as quick as they can and captured the points. Of course, if you get the more people you get on the points, the faster it gets captured as well. So all three of them on that points, it really was no good. Definitely. If you get the two teams that are kind of sad in those towers and you kind of push really quickly as a full team, like you said, the speed at which the capture point, you know, captures, there's really nothing the other team can do. And that was something that they displayed there. Yeah, so we got a bit of a competition change here from Oni Woku. We've got McCree, Reinhardt and a Mercy against a Lucio Genji and a... Sorry, and Winston. that's a Winston. So I think actually it might be only W on the Reds actually. So again, no, yeah, so the scoreboard will have to be changed again. So is it only W on Red? Is it the other way around? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think that's going to be it, yeah, yeah. So, but in, in any case, there was a bit of damage there done. Um, but all healed back up together again. So we'll see now. But it's back, it's back to being a stalemate right now, Bailey. Yeah, I, if we are correct in the scoreboard, um, only W are using their pro Genji player very effectively here. Obviously going with the dive composition compared to other Ws, which is a lot more stationary. But Reinhardt has that huge shield that he can use just to negate any incoming damage from that Genji or Lucio. Yeah, I mean, what we're kind of seeing here is this really odd combination of both teams, but like we've seen so far, they're both playing really defensive. This is going to be a capture point battle at the end. Nobody's really playing the offensive strike, which hopefully I think we might see in one of the rounds. If one of the teams switches it up instead of playing so defensive, goes really strong offensive, they might be lucky enough to throw the team off and get, get some luck there. But we're just seeing constant healing, nothing really happening that's of any interest so far. Yeah, for sure. I think maybe Scorpions have realised that that Genji is the like primary target of their team, and if they let him get all over them, there's a very high chance that they're going to lose this map. So I think playing defensively isn't a bad idea. Also using Reinhardt's shield here, because it does not give Genji any... Oh, a nice flash oh, burn by McCree there. A nice a great dead little eye. McCree all that, and the McCree with the triple! A very nice oh. McCree there. McCree really pulled that one out of the bag. You know, like I said, that was flipped the switch. Action started happening. We saw the McCreel and we just saw him just, you know, wipe the floor yet again. You know, it's, it's quite impressive. How do, you, how do you think that's gone for, for him personally as a player? Yeah, I think, I think that'll boost their confidence quite a lot because the thing with 3 3 is that once you've selected your character, you cannot change. And I think so happened that only uh, Scorpions there had the counter for only W. And once, once they figured that out, they knew that they were probably going to win that. Yeah, so just uh, a confirmation there. It is actually, yeah, of course, uh, the scoreboard is wrong, just to let you know. So it is going to be only W on the red side. And you can tell because the, the only ones that are playing Genji right now is only, is only Woken. Scorpion's on the blue side right now. So you go, ooh, a lot of action right straight from the get-go in this round. They're being very aggressive. We see both Reinhardt's fighting each other right now. But it looks like the McCree was lucky to take out the Rakai guard. McCree takes out McCree again, but it's the opposite side. We see a res from both teams that are almost simultaneously bringing everyone back into the battle, keeping them nice and healed up quickly. But the Mercy is out for Scorpions, which is going to be fatal. And that showed the Reinhardt down almost instantly. It's a damage trade again. The McCree is going to have to fight very hard and deal with that Mercy effectively, which doesn't seem to be that great. Putting in close combat now, which of course where Reinhardt does so well. And they win the round nice and easy, bringing it back up to a 2-2. We're going to be seeing who's going to win this first little game here. Scorpions didn't notice their McCree behind them, and I think that was the flaw in that round. If they, they need it, their McCree was just picking off their Mercy and their McCree from behind. Luckily, McCree just escaped on the first flashbang that got sent, but so unfortunately it didn't work out well. Five seconds left for our final round in this first map between only W and Scorpions. We'll see the competitions right now as Scorpions will pick... Oh, let's see. Scorpions we'll see. are going for a Genji as well. Genji so it looks like both sides are mixing it up, definitely. That's what I like to see. They're not trying to be too generic. They know that the other team has their ideas down and trying to be doing the exact same thing. We're seeing now these two little, both teams using the Mercy to their advantage, kind of keeping that dedicated healer on someone, but no real damage yet. Both teams still falling under tower and playing it a little bit more defensive. Kind of sad to see, but you know, they're, they're in it to win it. They want to try and play it safe. But this is the thing, I mean, coming to a grand final, you know both teams are good as each other at some point. But we're going to see actually Genji try again. He actually gets stunned Ooh. by the break. And that will be a loss there for Scorpio. So it's 3 2 right now in terms of players. Right now, only W with the advantage, as we'll see the McCree. He is trying to hunt down. He's trying to look for him. Here we go. He goes behind. 
And we'll try and find the Mercy. We'll try and snipe out the Mercy as best he can. Oh, try and get a study. Misses the stun grenade. Mercy very weak. Winston protects as best he can. Oh, gets a nice shot on the top as well. And it's going to be Winston. And the map will be going to only Woken. The first map there. Real aggressive play in that round. It was, rather, it was. Than, rather than just, you know, as casual as they were in the first few rounds, sticking back, waiting for the control point, went in. Definitely, we've been devastatingly with that McCree. Definitely, we've seen so far in this game the kind of idea of using the control point as the last resort, but then tanking it onto there. Both teams kind of with that impression so far through the competition. We've been seeing these kind of longer range players like McCree just taking those shots to deal with the damage prior to them getting onto the control point so that everyone can like rush on for one epic battle at the end. You know, we've seen that be successful, be not so successful, and it'll be interesting to see how this goes forward into the next game. Yeah, it's nice to see that I think once they got, I think once Scorpions found out that they're McCree, clearly they might be looking up some tactics there. Okay. So I think he realized that's, on camera that's now. That's tactical, that's yeah. tactical check. Okay. Stream sniping right there, guys. I just have to, <laughs> stream sniping. I have to interrupt as well quickly because I'm getting him in my mind. So there's a, there's a bug with the observer. Okay, so there's a bug with the observer. Uh, the teams are actually right. So the scoreboard from ourselves is right. Uh, but the actual observer, is saying that different names swap sides. So in fact, it wasn't only Woken that one now. It was actually Scorpions. So, so Scorpions, Scorpions was actually one Scorpions really right. that one. Just to confirm, okay? So again, it is, a, it is a spectator bug. Um, I do apologize, we, we all apologize for that, but it is a spectator bug that is going on. So yeah, what you see on your screen right now is the, first, is the winner of the first map, as we're gonna go into Necropolis uh, for that. So yeah, just to let you know, and again, I apologize for that as well. And it does confuse a lot of people, and it does happen as well in these sort of events. But Going into Necropolis, Scorpions have got the advantage, and it's actually Necropolis is Scorpions' map as well. They wanted to play twice on Necropolis. It does. It'll be interesting to see whether they have the tactical advantage picking that, you know, whether they've been practicing maybe a lot on the map, or they like the cover and potential openings it gives them. I think the picks really relate to what map you're playing on. So it'll be interesting to see maybe these are their stronger picks they're going to use here, and they can utilize them well on this map. Yeah, I think, I think Scorpions made the right choice of choosing what map they want to play twice. They've clearly identified their strengths, and they, want, they clearly want to win. So I think choosing their strengths their map with the most strength is a very good choice by them. And I think it'll be good seeing Necropolis twice here to see if uh, only W can counter whatever uh, Scorpions will play on Necropolis here. Yeah, of course, we're just getting ready for the second map on Necropolis. Mm. Uh, he sees himself in the camera. How are you doing, <laughs> sir? Right, so uh, of course, yeah, he's going to be happy, of course, with that first map win as well. And of course, this is the Digital Schoolhouse 2019 Grand Finals between only Woken and uh, Scorpions. From King Edwards, so uh, King Edwards in Stratford, and it's a, it's a, it is, it's a crazy match. It's a like, I mean, it's a, it's a patient match. I mean, it it's is. not, it's not the aggressive match that we see uh, in the previous matches, but again, it's a. Uh, you know, like you said earlier, Scott, it's all to play for. It is. I think it's quite interesting. Maybe they'll change their strategy up now that they've got the cover that they can maybe risk more offensive attack. You know, a, a more offensive play over what they've been previously doing, where they've been going for a more, you know, defensive style. But it looks like both teams here have got some form of tank. We've got the, uh, the Winston against the Roadhog there. And then the Pharmacy combo for Scorpions. They've gone back again. It's been all the time through this competition so far. We've seen the Scorpions just fall back to Pharmacy. You know, it's effective, but it, it's going to be predictable if they continue this, especially through this final. Yeah, we have seen them play Farrah Mercy all this time, but only W also playing to their strength with their Genji there. And Mercy taken out by the Farrah. Farrah also taking out the Genji. That, that only Winston, really and Winston, does, Winston does not have his own healing here, so I think it's going to be an easy win. No, nope, it's going to jump in on the... Can the Farrah get the triple? The jump on the Winston. Oh, yeah. Nice mid-air shot by the Triple Farrah from the Farrah. Damn, do you reckon they'll be opening their own pharmacy soon? Because they've been playing this, this combo so much that new pharmacy in town. Yeah, for sure. I, I think Scorpions definitely decided to choose an accomplice just so they could play pharmacy. It's such an open map, especially there's barely any buildings to hide in here. And even if they do, there's no cover for them to hide. Second round coming up right now. As we'll see the compositions coming out for both the teams. We'll see for Woken. We've got the McCree, the Reinhardt, and the Mercy. For Scorpions, we've got the Roadhog, the Widowmaker, and the Mercy. So Scorpions have decided to go long range, trying to, you know, be uh, long range as possible and try and get those picks with the Widowmaker. It, where... it will be interesting to see. The Widowmaker's a bit controversial, especially in a competitive environment, because it's either you've got a great aim and you can deal with the Widowmaker, you know, gain some great shots, or you're not so lucky and the low health proves to be not so great. But, I mean, here with the Roadhog of self heals, it could be that the Mercy is dedicated more towards was the the Widowmaker keep the constant hills hills high, but currently they're just boosting around a little bit, especially on uh, the only W side. 
not really seeing anything so far happening. Both teams kind of keeping their own side of the maps, just observing, seeing, scouting to what the well, other team the biggest, the, biggest the biggest problem that Scorpions will have is that they've got no shield whatsoever. So, he, you know, McCree can spam all he wants with a Reinhardt shield in front of him, whereas, you know, and that would increase his ultimate sure. if they get shots as well. But whereas Scorpions don't have a shield and, they, you know, if they get hit once or twice, that's helped down. Even though you got a Mercy, you yeah. know, they, they might... Oh, uh, Woki might want to, you know, go on the fact that they've weakened the opponent and start to pile in, Bailey. On, on the other side, yeah. you, you can... Uh, yeah, I mean, the Reinhardt is actually quite a good counter against the Farrah because they can just completely get in shots coming in, but if Farrah gets the high ground above them, there's no way for Reinhardt to block it without uh, letting himself be low, be vulnerable either. So I'll have to be very careful of the Roadhog hooking him or... Or the, the while the Widowmaker's distracting the run out from the book. But now we've got 20 seconds coming up, Scott, and it looks like we got a kill here. It is, we're seeing both both sides kind of just tapping away, but it looks like Scorpions have the advantage. They've taken out the Mercy, a critical blade, because now the McCree is on his own. Is he going to be able to withstand against the power of, you know, the other side with the Widowmaker and the Roadhog? If that Roadhog gets close, that McCree is game over. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting. They're both pushing for the couch point. Trade on the couch point. They know where he is. They've seen it clear and they're just jumping on now, getting those little shots, but not so lucky. He's coming around the corner. Not really that much going on, but they're jumping on the couch point straight away. It looks like only W going for the couch point control. And it's right on the last minute contested. They've seen that only W win the round, equalizing it to a 1 1 situation. I was, I almost was going to say that. I think Scorpion sort of won that round then, but only W there, just that pin upon. Um, on the widow there, just absolutely so taken down. The biggest problem was is that only W with the McCree and the Reinhardt took down their tank, and then they had nothing to block those shots. And then with McCree in there, taking all the shots, and then landing those on Widow. And Mercy, unfortunately, trying to res, get that, you know, that last chance res, it yeah. wouldn't work out. Fight. So here we go to round three, though. McCree, Reinhardt, and Mercy still, they're gonna stay with that composition. For Scorpions, ooh, it's the same. It's a mirror matchup right now. So we're gonna see who has the best McCree, who has the best Mercy, and who has the best Reinhardt. I think from what we've seen in previous matches, only W have a very strong hit scan player on their team, and Scorpions should be a little bit wary of that. But Scorpions also, from last time, very good on their own parts. We see a little bit of uh, Swield shield swipe then to kind of bring it back a little bit holding shields both teams using the Reinhardt quite effectively sticking behind them creeping a little bit a little bit interesting they're jumping out in front but they're keeping Reinhardt nice and strong nevertheless both sides just tapping away a little bit trade of damage looks like scorpions were the winner of that little trade but of course they've got a dedicated mercy so that's getting straight back up into the game both sides playing really defensive this is an odd combination because although you've got some great hit scan opportunity with the McCree, unless you can really get those opportunities where you're out in an open space where you can take the shots, it's not effective at all. No, not at all, but what we're seeing from here from the Scorpions is that since their Reinhardt managed to get a fire strike onto some of their players, his ult charge is twice as much as the one on only W's right now, which if only W are not careful, that shatter could absolutely game change for them. That's, that's true, especially since everyone's playing in such a compact way with the McCree keeping everyone safe. If, that, if the boost could be used and then you can just use that ultimate then, that could be a perfect yeah. opportunity and McCree to come in and just headshot and take out. Yeah, for sure, especially on the capture point. There's no cover for them to hide. They cannot move off and wait for the shots to be done. They have to stay on the capture point, which will be unlocked in about 15 seconds here. So 15 seconds time, and of course, a Mercy on the, the uh, Woken side of the has got her ultimate up as well, so that could be beneficial as well. If, you know, trying to fly around using Valkyrie, and here we go, three seconds on the clock, and both teams are moving in very slowly. Both teams yeah. here, both teams on there. It looks like uh, only W has the advantage more than oh, rush right up. Can they need to get the McCree onto the point as fast as possible? They're capturing the point based on that. Fair play, Scorpions used that amazing. Amazing, amazing charge. There's a very good flashbang by uh, only W there. Um, but unfortunately, the other flashbang from the other McCree just didn't take him out. And then there's no way to stop the Reinhardt from charging the other Reinhardt there. As soon as he's pinned, that's it. You just have to wait and heal him up as quick as you can. Yeah, so unfortunately there, it was just a bit of timing there. Scorpion used right there, just a bit of patience, and it worked out again. And let's see, so only W now are going with their Genji. So they brought out the Genji and Winston. So their dive composition is coming in. Meanwhile, Pharmacy on Scorpion side. So it's going to be their strongest co compositions in this round. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think only W have realised that I, they can't beat Scorpions with the McCree. So they're going back to what, they, what their strengths are, uh, even though they lost this on the first round of this map. So either, either only W will 
have to bring him into close quarters for Genji to do any susceptible damage. But this isn't a big problem because both now being projectiles, Genji being projectile as well, Fowler being projectiles, although with better projectiles, as you can see on your screen, Genji going slightly low there. That's a yeah. very critical. And Winston as well is only half health on a Woking side. Back and forth, as you see Winston oh. trying to jump up, and Scorpions Genji as well, trying to get there, but it's... No, it's Scorpions a... had the slight advantage there, definitely, where they were able to get the Mercy there. Oh, they almost lost that. Oh, they have oh. lost the Genji! Oh, oh they are able to bring the Genji back on! That's a 200 IQ Genji play. That was... Oh, but the Genji comes off anyway, but... Fair play. Scorpion takes the Scorpion back as well, so... They are getting better and better. And, um... I think the problem with only W choosing Genji is that they lose so much vertical attack damage there. The only way for Genji to get any damage on there is either by very precisely hitting his shurikens or dashing up and then... It's very, it's very hard because, the, again, with Genji being a projectile player as well, there's no hit scan. There's no hit scan to yeah. try and take down. And against Farah, hit scan is very is the thing that you need to be able to counter it. Yeah, so like a soldier maybe, or maybe an Ana, I don't know. It, it depends on how they want to do it, but something that needs the hit scan right there to take out the, the pharmacy combo, and it wasn't there, and they, they tried... And Woken really tried with their Genji, and of course it's one of their strongest compositions in this uh, grand final and uh, you know the whole of the tournaments. But it is not working out. It seems like uh, Scorpions have got uh, you know their number right now. As we're going to head into the third map, it's going to be uh, Antarctic uh, Eco Points Antarctica for the third one. Ooh. So um, that's that's a controversial map, really. You know, I've been saying it a lot, but you have the opportunity for some great sniping, but you also have the close range forced to you by the corridors that are slanted, you know, the, the staircases and whatnot, because you can't really use snipers in that situation. You have to force close range combat. And I think the picks kind of reflect that. The picks definitely reflect that. We're actually getting, I think, exactly the same again. You know, both teams know this to be a an effective strategy. Whether they're going to be able to pull it off or not, we're not sure. We've seen Scorpions, of course, win this generally 2-0 up currently. It would be crazy to see what they can do. Yeah, I think, I think like you guys have been saying, it's all about patience here because the first McCree that flashbangs, he's going to leave his team very vulnerable because he's not going to lose a flashbang a Reinhardt or a McCree instead. So it's all about who are, all about playing chicken with the other Reinhardt and McCree right now. So we've got bad damage here from both sides, both McCree, oh, actually only Woking's uh, McCree uh, having a bit more damage upon uh, Scorpion's McCree, so back and forth is still a few seconds. Of course, this is, this is championship map here for Scorpions. If they can win this one, they are your grand final winners. So uh, only Woking have got a lot of pressure on them right now to try and bring this map back as well. And if we do bring this map back, it's going to go back to Necropolis, one of Scorpion's strongest maps as well they picked in the they, beginning of this. They did definitely, they had, they picked the right choice there because they've secured themselves with their, their optimal map up next in case they don't win this, this little leg here. But it seems like both teams going for a little bit of a damage trade, but they're both falling back. They don't really want to engage. Neither of them wants to int, but as soon as one of them does int on that damage, we're going to see some serious, some serious battles. Both teams getting the Reinhardt shield nice and low. Recharge time, some swiping, but it looks like they've got the Reinhardt out. Both teams lost damage trade. It looks like we've got the McCree and the Reinhardt out. But the McCree has old, but doesn't use it, gets killed before that. It looks like they've mercy, but they brought the Reinhardt back instead of the McCree of all. We've seen some serious up close combat, at 2v2 currently, with a stun down from the, the Reinhardt there. Scorpion's really battling it out. <laughs> what are we seeing? Ring your hand. What is this? Ring your hand. Panic back in it's the game. It's a right half ball right now. What? It could be here all afternoon. So come on, guys. Come on, guys. Uh, the so yes, bring him up. Take a shot. Yes, go on, ball messy. Oh, yes. One more time. Go on. Oh. So it's going back into some close range come back there, but they've won the round. Only W walking away. Can we get a Reinhardt in chat, everybody? That was some serious Reinhardt gameplay. Good choice by Mercy there, going for that ba Battle Mercy uh, almost tactic there. Knowing that the Reinhardt can't really do anything because he's so low, so Mercy going in with her pistol there and applying the last damage that he needed to get. Killed. And of course, an Earthshatter came out and then a, and then a uh, you know a dive in from only Woken's Reinhardt to actually get that kill onto the other Reinhardt. So it made it very well there. The first round in this in the Antarctica will go to Woking, as we see. They are both going to stick with the same composition. So I feel I feel like Scorpions thought they could get it uh, there, and it looks like because of ch choosing this one again. They think they can get this round as well with the same comp. Yeah, I think both teams feel very confident in this comp, comp just from last round. But there was a very good play by LW's Reinhardt there. He saw that Scorpion's Reinhardt was going to charge him. So he counter-charged him, which stunned both of them, which means both of their teams both had the chance to recover from that. And it was just a full and full ball. Like we're, seeing, we're seeing the standard trade-off, both holding each other out that we've seen so many times in this competition so far. But what they're really doing is they're kind of just taking shots. It looks like Scorpions have the advantage getting the McCree really low. The McCree gets healed up by the Mercy almost instantly. Nothing that really came out of that one. Nobody really won that trade-off. Both of them kind of just building back up. They're trying to get the Mercy low. Scorpions are. 
but not really proving effective. There's just that much healing and whatnot going on that nothing's really working yeah. right now. Looks like Scorpion's McCree has pushed only W back into spawn here, so clearly taking it very cautiously here. But they are one nil up, so they do they don't have to worry too much. Yeah, you get, you get this bad position as well. I mean, you've got high ground. High ground is always an advantage that you can take. And as you can see, yeah, with with the fire strike there, it gets a bit more right now. 46% ultimate here for Scorpions Reinhardt. 40% for oh, that's a lot of damage on the fire strike as well, hitting all three players of Woken. So it is going to be very close as 30, under 30 seconds. Oh, that's actually a stun there. Oh, the Scorpion. charge, but there's a mischarge onto the point, and the McCree gets the kill. McCree has ult now, just waiting a second there. He's lining himself up, but it's, it's interesting to see. He built that up, he's just taking some shots. Wasn't so lucky with the ult itself, but definitely gave him the possibility for some shots. We see an ult with every, basically everybody's getting ult at this point. Everyone's about to utilize it. They really want to try and win this. The capture point, of course, unlocks. Right now, the capture point is unlocked. Looks like only W have the slight advantage, but it's equal on the point now. Only W still building that up, and they have the advantage, where it's a 3v1 here. Only W really bring themselves back, and they win 2 0. Will only W be able to start to redeem themselves throughout this competition? So we saw that actually only Woken's McCree went down and it was a battle mercy that actually raised up from two players each to 3-2 and that gave the advantage to Woken and there now they are map points with 10 seconds uh, left to see what compositions are they. It might be another mirror match, we shall find out very shortly as the time ticks down and we shall see... Yes, it is. It is the way, classic I combo. I think that's the problem with not necessarily having lockout is the fact that once you get this one set of people, people just constantly reuse the characters. You know, they get to a point where it's 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 not almost vanilla, but it's at the point where it's predictable. So I think it'd be really interesting to see maybe in if you know only W do win this. Maybe in the future they'll pick a hard counter against them or try and mix it up a little bit to try and throw Scorpions off. It's a possibility that we might have, but we're not really sure. They're all kind of playing it safe as they have been, you know, using that Ryan Hart, just sticking in either sides of the map and just firing across. So it's a good little tactic here from Scorpions. Uh, the Reinhardt dropping his shield and allow, allowing Mercy to heal and get that ultimate charge up. Oh, McCree's, Scorpions McCree's down. We'll get taken out by the other McCree by Woken's McCree's. Three versus two. Here comes, oh, there's a lovely charge here from Woken. Three versus one. Three versus zero, and Woken will take the third map. That bringing it up to 2-1 there, of course, Scorpions leading. But I think W now know, we can see on their faces right here, that they have the potential to possibly bring this back. You know, there's nothing saying they can't now that they've got one point, you know, the massive confidence boost no, for that. No, exactly. Again, that's, that's a charge there, that's a stun grenade from uh, Woken's McCree. That's what opened it up. As soon as he got that uh, grenade onto the other McCree, Went 3-2 down, and then they just started to leap on each other, and that was it. It was all done there, so 3-1, 3-0 in players, and that is your third map. And now we're going to go back to Scorpio. One of Scorpio's strongest maps, again, it's going to be Necropolis for the fourth map, and it's still, it is still championship map here for, um, for Scorpions. And, you know, it's going to be really tough to see... It, well, it's going to be really interesting to see, Scott, if... Woken can actually get the win on this one. Well, I mean, they've already played one game on here, so they know what Scorpion's strategy is, so they have that upper hand. You know, they've seen it play out where they've lost, of course, on that map, but they have the potential now to work on what they've seen to maybe hard counter and predict what's going to happen. Yeah, what? I mean, you say that, but we've just gone the exact same conversations we saw last time around this map. <laughs> no, everyone thinks that, you know, so far with this combination, we've seen a 50-50. Sometimes Scorpions win, sometimes only W win. And I think the, the teams are ready to take the gamble. You know, they think that they've got it. So we've got a pharmacy combo here with the Roadhog for Scorpions. So no shields on their side. Meanwhile, they're uh, woken us. Only, only W are sticking with the composition they used in the previous match. So they've got a hit scan. They want to try and snipe out as best they can. But pharmacy, oh, doing so much damage to Woken's uh, shield there, Reinhardt shield. He'll need to back off and get that charge. Meanwhile, McCree will look to try and snipe as best he can. Of course, those headshots are devastating from McCree. If you can get it, even at long range as well. But uh, back and forth, both having high ground right now. Well, actually, I thought it was high ground. It might be low ground. Yeah, so no, Pharmacy have gone down right now. Scorpion seem to have the upper hand here based on that ground, as you said. But it will be interesting to see whether they are able to utilize that. You know, both teams, of course, odd, well, they've, they've kind of got the more generic. We're seeing the generic lineup. We've scored Scorpions with the, the Pharmacy. Will that prove that's proved to be one of their strongest? Strongest combination so far, you know, they've dominated quite a lot of teams with that. Oh, 
Oh, two shots! Oh, that, that, they're taking the farm as the, the, the fair release. But the fair gets revived, you know, they know how critical that is to their team. Brought the fair back in straight away. Oh, no, Wilkins, Wilkins Mercy is down, it's three versus two right now. It looks like Scorpions are being smart about that. They know that that Mercy was going to be a serious issue. They just brought someone back themselves. You know, they don't want to deal with that resurrection issue, so they've taken out immediately, leaving the McCree, of course, healless eventually. That has the ult, the McCree. We see oh, Dead like Eye as well, so it's two versus two, it's both McCree. Now McCree, Reinhardt, Farah, and a Roadhog. It's going to be very shots. close. Roadhog taking so much damage against back up. Farah will down. Reinhardt, two versus one here. Wow. Scorpions win. Scorpions go for their typical strategy. You know, that one that they know works, they've stuck with it, and it really proves to be, you know, strong. Yeah, I think Scorpions so definitely know how to play on this map very well. But what we saw there from LW is that their McCree was causing Scorpions, Farah, Mercy to stay on low ground there. So they knew if they went any higher, they were very, would be a very easily picked off. But Scorpions, Farah knew exactly what to do. He played around the pillar, he just took poke shots, just thought he couldn't get picked off. Yeah, took poke shots, took good, two good shots, and took down the Farah as well. Let's say they're going to do it again, because again, it is the same compositions in this next round. You could almost ask yourself what would have happened if they got the Mercy down instead of the Farah. You know, that's maybe something they're working in the future, but if they got that Farah and uh, the Mercy down, that could have been catastrophic for the, the team. Definitely. So Mercy, actually, right now for Woken is taking half damage, is back up to speed right now. So a lot of pokers come in, trying to get that Farrow, who's seen McCree, trying to snipe as best he can. He's getting inching just on the corner, sees the Farrow, gets a shot off, but will be healed up back instantly. More shots going on, but that uh, Reinhardt shield is going down very quickly. They'll need to back off and get that Reinhardt shield charged. We've seen both teams, the standard trades they've been seeing so far, but nobody's really successful. Instead, we've seen some close range combat now. The, uh, a lot of people saying, well, they're trying to get the Mercy out of the sky there. Mercy slowly going down, but the Mercy gets healed up almost instantaneously, bringing themselves back up. It's, it's back, to, back to where we started. Both of them almost on full health now, kind of moving across now. I think it's an engagement like that that will happen where just one person will get that great shot or something that starts it off. They're trying to separate the shield out there to get early shots, but they're not so successful. Nobody really took anything away from that. Looks like Scorpions are really trying to use their air advantage a little bit more taking some shots down, but only W now on more health, actually. They, they've seen this happen the first time. They know the changes they need to make, and they're implementing that very well. Yeah, it's going to be, and the capture point is going to be unlocking as well, but Deadeye is available here for Woken to see, so that can stop Pharmacy if they can. Here we go, Deadeye is putting them on the ground. Well, it's not, not going to invent a kill. It's not going to generate a kill at all, but we are going to have the capture point in 10 seconds, Bailey. Is it going to be Scorpions or is it going to be Woken on this one? I think Scorpions going to take this again. They're, only W know that they can, that McCree can counter Farah, but I don't think they have quite the skill to put it into practice. We've seen oh, this oh, switch around there where it looks like... taking out McCree, though. As we said, Farah again, oh. Farah! Oh, there you go. I think only W need to switch out their they composition do. here. They've tried it twice, it's not worked. They need to, they need to come up with another plan. And well, we are now sorry. on championship points here, grand final points here for Scorpions. If they win this, yes, they are your 2019 are. champions. Woken have still got a lot to do. They are getting two, three rounds. They need three rounds. Are they going to change their compositions? We're going to find out in a very yeah. well, few what seconds. What will be their final picks of the day? It looks like it's going to be some interesting ones, but no, exactly the same, you know. Off the stock again, we've got the Pharmacy coming up. Both teams going for the Pharmacy identical. We're going to see some air-to-air -air combat here. Going to be great. But should, should Bailey, should as well, yourself, Scott, should Woken change this uh, composition sooner? I, I think they should have done. They, I think they knew that, but I think maybe they were so confident in their McCree that they thought, oh, maybe, maybe we should have a bit of a, a low game. Maybe we can do it again. But I think maybe they should have switched for the second map, possibly. But I don't blame them for leaving it for a second game, because sometimes you do just have a bit of an unfortunate round. But for, so playing it again, I don't blame them for doing that. Rockets being fired left, right, and center. We're trying to see which pharmacy is the best in looks, right now. It looks like Scorpions, of course, got oh, Scorpions taken by Scorpions. One. Scorpions, there are absolutely just mad shot in the sky there, of course, helped by the Mercy. The pharmacy is really proving effective. And it looks like Scorpions got it. Scorpions have won! Final. Scorpions have a nice little pharmacy win there. Scorpions in chat, everybody. GG. Great plays there, but the pharmacy really did seem to be effective. Yes, so it turns out that Scorpions do have the better front match. They're clearly playing to their front row properly. It seems they, they knew where to position themselves exactly where to need them to go. Even McCree, they just knew McCree used Dead Island, just going to stay behind cover and they're not going to get picked off. Yeah, in that last round there, we also saw the Roadhog from Woking get bopped off as well from, Far uh, from Scorpions Farah. So it went from 3 2 very quickly to 3 wide, and it was all over there. And then, as you see on your screen, you've got your grand final champions, of course.
Mark, <laughs> my God, I mean, you know, we, that was an exciting grand final. What did you make of it? I thought it was fantastic. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Scorpions, your champions. <laughs> Commiserations, of course, to Only W, but they had a, a fantastic tournament here as well. Uh, gentlemen, we were provided with the entertainment that we were looking for in our grand final, but Scorpions, I mean, these guys just had something a little bit special, well, uh, a bit special today, think, didn't I they? I think their bit special thing was the pharmacy combo. Yeah. Throughout the entire competition today, it's just been pharmacy, 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 yeah. pharmacy. I mean, it's something that works for that team. And I mean, they've shown the rounds that they've won have been when they pull out the pharmacy. You know, I can't stress it enough, but pharmacy. Pharmacy. You know, so pharmacy. You know. Your takeaway is pharmacy. It's pharma okay, exactly. Just to confirm one more time. Pharmacy. Perfect. Okay, okay. Bailey, uh, what, was, uh, what was the highlight of that grand um, final I for you? I think that also, as I mean, apart from the pharmacy, of course. <laughs> I was really hoping you'd say it. Yeah. Um, I've got to give props to um, uh, the McCree on only W. He did very well negating a uh, fire strike on Echo Point and Tactical was very vi vital for them and just getting the clean shots that he needed. But unfortunately, the resurrections from Mercy just keep bringing them back every time. Now, only W did manage to steal a map away there, Rams. Uh, was that them paying exceptionally well? Or was that Scorpions maybe just taking their foot off the gas a little bit? I think it, it's a bit of both at the same time because, you know, they had their backs against the wall, only Woken, so they needed to win as well. Meanwhile, you know, the confidence is riding high with Scorpions at the same time. So it was a bit of both at some points, but, you know, I think Scorpions knew that they had their fourth map, which was, again, the second pick of Necropolis, and they felt more comfortable on it as well. But finally, you know, it, after all that, <sighs> Scorpions have redeemed themselves from last year. They did. It was the story that we were all kind of hoping for a little bit. Uh, and they did manage to redeem themselves, uh, taking home our championship today. Uh, we're going to take a break right now before we bring them out to uh, award them, obviously, uh, their trophy and the goodies to go alongside it. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a second. Woo!
And welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome along to the grand finals. And it has been a fantastic day here at the Digital Schoolhouse Tournament. Now, before we bring out our teams uh, towards some prizes and, of course, uh, to our champion Scorpions, uh, that trophy, uh, we have a very, very special guest. And I say very special guest, a very good friend of mine, uh, Joel, the director of Excel Esports, one of the fastest growing and most successful uh, UK esports organizations. Uh, Joel, I believe you've got a couple of words to say. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to leave it to you. Thanks, Mark. Now, I must admit, this isn't the first time I've done a talk like this, but it is the first time I've ever done it to a room that has parents in it. And I must admit, that makes this particularly terrifying. So uh, apologies to any parents in the room. Uh, I am an advocate of uh, you know, pro video gaming and someone who has been working in the industry now for a few years. Um, and it is something that is, is very close to my heart and something that I wanted to come and speak to you guys about today. As Mark mentioned, I'm, I'm from XL, XL Esports. We are a UK-based esports team, one of the you know, most successful in, in recent years, I'm, I'm proud to say. Um, it's, been, it's been a long journey. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a, a small run-through of that history. So we started in, in 2014, uh, very much a grassroots organization. Uh, for those that don't know, XL was a, you know, a joint venture between me and my brother, actually. It was a, a business we started together. Uh, very much a bedroom organization started on a, a you know a shoestring budget. Um, back in 2014, esports was as as different today as I think it will be in, in another four years' time. You know, we were able to start an organization uh, on you know with no money, just disposable income that we had. We first went into to Call of Duty esports. That was where we started. Um, you know, started a, a semi-pro team there. Took them to their first events, and really it, it expanded from there. Um, for those of you who don't know, we now compete in the League of Legends European Championship, the, the LEC, the Tier 1 European League of Legends competition. League of Legends, obviously, like Overwatch, is, is one of the most popular esports titles in the world. Um, and I put that, that journey and that success down to a couple of things that I wanted to, to go over today. I think number one is um, it was about following passion. And when I asked the organizers of this, what they wanted me to talk about with you guys, it was give them some advice on, on how to get into the esports industry and, and how to build a career in it. And I think my number one piece of advice is follow your passion. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean for a particular video game or even to, to be a pro gamer. You know, as an organization at the minute, our headcount is, is roughly around 30 people, you know, full-time employees. Only a third of that is actually professional video gamers. We have media people, marketing people, finance people, commercial people, you know, business and management um, members of staff. So your area of interest in the esports industry doesn't have to be as a gamer. It can be anything you want. Our industry has the need uh, of talent. It has that need today, and it will increasingly have that need moving forwards. So my number one piece of advice is find your niche Pick something you're really, really passionate about. That could be being a, a pro gamer. I know for some of you in the room, particularly the guys playing up on the stage today, that could be a very realistic ambition, um, whether it's Overwatch or, or another game. But equally, if that's not what you want to do, but you're still very passionate about esports and video games, like I was, there is still a, a future career path for you. You know, to, to put it in perspective, I am terrible at video games. I, I love video games. I spend a large amount of my time both playing and watching, but I am awful. I guarantee I would not get in any of the teams that have competed today in, in Overwatch, and I do play some Overwatch. Um, so you don't have to be amazing at video games to work full time and, and be successful in the esports industry, but you do need to be passionate about what it is you do, and you do need to pick something that either you, know, you really, really enjoy or you're really good at. The best combination is both, but if you can only have one, it doesn't matter which, just pick that, go after it, throw yourself into it. You know, I, I did do the traditional education route. I went to university, you know, I, I, I graduated with a degree and I went to work in the city in London and it bored me and it, and it wasn't something that I was passionate about doing. But all through that process, I learned a lot and I realized that what I'm good at is management and managing people and teams. And so my current role at Excel um, has nothing to do with particularly the, um, you know, the coaching of players or even you know, our, our strategy for, for winning matches. It's about how do we build winning teams? How do we build a roster? Uh, you know, whether it's League of Legends or Rocket League or Call of Duty, each game and the ecosystem is very different. My job is to help our organization pick which esports to go into 
um, pick which teams we want to recruit within that, and then and then you know go for it and try and be successful. Um, I guess that brings me on to my my second point, which is what do we look for in in esports players? Like I said, I'm sure many of you here are interested in becoming professional gamers. And I guess the, the thing I'd like to stress there is it's not just about how good you are in the game. There was an awesome question earlier um, from someone over there in the panel about what skills do you learn in gaming that are transferable to real life? Those skills, those softer skills that the panelists talk about, when I was listening to that, that's what we look for in a pro gamer. You know, we are looking for people who have the ability to work in teams, make decisions, work under pressure. These skills will pay off in other aspects of life, but they're also what makes a pro gamer the difference between someone that's just really, really good at a game and that can succeed at the pro level. So I think that was all I really wanted to, to share with you guys today. I will be hanging around if anyone wants to you know, come and ask some questions, but um, I think it's time we, we handed over and gave out some prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John. Fantastic stuff. It's always good to hear from you, buddy. Uh, please come and join me. We're going to do some... Uh, the big, bit, the big bit we've been excited for and uh, the thing we've been looking forward to the entire time. Uh, so I think it's time to get our second place team out here. Please, big round of applause uh, for Only W. Fantastic performance from them today. Over here, gents. <laughs> Joel's got some, uh, some medals for you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, only W, congratulations on the second place. Fantastic stuff from you. If you wouldn't mind just uh, moving off to the right-hand side here, because it is, of course, Joel, time to crown our champions. They've had an absolutely uh, barnstorming performance here today in London. And, of course, it is Scorpions. <laughs> Wait one second. You've got to pick that trophy up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please give it up for Scorpions. Congratulations, guys. Absolutely fantastic performance from you uh, three gentlemen today. Uh, very quick question for you, actually. Have you enjoyed the experience? Well, yeah, very much so, thank you. And uh, how does it feel to, uh, to win? Good. <laughs> Simple. It does feel good. And how about yourself? You enjoyed the, the occasion today? And yeah, it's been... How, how good does it feel to pick up the win? It's been great. It's been really fun. Challenging opponents. But yeah, feels happy to bring it home again. Fantastic stuff. OK, uh, we've actually got some other things for you here. We've got a PlayStation 4 for you to take home, so you can grab that. You look like the strongest guy. And we've got some, uh, some backpacks as well for you guys, so bear with me a second. We've got one here. Have you got a spare arm? Yes, or should I put it over your head? <laughs> you good. Got you here. Actually, do you know what? I don't trust you to not drop that, because like, I would. And uh, you might take your teammates there as well. So, uh, fantastic stuff, gentlemen. Uh, absolutely unbelievable performance here uh, from Scorpions. Uh, congratulations, guys, once again. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just taking a, a step to the right-hand side now. Because... We have some other things to do as well. We have uh, a little award to give out right now for uh, some of the guys that have been involved in the tournament that haven't been playing so far today. Obviously, there's been a lot of talent involved uh, from various avenues today. And some of those, of course, were our casters that were on the desk doing a fantastic job today. Uh, so we actually have uh, Laura coming in from uh, Skira, who is going to come in and give a little award to one of these commentators. So. Uh... <laughs> Hi, Laura. So, obviously, we have a little award here for the caster of the day who's impressed you most. Uh, who is that for you? Who is going to take home that trophy? Nobody told me I'd be selecting, so this is going to be really fun. Oh, no. Okay, shall I do it? <laughs> if you like. Shall I do it? Okay, all right. So, the winner is... Now I've just got people looking at me going, come on, pick me, pick me. <laughs> I'm going to have it to give it to someone who impressed me so much uh, today with his enthusiasm. Uh, it, 
with, uh, you know, with their enthusiasm. Not only that, their, their game knowledge has been absolutely superb. I think it actually has been picked by Rams and uh, Adam, who are on the desk. So uh, good news for us. We're getting bailed out here. Um, but the winner is, and this is a huge congratulation, genuinely impressed with your performance so far today, it is, of course, Scott. So congratulations, Scott. <laughs> A few photos to be taken, but uh, a few very quick words with yourself. Uh, how has it been today to be behind the desk to get a real feel for a huge esports event? You know, it's been really interesting, and we've seen so many teams play that I've really built up a lot more interest towards the, you know, the playing side of it, the shoutcasting side. We've seen different strategies being played, lots of different maps, and it's generally just been a great day. Okay, and if there's one thing you can take away uh, from this experience, what would it be? Pharmacy. 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 There we go. That's why he's, you're born on screen talent. Congratulations uh, on the award. Uh, absolutely amazing stuff. And can we just uh, give a big round of applause for all of the other talent who have been involved today? They they don't go home empty-handed. They've got something to take with them as well. Genuinely been blown away by you guys and, and what they've managed to do. They've been amazing, haven't they? They've been brilliant. I've been thoroughly impressed with the level of skill they showed today. Yeah, they have. I mean, I'm slightly worried for my job, but, you know, that's fine. I'm, you know, we all have our time to go. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, Laura. It's been a pleasure to have you out here, and uh, no uh, hopefully we'll see some more from you soon. Um, we, unfortunately, though, Every, all these good things have to come to an end. So that is going to be the end of the show today. Again, congratulations not only to our champion, Scorpion, but to everyone who's been involved. Uh, we have some people up in production as well who have been involved uh, from the, the Digital Schoolhouse program who have been absolutely killing it helping put this show on today. So from me, from the players, from the casters, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you soon.